Hello folks and welcome to round seven of this regional Kilani Power Series event. My name is Ernest Page and we have a full day today here at the track. You can come through and buy your tickets. You can bring the kids for next to nothing to get into the circuit. But if you are at home, you can also enjoy the live stream with myself, Ernest Page. And if you're wondering, Dexter Bruce won't be joining us today, unfortunately. But we will be having plenty interviews chatting to drivers and finding out how their day is going. Now, I know you guys out there are supporting some of these drivers. So if you want to do shout out, send something to the live stream, comment in the YouTube stream and Facebook streams, and let us know what you want to hear from your favorite drivers today. And speaking of favorite drivers, we've got a couple on the way shortly to chat to you guys. But a bit more about today. Today is, of course, the regional race day today, and many new categories are here that weren't here at the last event. Of course, Kilani shuffles these categories around so that the day always stays entertaining. And today, we see the return of the fine cars. But we also see lots of other categories like classic cars, like the guys from the Masters Cup over there, and even a couple of Masters bike riders. But I see we've got a couple of bike riders lined up, ready to talk to us already. Ready. So let's get the interviews going. Let's find out more about those bike riders. And here comes the first one now. And of course, it's from Project 60. You guys are all in the media at the moment. Uh, Project 60. And if you could just introduce yourself with the mic over there, you can just grab this mic out there. There we go. Let's check if this is on. There we go. Just, can you guys just confirm that the mic is good to go? Well, Project 60 SA, uh, I'm bike number 32, uh, today is a bit of uh, interesting conditions, mm. uh, qualifying wasn't that great because they traffic the, like, mo most, like, mo almost every lap, yeah. so I couldn't like, go get the pace, mm. but uh, I'm not too worried about that because I can go push it a bit more, Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited for today and yeah, we'll see how the day goes. Yeah, exactly. And Project 60 has been now one of the uh, teams, clubs, teams, whatever you guys are, that has made a lot of waves with some new riders on the scene. Tell us a bit more about Project 60 and what it means to you, because for those out there that don't know Project 60, I know that I see you guys all the time. Uh, yeah, Project 60 is uh, very important to me because it's my first race team and like uh, the, the coach, uh, he saw promise in me when I first started out. I've only been racing for like three years. Wow. And yeah, so he's uh, saw some interest in me and he's helped me grow to where I am now. So hopefully I can just go race by race and get better every time. So, so you guys have a team coach as well? Yeah, the team owner, is he also races okay. and he's like our coach and head of the team. Yeah. It's important to have a coach in, in, in bike racing specifically. I always find that in car racing, I think it's it's difficult to get to that top 5%, but to get to, the, to, 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 to sort of grow in the top 5%, but to get there on a car, it's not that difficult. You do enough laps on the circuit, sooner or later you get fast yeah. enough and now you're in the top 5%. Bikes, it's not the same, eh? Yeah, it's all about conditions and like, for like I don't have as much laps around here, so I've got to catch up. And so I'm pushing myself like 100% every time to try and catch up to the leaders. And I want to try and be there in the front so they can push me and get my skill level better. But so. if you get the technique, you don't necessarily have to push that hard. You can focus on the yeah. technique and the speed comes I feel like every, like every time I ride, it's like you don't really know, but you mm. feel like you riding better than you did before yeah like you're doing yeah. other stuff on the bike that you wouldn't that you wouldn't think you would have done previously previously yeah as you get the laps in you get more confidence you get more feel in the front end and everything should be good well feel in the front end is something that i might be feeling soon because i'm going to be going for bike riding lessons yeah it was well. coming, it was joy. <laughs> maybe do a track day with you guys maybe learn to do a wheelie i don't know but uh, speaking of wheelies, cars that don't want to do wheelies, especially when they're touching each other, is Formula Libra. They are out now. The guys that share that open-top yeah. sensation with you guys, Ryan. Ryan, thanks for joining us here, Project 60. Good luck for today, no and uh, we'll be watching out for you guys on the timing. Yeah, nice. Thank thanks, you. man. Thanks for the yeah, opportunity, man. man. Yeah. <laughs> Project 60, we got Ryan over there. One of the new drivers been racing for three years now and joins the team headed up by the coach. But a name that many people also know in the bike a, a, a space and a name that I actually I've never actually met this guy before Slade van Nikek if I'm not mistaken Slade uh, join us over here <laughs> so this is so this is Slade van Nikek 
Is this, is this Slate for Nick Eko? Okay, nice to meet you. I only see the helmet, I only see the name. If you can just grab that over there as we watch the Formula Libre guys make their way out. There's Kelly Fletcher going over there. She won a trophy in her class. Graham Knight also lining up now. So the boys and girls of Libre are getting ready. But Slade, uh, why do I know your name? Um, well, I've been racing for a while, obviously. I think I'm on my seventh or eighth year now. Um, a couple of championships, I'll okay, say. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's maybe why. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So uh, tell me about these couple of championships. So when I started racing, I was very it's young. A little bit further okay. away. Yeah. Well, I was I was very young, so I was racing the NSF 100s, mm. the small little bikes. Is that on the other side of it? Yeah, on, okay. the, on the short circuit at uh -huh. Kalani. So I won that championship when I was about <laughs> when I was about 11, <laughs> I think. He's got fans, yeah. He's got fans. And then I moved to the 150 juniors which I'm also still racing now, also on the short circuit side. Small little but that's 150s. Good for, but that's good for technique, I've heard. Yeah, I know. Those are, those nuanced, are amazing. Those are amazing. They they really, they teach you how to ride a bike. They're that's, awesome. That's like, I would recommend it to anyone trying to start. So then I it's won that championship. It's sort of the of motorbikes, yeah, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then a few years ago, I think two or three, I moved up to main circuit and I raced the 300s. Yeah. And then I managed to win that championship as well. The, the Passport 300s, and then last year I moved up to Passport 650, which I'm racing now again. Okay, now that championship. Yeah, back. so I won the championship last year. <laughs> of course you did. And then <laughs> I'm leading the championship now, but uh, it's very close to season. Nice, it's a nice, nice. battle. Uh, half of it is because of my fault, you know, a couple of crashes or one crash, but... So, so, so tell us about that. Someone that's got the, the, the mentality that you have a championship uh, winning mentality, uh, uh, a championship winning record. Why did you crash? What happened there? Did you think about it afterwards? Was it something you could change? How you, how's the future looking with regard to that crash? Uh, the thing is, with that crash, it was just one of those things that like that you can never predict. Like the, I don't, I still to this day, I'm not wow. sure what happened. Like it was really just like a like I don't know. But how so, does that affect your mindset going forward then? Well, the best thing, or what I try to do after a crash like that is, I just try to forget about it. Like as as easy as I can. Like just put it out of my mind focus on going forward like i crashed in race one i had to start last for race two and then i still from lap one of race two i just went okay 100 percent go time jeez that's mental toughness right there yeah. that mental toughness comes from starting young in the game speaking of young in the game we've got someone else coming through as well tate bishop's going to join us soon and another one of your uh, teenage counterparts yeah. <laughs> shall we say but uh, uh, what's the future looking like for, for slade van Nikeka? obviously just by me having a very short conversation with you i can see you've got the mindset of a champion you've got the mindset of someone that that's going to the top where, where are we seeing you side by side with window the boys soon or uh, what's the deal? There, there's a lot of plans and all, all a lot of ideas uh, in the works at the moment but it's looking like next year I might be uh, on the thousands with the big boys which would be amazing obviously obviously but um, there's a lot of things that are uh, that come into play with that so yes because I've heard from many many riders that there's a big difference when you jump from bike to bike yeah I mean, exactly how old are you now Do you know I'm 17 okay so yeah it would be a very the thing because now the 615 Normally you go 650, then 600, then 1000. Mm. So it, that's that's the major uh, like. Yeah. But that like, man strength is coming soon. You're almost 18. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I, I've ridden, a, I rode a ZX10 before. Okay. And it like it was fine, but riding a bike and racing a bike is a big of is course, a big difference. So well, well yeah. Slade, we gotta go soon. We got the tape waiting for us over here, but. Uh, uh, if you want to come have this conversation anytime soon, I love seeing young talent like yourself. We can get you out on the media as much as possible. I'm of saying course. it out in public now. You know yeah. where to find us. Of Please course. come for the chat every race and then we can uh, hopefully uh, help you on your journey as you go along. I don't yeah. think you need anybody's help. You're doing fine without <laughs> us. But I look forward to seeing how cool, you do yeah. in the future, man. Well Thank done. you very much. Well Thank you. So far. Awesome. Like a slave panique, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know the name, you will know it soon. Multiple time champion. But speaking of someone that's chasing championships and also one of the young up and coming Thundercats in the game, Tate Bishop from Angry. Uh, Tate, uh, you know, how angry are you feeling this morning? Um, how's qualifying going? How's things going today? Yeah, no, so we're still yet to qualify. Qualifying is in about 40 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, no, but we're feeling confidence. Yesterday we were fastest in practice by quite a big uh, leap. 
Nice. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you and Klaus, just to, uh, uh, to enlighten people, Klaus B, GTI Challenge, but also the Polo Cup campaign is going yeah. very well. Yeah. I was watching it the other day and I was watching it here as well. I mean, things are things are looking up on your side, eh? Yeah, no, 100%. Um, recently, actually stopped karting to focus on my main circuit uh, duties. Um, so, no, I'm, I'm missing out on the last round of the Nationals now. Mm. Uh, so, the rest of the Angry Racing team and the karting side is in Joburg now. Um, and to them, I wish. All my luck. <laughs> Hopefully, I still have some left myself. But um, no, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, no, um, Polo Cup's been going amazing. You know, I'm still top five in the championship, only nice. 14 points off the lead. Nice. So top five are really, really close. Year, eh? Yeah. And it's coming into Kilani now as well, which is a home race for a lot of yeah. our boys. So you must be looking forward to that. No, I mean last year, uh, uh, last month in Kilani, I took two or three wins. Um, so I'm hoping to do the same. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, now hopefully just gonna just keep uh, nice and solid, consistent points through Kalani. Hopefully take all the wins I can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just to get as much points as possible because you know we have to catch the leaders. Yeah. But yeah, now I'm look, um, looking uh, super forward to um, the Polo Cup. But you're leading the Class B championship now, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, and and that's not easy to do because Class B has been dominated before you came along. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, we had um, Eden Thompson mm. who was in the class. I think Two or three time champion in that category. Yeah, I'm not too sure. It's yeah. it's, it's close to that, yeah. Championing in that category. Um, you know, me and him had a good dice at the beginning of the year. And unfortunately, if it's for, I'm um, not sure why, but um, he's decided to step out of the class, which is kind of a bummer because mm. now there's nobody really to race. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm one point off the lead of the overall championship mm. and tied for second as well. Nice. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping to win the Class B championship and the overall championship. Yeah, get your name on that block, eh? yeah. get your name on that block, yeah. baby. So uh, uh, Tate, one of the things that, that a lot of the drivers are talking about, we heard one of the riders now, the Formula Libre guys make their way out. They're about to go into qualifying. You can check those qualifying results live on the live stream. And it uh, should be somewhere on this side, on the screen somewhere. But uh, the guys are saying that they use the 150s uh, to practice. They use the karting to practice. You stepped away from the karting now to mm. focus on GTI Challenge. What is the, the thought process behind that? Yeah, so um, just not being able to get enough seat time in the car. Um, and also with, uh, uh, with my academics, everything was just a bit too crowded. Mm. Um, so I've uh, stepped away from karting in the hopes that I'm able to be in a car a lot more, mm. test a lot more with the team and just find every last bit that we can in order to win the Polo Cup. Okay, yeah. Well, that's the right mindset. I'm sure you and your team have thought this through. We look forward to seeing what you do in Polo Cup, but more so, we look forward to seeing what you do today in Class B GTI Challenge, the Brat Pack. Go check that out. They'll be qualifying in the next 15 to 20 minutes or so. So this man's got to get ready to go. Tate Bishop, a pleasure to chat to you as always. So we look much, forward yeah. to talking again. Thanks awesome. for stopping cool. by. Well, there you go, folks. Tate Bishop, one of the young up-and-coming Thundercats in the game. We've got near the toy standing behind me. I don't know if he's going to come for an interview. But lots and lots of exciting, exciting prospects here today. Exciting new drivers. And this is the era of the young driver, isn't it? We see that with Max Verstappen. We see it with uh, Charles Leclerc. All these drivers that have stepped into motorsport at a very young age, started sim racing, started karting. The previous generation, of course, did the same. But now we see a lot more successes happening for these young drivers. And speaking of successes, we've got the Formula Libre guys out at the moment. Should be some of the fastest cars on the circuit. Right now, DJ Boyson, Nick van is isn't out there as well. James Beaumont, Hayden Elwood, as they now start to cross the line. And we start seeing what those times look like. Slow at the moment, but they will be speeding up as the day goes by. Of course, Formula Libre is a combination of all the single-seaters out there. And it's a combination of single-seaters like Formula V, Formula VW, Formula GTI, etc. All racing on the same circuit. I personally have done Formula Libre. It's exceptionally fast and exciting depending on which car you're in so we're going to be seeing some solid times but the times though have been affected by this weather i can feel a slight drizzle happening now and unfortunately it does seem to be a bit of a chill in the air but fortunately for us the spectators this does mean that we have a whole bunch of variables that could upset the apple cart last time we saw the clubman's guys going out when the rain changed and that made things very very exciting maybe today might be the same as early on we saw the bike guys going out in some drizzle now we see some more cars out there at the moment, some sports cars out there as well. I see the Harper sports car of Craig Harper back today for the first time in a while. He's hoping to do a couple of laps out there as well. I see a 
Caterham out there as well. So more cars lining up here in Park for me in the paddock area. See Nian the Toy racing today, Nian. And gives us the no, he's not racing today. But of course, Nian the Toy and NDT racing involved with many, many cars. So I'm sure they'll be supporting the guys there like the cheap cars uh, alert GTI challenge category, which will be out much later on. Well, there you go. DJ Boyson lines up in front at the moment with a 116-0. And if you're wondering how fast that is, if you think about a standard road car, it's probably going to do about a 1 minute 30, 1 minute 28 around the circuit if it's a fairly fast one. These guys are going 15 seconds a lap faster than that. So very, very fast times by our Formula Libre guys, DJ Boyson, currently leading us off with a 116 in Class S. Byron Mitchell, who I suspect will go much, much faster, currently doing a 121 so one of our classic car drivers will be joining us now bruce and uh, he will be joining us now to talk to us a bit more about the classic cars they are out again today and uh, bruce if you can head on over bruce kitted up in his omp gear the fireproofs are on the car is ready and waiting bruce welcome to our morning chat please grab the mic over there you can just pull it out over there and uh, bruce tell us a bit more about your car and yourself and uh, the fact that you're racing classics today, the boys are out again, eh? Okay, so, so just some background. Uh, I'm, I'm very old, I'm retired, so this is my hobby. Don't retire from <laughs> racing, no. clearly. This is, this is my hobby. Um, the car that I race is a 19, uh, 1989 Corolla Sprinter, uh, which I built from a bare shell many years ago. And it's done, uh, I've raced it very in various places, including two or three seasons in the South African Endurance Series. Wow. Um, whilst it was, whilst the series had, had saloon cars in it, now of course it's, it's all sports, sports cars. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah um, and basically I was living up in Durban um, and, and raced at the Desi track a few times. Oh, then, what a circuit, eh? And then, yeah. For a car like that, yeah. Desi is an incredible no, circuit. It was very quick there, yeah. And then, as I say, I retired, moved down to the Cape, and I've joined the, the classic car uh, guys here, having lots of fun, lot, made lots of friends. Uh, it's a really good <laughs> bunch of guys. Uh, you know, there's not too much banging and knocking each other off. <laughs> yeah, the classic cars have rules against uh, b bumping and bashing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Which it is, is probably a good idea, considering well, the type of cars that you have. The, the, the trouble is, is that finding parts for these old cars now becoming yeah. a problem. So. I mean, my first car and my third car was respectively an 86 and then an 88 Corolla like that. It cost me one and a half thousand rand to fix a, a bang that I had when I handbrake turned into a pole once. But that's not the case these days anymore, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, which engine are you running in that car? I'm running the 4 AGE 16, 1600. Good luck finding another one of those yeah, these days. Eh? I, I do have a, I do have two spares. Nice, uh, nice. Um, I've kind of gathered you know, bits and pieces over the years. That's the move. So, that's the move yeah. with a car like that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my story. And the 4 AGE engine, such a classic engine, such a fun engine as the rain starts to come down now. I mean, revving that thing up to 8,000 RPM. Uh, uh, are you, how does that car drive in the rain? It's actually very good in the rain. Um, I don't mind if it rains at all. Um, I've had some very good runs here in, in the rain. Um, especially if it starts raining during the race and people don't have time to put wet with the tires on. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm in the pre-90s, we we forced to run on semi-slicks. Okay, so it's all so, weather, basically. Yeah, so, and you know, if a guy's on full slicks, he's really going to yeah, struggle. Yeah. Are you guys way. running the Dunlop yeah. the Rezes? No, it's the Bridgestone. Bridgestone, Bridgestone. okay, yeah. Bridgestone yeah. semis, okay. Yeah. So, we look forward to seeing how your car does. Are they a personal favorite of mine? I've still got a picture of my uh, 89, it was the 88, I think I had an 88 <laughs> Corolla like that. Good luck out there, and we look forward to seeing how you're doing the classics, and uh, rubbing isn't racing. Just remember that uh, classic guys. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. stopping Thank by. Okay. Oh, let's make it official. There we go. So Thanks. there you go, folks. The, the rain is coming down, and uh, yeah, we got some kids over here coming through as well. And we got an interview. Okay, Madison's gonna pull in. Hey, Madison. Madison's got a BMW Motorsport uh, 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 little top over there. Madison. My name is Ernest, and uh, can I ask you a couple of questions? Do you mind? Okay, so Madison's wearing a Porsche cap and a, a BMW uh, t-shirt. Madison, who are you supporting today? My dad. Oh, okay. And who is your dad? Uh, I know he's known Warren. as Daddy. I get it. I get it. 
McLaren. Okay, so Warren's racing today. And uh, what what type of car is your favorite car? Is Daddy's car your favorite car, is it? <laughs> that makes sense to me. See, this is what it means to support, folks. Madison, number one supporter. We look forward to seeing you out there, Madison. Madison, are you going to be joining us on the racetrack anytime soon? Okay, okay. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. One more time for Madison. And Madison, do you want to say hi to your dad? You can just look over the camera there. You can say hi. Hi. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. That is Madison. Thanks for stopping by, Madison. We appreciate it. And have a wonderful day. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. That is Madison supporting Warren and uh, wearing Porsche paraphernalia, the number 43 Porsche by the looks of things. So uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing her out there as Byron Mitchell and the guys start to slow down a little bit. Byron's best time was a 1 minute 12.45. DJ Boyson gets a 1.15. That is exceptionally fast. But now... The circuit conditions are definitely changing. Our cameraman over here is putting the cover over the camera. I'm waiting for the signal to get out the rain, but they seem to think that I'm okay in the rain, yeah? So we should be fine for now, but the times definitely are tumbling or were tumbling down, and now they're slowing down again because, of course, the circuit getting a bit slippery. It won't affect the drivers too much out there, but they definitely will have a little bit of trepidation about what the conditions might or might not be like. Once you've got that banker lap and you don't necessarily want to uh, slow down or want to uh, speed up too much. 1 minute 12 is a solid lap time. The cars are separated by some time. The DJ Boyson with a 115, Storm with a 119 and Hayden with a 124. Libra uh, S and uh, Libra S taking the top three positions and Hayden Elwood doing well to take uh, position number four in class C. If you've just joined us, folks, my name is Ernest Page and uh, now I'm apparently on the PA system. I just heard my voice out on the PA system for all those people out here at Kilani Raceway. Welcome to Kilani Raceway. Welcome to the Power Series. This, of course, is the live stream going out to YouTube. So if you want to see other angles of the action, if you are at the track, feel free to uh, tune into our YouTube live stream on Emusat. And uh, as we can now see, GTI Challenge boys are lining up and uh, the rest of the guys coming through, sports cars coming through as well. Some very nice cars lining up over here. But before we get to that, I know it's a bit chilly today, isn't it? Eh? Uh, could you introduce yourself and let us know who you are and uh, what you're doing here today. How's it? My name is Michael Hunter. I'm racing in the 600s class. I ride a Kawasaki ZX6. Um, yeah, sponsored by LLG Properties and Micro Oil. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm hopefully going to be racing. <laughs> well, why do you say hopefully? I had a crash on Wednesday in practice and I'm still trying to get my bike fixed. Wait, what time is qualifying? Uh, I really miss qualifying. Oh. So, I mean, if I'm racing, I'm starting at the back of the grid, but that's I've a, been... That's how heroes are made, my friend. <laughs> that's how heroes are born. I've been here every night since Wednesday, like, working late, trying to get it sorted. But that's the story that oftentimes we don't talk about in motorsport, isn't it? That yeah. it, it looks like that you just kind of rock up on the day, like Divan's rocking up over here. Now yeah. He kind of just rock up on the day, but guys like you, guys like Divan, are constantly working on your bikes and your cars, <laughs> trying to get it just to the start line. I mean, it never ends. It eh? never ends. Never so, ends. how are you guys looking at the moment? I'm thinking there's probably like a 75% chance I'm going to be racing, so... That's better, better than, than my high school uh, drink score, so... <laughs> Me too. I'm hopeful. <laughs> Look. But now the thing is, right, what, what needs to be done to the bike still? And what is your mentality now going into the race where it's these conditions and you're starting from the back? Yeah, I mean, all, all, all we're really hoping for is my, my one engine casing was cracked, so we use Prattly steel to like seal it up and... I'm just hoping it sets in time. It's like a slow setting one. So yeah. we're trying to like heat it up a little bit or whatever, try and make it set a bit faster. But so that's why I don't know if it's going to be ready in time. But yeah. I mean, it's obviously not the best conditions weather wise. Yeah. And then all the stuff with my bike as well, you know, it makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit stressful, <laughs> but I mean, it's fun. You know? You've know. you got that, 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 that stressed smile look on your face where you're kind of hiding the emotions. It's like, we, I know that because I've been there and you walk around the paddock and you're just like, everything's going to be fine. Everything should be fine. I hope that everything turns out well. You guys put in the work either way. You should be proud that you guys made it this far. Exactly. You've done everything you can and that's all that matters. And hopefully we'll see you guys out on track later on. Uh, what's your surname again? Hunter. So let's hope Hunter uh, does not become the hunted, stays the hunter, and goes out there and hunts some guys from the back of the pack. We look forward to hearing some more Hunter. Chat to you later, man. Cheers. No
So now we've got someone that's going to give us the bike update. I've been told by people watching the live stream, Brad, that uh, I should re be replaced when the, when the bike section comes up. I should just walk out of camera, out of shot, and get you out here because you are a bike guy. You look great on camera. You're fun to talk to. This, this is not me saying this. is other people telling me this. Okay, so I'm just passing the message on. So if you wouldn't mind, could you give us the update on what's happening with the bikes? I saw you running up the pit lane early on, frantically guiding the guys. You guys tried to start someone's bike early on, eventually got going. You were chatting to the marshal to get him out there. A lot's happening out there. Who's, who's we, your team? Um, so yeah, there we go. So yeah, so you know, we we had the guys and we've got like 20 oaks who can run a guy down the down the pit lane and get him started. So that was awesome. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. that was very cool to see because that's the kind of moments in motorsport that we don't. We're just talking about it now. The prep running up to the day. You in the pit lane, your car, your bike won't start, and it's been starting for a week or two. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, you've got so many seconds to make it out the gate. You people that are on the opposing team are helping you. Push. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what motorsport's about. As well, as well, and. Uh, and, you know, one of the big things is that a couple of our riders have got spare bikes. So this week I swapped my off-road bike for a little CBR 500, which races in the Supersport class. And uh, one of our teammates has got a spare BMW S1000. So we said, you know, this the bikes are going to sit. Let's get some other racers involved and get the guys on the bikes. Get the numbers up. So Zante uh, Otto is on my little CBR. She's a great rider, does 114s around you. That's quicker than me. And, uh, and we gave the BMW to Q and Snayman, who took pole in the Supersports. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah now you, you guys know? are doing SPK, the stuff. Sorry. You yeah. guys are doing the stuff. And that's what it takes sometimes to, to help grow a category. Sometimes sacrifices need to be made that not many people are going to know about. But these sacrifices have to be made nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. Are you riding today? Because the last time I spoke to you, you weren't riding. Yeah, so uh, today I was out. I was out there this morning. Obviously, you know, I was, I was involved, but not really involved in the last time we had a race. And those riders went down in two and four because the drizzle started coming down. It's drizzling again. A lot of guys have got, you know, that paranoia. And I watched it all happen in front of me. Um, and also, the last event. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, that. going out now, I was like, oh, going into four, I'm like, is it going to hold? Am I going to slide out? Like, I saw the guys, and it sits in the back of your head. But, um, you know, we managed to get out. I managed to get out and do a 118.2, which for me, in it was... In these conditions. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I sat, I was sitting last night. I was crunching data. I was looking at my sector ones all the way to sector fours, trying to figure out where I can improve, break here, accelerate there. So, what is that? Talk, walk me through a, a, a situation where you've had a close call or an incident at the previous race in these similar conditions. It's now the night before for the event there comes a time where it's go time and you you put your helmet on the visor goes down and it's, you've got to focus on the game but that pre-race jitters i mean that's a very real thing it is you know you get more nervous leading up to the race and the build-up for the weekend as opposed to actually getting on the bike and getting out there and i always get out there and i think i'm going fast and then somebody comes past me obviously a faster rider and then i just go monkey see monkey do whatever he does i can do unless of course he slips off <laughs> but um we've had it where we, you know, two of the guys in our team have gone off on turn four we've had one rider who's run off twice in turn four i've always been good at turn four i'm happy on it but having seen all of that now i'm getting a paranoia in my head about turn four and i've never been bad at it you so know who are you have you guys got mental coaches in your team senior guys in your team that you can talk to to reflect on these thoughts you know we've we've got we we have a number of suppliers to the team for various things so your dyno tuning and your engine services and oil and all that kind of stuff so they're all better riders who own their own workshops so we pop on over to them we're like hey you know but like last night i mean i was what I was WhatsApping Q and Snayman at Opus 11 at night and he's messaging me back telling me how to improve and where to get it going, you know? Hilton's another one who's, who's always great. We always go down to Hilton but, and have but, a chat with him. Even though you are, have become a stalwart of the bike side of things, you haven't been racing for that long. Uh, I think my first race was round about the 9th of April. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this is what it needs that fresh blood, that, that enthusiasm, and we appreciate it, and we appreciate you coming around here to chat. As mentioned before, I'd really like it if you popped in every now and then. Just give us an update on the bike side of things, Brad. Uh, you are in the pit lane. You're chatting to the guys, so we appreciate that. And, awesome. Uh, well done for getting that Thank you, and appreciate the job you guys yeah, do man. here as well. Thank you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Brad from the bike side of things involved with so many different things, part of the new team as well that they've just started. And uh, speaking of 
teams. We've got JP coming through as well, but just a quick, uh, JP, just grab a seat, grab the, 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 the mic there, JP from Superbikes. Before we get to that, we've got the guys out there, and you can see the results now starting to come through for sports cars. Davi Joubert back out there today. Once again, he wasn't racing at the last race. Nice to see him out there. Again, Craig Hopper in third position, also back for the first time. And Steve Humble, the king of Kilani, of course, winning the uh, Kilani uh, uh, hill climb a couple of months ago, the Speed Festival, uh, the king of Kilani in an uncharacteristic fourth place at the moment. And Philip Poison, Henny Bosman, Ray Farman, Gary, Gavin Gorman behind that, but Kisvet uh, at the moment in front in the 43 car. And uh, just on the Kisvet episode, I didn't know who Gary Kisvet was. I've since done my research. So once again, apologies. Apologies to Gary Gisfitter, that was his uh, daughter that came early on. I probably should have known that as well. The number 43 car, multiple championship winning Gary Gisfitter leads off. But now we're going back to the bikes. And uh, tell us a bit more about yourself. Please introduce yourself. I know you race super bikes, and I know you guys go very fast around here. And uh, I've asked this question many times. How does this affect you guys? Oh, well, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is JP Friedrich. I'm on the... Um GR Tax and Johnny Fox Yamaha R1 running out of Donnie Moritz Racing Pit. Okay, Donnie Van Kilani. There we go, Donnie <laughs> Van Kilani's pit. Um, yeah, the, the weather always plays a tricky, tricky role in uh, making the right decision whether to run wets or dries. Um, this surely isn't a full wet situation, most but now you guys going to change those tire pressure, those damping rates, etc. Correct, that's it. Yeah, you change more of tire pressure and uh, suspension setup in this case. Um, definitely not wet enough for wet weather tires. Yeah, something that, that, that always fascinates me, I chatted to Mike Wall about this many years ago. Why and how do you guys know how much front end grip there is? If my car understeers on the circuit like this, I just push and then out comes back and there's no big deal. If you guys get the nose to push, you've got a low side to look forward to and a trip back in the ambulance. How does that, how does that affect the mindset of someone like yourself, especially in those top flight fast bikes? Um, yeah, it may be hard to believe, but we also get a feel of an of a understeer before the front tucks. Um, so that's why it's very important to have the setup in a, such a way that you've got feel of the front end. Not too okay, hard Okay, so it's feel. not necessarily a speed thing, especially for, I would imagine, junior riders, new riders. You want to give them as much feel as possible. Correct, correct. You're going to get to one with the bike and actually feel what the bike's doing. Because the front also, as you would say on a car, you understeer and take a bit of power off. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same with the bike. The front, you put too much on the front, it's going to start pushing as an understeer uh, and yeah you got it and have you, you guys have been out for qualifying already we have been out and for how did that do your qualifying go i qualified fifth um not nice. my best uh, qualifying but yeah i didn't get much practice yesterday chain broke in the one session and we on the second lap so okay so the train is i take it the train is fully sorted <laughs> yeah, now all sorted. okay well good luck for the race we look forward to that uh, it's, it's always exciting I, and i hate to say this as a spectator it's fantastic when this happens but as a guy that's the rider you're just like oh man i wish it would dry up i think we're gonna see a lot of action out on circuit today most definitely yeah it does you'll see a lot of the guys some people enjoy the wet Get a better feel yeah. of the bike and guy oh, that's sort of midfield ends up being in front yeah uh, so definitely the, i wouldn't say evens the playing field but mixes it up well they do exciting. call it the ultimate equalizer and now fifth place is maybe not such a bad place to start <laughs> from. let them sort themselves out in front and come and get them afterwards exactly. <laughs> well thanks for stopping by we appreciate your time and uh, good luck from the race fifth place Ain't no thing should yeah. be fine make sure the start is good yeah <laughs> Excellent. good luck thank you there. cheers man well, there you go, folks, SBK riders relishing these conditions. I, I wish them all luck. We see the GTI guys lining up now. Tate over there in the Angry Racing Jetta. We spoke to him early on, but out at the moment, Davi Joubert, who didn't race at the last race, now currently leads us off in the sports car and GT qualifying uh, with a 1 minute 26.6 or 1 minute 25 is best time. Not that fast, to be honest. I suspect he'd be in the teens, but now it means that the rain really is coming down and the circuit starting to get a bit sticky over here i'm now currently sat in this drizzle and it is a light drizzle and it is pretty constant so 
I do suspect these drivers are going to have to deal with some very slippery conditions out there. Kilan is uh, uh, not known to be one of the best when it comes to drainage. We even see circuits like Kailami having uh, uh, issues with drainage going into uh, the second, technically first, corner on that circuit. We saw that at the Kailami 9 hour a couple months ago. But today, uh, the, with these greasy conditions, the oil will lift, especially with the first rain in a couple of days. The circuit has been cold, so we will see the oil lifting and that means you kind of got to tip till your way around the circuit there's going to be spots and places where oil was dropped in practice that will now suddenly become slippery and you might not know it and this is the situation where experience pays off and those that are very good at driving in these conditions will get some sort of advantage and currently that person is Davi Jubeir, the king of Kilani, right on his tail. And uh, we said uncharacteristically in, in fourth place now, he sits in second position is Steve Humble. Gary Kiesfetter, multiple champion in this category in the 43 car. In uh, third position with a 27.1, Philip Boyson with a 32. And Craig Harper down in fifth place, back in the seat with a 34. He's only driving a 1.6. Harper, and of course the Harper can be spec with uh, up to V8. Uh, I've driven it with a V6 engine Alpha a couple of years ago. Did a 121 around here, which was just frankly incredible in that car. I was just talking about the Harper in the week. I spoke to a friend of mine, Junaid Hamid, from Raceweb, and uh, we spoke about how incredible the Harper is for a locally built Cape Town South African car, but not just a locally built car, just on any level. Mika Sala was here a couple of years ago, the Formula One driver, and he drove that Harper sports car and said himself that it's a fantastically built sports car especially for something that's built sort of from the ground up and locally built so uh, if you've ever chatted to Craig Harper you'll understand that uh, there, there's Frankie Frankie if you can join us over here that'd be great if you've ever chatted to Craig Harper you'll understand uh, the the fan is not the only thing that's twirling in the, in his world. He's a propeller head that knows a lot about a lot. So that car is very well built. Uh, and speaking of well built, Frankie Yunus joins us now from the tower. It's a bit chilly. I know it's a bit warmer up there, but uh, you're going to join me out here in the rain for a bit, Frankie, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'd love to just get insights on the various categories from you. What you think are going to be the categories to watch today? Well, clearly the category that's uh, lining up here to go and uh, qualify the uh, GTI Challenge, uh, there's about 30 of them Ooh. in classes A, B and C that has entered. I see the chairman, Gerd Duplessis, just walking, showing the guys that uh, it's all systems go. Uh, the weather is going to play a very important uh, role today. Yeah, these cars hate this kind of weather. Yeah. Um, the motorcycle boys, they're not going to want this weather. No. no. But uh, there is a rain or not. Yeah, there's a full field of motorcyclers taking part in all three yeah. categories. It's a pity the Clubman's boys are sitting out today, mm. but they had to have yeah. their set out. Yeah, look, they had their fun at the last race. They were slipping and sliding all over yeah. the place. Eh? And uh, the Formula Libras, as a matter of fact, I think. I noticed on the entry list that I was sent, there's about 15 or 16 uh, Formula Libra guys that have entered. So they're picking up in, in, in numbers, especially the Formula V section. There's about eight or nine of them over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Sadly, the um, V8 Masters is down to about only 10 cars that yeah. entered. Uh, I know for a fact that Menno Parsons has not entered. He's actually flying his P51 Mustang at the Rand Air Show today up there in Gauteng. So um, he, for those that don't know, he actually flies aeroplanes as yeah. well as a yeah, hobby. Yeah, not a Ford Mustang, P51. <laughs> yeah, no, it's aircraft. <laughs> and uh, so he's taking part in the uh, Rand Air Show. So he won't be down here. But yeah, I think in general, that's going to be a very good race meeting. And if it rains, it always just adds that uh, extra mystery to oh, it. Because yes. you're not too sure exactly oh, yes. what's going to there's happen a, There's next. a saying at Kilani, when you hear the words, here comes the rain. Yeah. Everybody galvanizes, jumps, change those tires, drops those tire pressures. But the GTI Challenge guys, just to keep everyone inside, they've got a standardized setting. They've basically got a setting that most of the guys know works. Most of them run similar setups. They're all running the same control tire. Yeah. Um, they've got coilovers in most of the cars now, so they can adjust that. But for the most part, their dry setups and wet setups aren't that different. So yes. But you kind of got to drive around the car in these conditions. And you know that these are a bunch of hot shots, say, eh? with oh, the yeah. classes A, B, or C. It doesn't matter. The entire GTI challenge is They're known as fast. the Brat Pack. It doesn't matter yeah, yeah, yeah. 
if you're 20 years old or 50 years yeah. old, you pop It used to be the youngsters in Class C <laughs> only. And it changes every couple of years when Aldrin, fun, uh, uh, Aldrin was, was, was driving a couple of years in Class C. John, John he was, they were dominating Class yeah. C. Piet van der Waal dominated Class B. And then you got Andries van Eerden and the guys in Class A. And every year, they, 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 they shuffle and they change. Yeah. But now you've got competitive classes right the way through. Well, it's competitive all the way through, A, B, and C. And what's also very nice is a lot of your Comke Polar Cup drivers from Cape Town Racing GTI Challenge Class A. Your Umpi Swartz that's in yeah. there. Tate um, Bishop. Tate Bishop is in Class B. Class Gio. A is your, your Charles Fisser. Yes. Uh, Nathan Victor, that is going to enter the Polo, class, uh, the Polo Nationals in September. Nice. He races a Class nice. A as well. So nice. he's putting a car together for that one, which will be in two weeks' time. So there's a lot of Cape Townians that's going, that is filtering through well, into into the uh, the Polar Cup. They are currently out at the moment. The yes. GTI Challenge guys are out on track right now. Mm -hmm. And we wait for those times to come up. They should be on screen. But uh, we've got someone that's going to join us here yep. now. DJ Boyson, one uh, of our former Libra Class S drivers. So mm -hmm. folks at home, enjoy the race meeting. I know the commentary team and uh, Ernest and myself will enjoy it. So... Ernest, thanks. We'll chat later. Yeah. I'm going to hand over the mic to DJ. DJ, lekker boete gaan het. DJ, how's it, how's it going, <laughs> Formula Libre boys? Good year. Uh, I've got a special uh, place in my heart for Formula Libre. I used to race with you guys many, many years ago. Um, the Burner, your, your, the Burner Factory, your sponsor, they're, they're quite involved with motorsport. So I see you rocking the cap here. I want to show some love to your, to your sponsor. Thing. Yeah, um, it's basically a German company. Um, so they're making like indoor heater fireplaces. Um, so yeah, it's we really happy to have them on board, and they're helping very, 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 very much. So, so can yeah. they can they fit a fireplace over here? Yeah, so it's actually right where they for this, eh? So yeah, <laughs> we need to go talk to those guys. But uh, how did your campaign go this morning? Qualifying just finished. It's yeah. a bit slippery out there. Yeah, eh? it was very tricky, uh, especially this morning, um, because we went out and it was quite dry, and I saw it's the rain is coming. So obviously, I just put it three flying laps in and afterwards the rain started coming so but luckily we managed to hold it in second place so nice. yeah it's quite good so nice and but, but with, with your guys cars the setup is so firm that any changes in surface makes the car a totally different car yeah this is like this morning um, especially with this cold weather and to getting heat in the tires we just disconnected the anti-rolls yeah. and making the car just move more Lean so a yeah bit so more, yeah the that, that helps, do all the that work, helps so. sort of put the, the, the weight onto the correct tire to yes, get that heat Yes, and going. obviously the tire pressures uh, run it lower as we, what we normally do on a, on a hot day. So, yeah, no, it's, we're getting there. So. Jeez. Well, <laughs> uh, this is exactly the, uh, uh, an example of the trepidation that we feel when we get into a race car. When, when you close the door in a race car, it's a totally different experience. You're cocooned in there. Yeah. But in a single seater, you only get that sensation once you pull out the pits, isn't it? Because yeah, you're always kind of exposed yeah, as soon as you start driving. Then it's Especially with the score weather, like I said, I mean, we change everything. The brake bias, you go more brakes at the back because oh, otherwise the front's going to lock up. Lock up, yeah. And every, everything but makes a big But that means you, you can't you know? trail brake as much, isn't it? Yeah, no, definitely. So. Jeez, it gets me, gets my blood pumping. Speaking of blood pumping, the GTI Challenge guys are out there. I'm just going to have a look and see what they're doing. Yuri Swart in the lead at the moment in Class A. And uh, I see Class B, we've got Carl Wilcher leading us off. Those times should be on the screen here for you folks, so you can check those out. And uh, the GTI Challenge guys will be a category to watch later on. You guys, I uh, ever have some decent numbers today, Evan. Yeah, we actually, it's our biggest field today. Um, we're 19 cars on the grid, so yeah, the race is going to be actually very interesting. And what is going to be crucial is to to do where, where you can see where you can overtake the back markers and obviously you want to do it in a straight line so you must obviously prepare it as you go out of the corner so yeah it's, it's everything that's it's, one of the more difficult things about modern motorsport because it's become accepted now that you've got to be good at dealing with back markers yes while i was talking to one of the young drivers the other day van eerden and and uh, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, dylan van eerden we we're talking about when you look at your lap times it's not just lap times nowadays it's total no, it's, time it's total total so time so how do you best your total time and by to do that you've got to make sure you're overtaking a slick every single time yes. no time wasted behind another car yeah look um we have like your best best lap times obviously and then we have like a, a index of performance yeah, consistency, time. so yeah. 
you, you're trying to to get your lap times as close as possible for the index of performance. Yeah, of so course. obviously, if you're going to be all over the show with your lap times, yeah. you're going to be out. That's so. not going to work. Well, DK, is that, they, they call it DK. I don't, know, I don't think single DJ. seaters can drift. A D, is it DJ or DK? DJ. That's yeah. what I thought. If you were DK <laughs> over here, I thought it was Drift King. But this is DJ over here, of course, sponsored by the Burner Factory. We look forward to seeing you out on the front row of the grid in Formula Libre. Good luck for the race. Thank you so not much. Too much drifting Appreciate today it. in these conditions. Yeah, man. Bye. So, folks, we've got the GTI Challenge guys out at the moment. Yuri Swat leads us off in class A. Kai Van Sale in second place. Nathan Victor, who we heard earlier on, is now going to be campaigning into Polo Cup for the first time in third position. Leading off class B, Kyle Walsh and Vaughan behind him. Byron Mitchell slots in behind that. Further down class C, Chase Heddle, good friend of ours, is in first in class C at the moment, but it looks Looks like Dylan van Eden just pumped him. It's changing all the time. So the GTI Challenge guys, of course, doing what they do best and uh, giving us some fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, results over here. Ooh, Upi Swat does a 24-4 in these conditions. Oh my, that is ridiculously fast, folks. That could be one of the fastest times we've ever seen in this category, and he's doing it in these conditions. Yuri Spot does seem to kind of be in a class of his own when it comes to GTI Challenge lately. The guys are always threatening, but geez, how do you do a 24.415 in these conditions? That takes some doing. Kai Van Sel, though, hits back with a 25.6, and Colin Meader does the same. So where before you had... I remember when Brett Roach was the first guy to dip into the 25s in this category. Uh, that was many, many years ago. There was one or two guys that could do 25s. Now you've got one, two, three, four, five, six guys able to do 25s in these conditions. Frankly, unbelievable in those cars. These drivers really are doing something special. Oh, the GTI Challenge guys. Let's not forget Razik Harris in the mix there as well. But uh, a full field today. Suleiman Effendi out there as well in Class C. Looks like it. Yes, indeed. Tate Bishop uh, still not out. So Tate Bishop not getting categorized at this stage. I wonder what's going on there in Class B, as it? And uh, if you guys see me uh, talking to some people behind cameras because everybody's friendly today, it's Kilani Race Day. The moods are good. The uh, hype is real. And today is our regional race day out here in Kilani. And soon I will be handing over to our commentary team in the tower, led, of course, by Frankie Ennis and the rest of the team. Gary Fleming as well up there in the tower. They will be talking us through the racing for the day, an action-packed day of racing to look forward to. And these conditions over here, I think, are going to lead to a lot more action. We've got two more minutes before we cut to the guys upstairs. And uh, while we do so, let's enjoy the last couple of seconds of GTI Challenge Racing as Yuri Swat cements his pole position over there with the 24. I don't think anybody's going to be beating that time because I do think, morning dear Devon, I do think that uh, the racing is going to be slowing down ever so slightly, but the action certainly will not. Of course, Devon from the sports car category, uh, he does race a 350Z himself. Uh, but also works on a whole bunch of cars, including the hill climb winning car of Andre Besedeno, which uh, is an incredibly fast car, even behind the team, behind that hill climb win and hill climb record. But back to the action today. GTI Challenge, the name of the game. We've got Formula Libre, we've got sports cars, we've got uh, classic cars as well, and many, many other categories, including three bike categories. And later on, we'll be hearing from Brad. I'll be going to chat to him later on as well, trying to get an update from the guys in the pits, and hopefully feeding you guys those updates as the day goes on. And of course, during lunchtime as well, giving you guys all that information on what's happening on the circuit. But for now, I'm pretty sure that you guys are tired of hearing my voice. So soon I'll be handing it over to the guys in the tower and we'll be cutting to those visuals of the cars on circuit. And you guys can see for yourselves exactly what you can expect to see today here at Kilani Raceway. But if you do want to come through and enjoy the racing yourself, you can do so. You can see I'm sitting out here in the rain. It's not that cold today, actually. Normally, it's quite chilly and you'll see me shivering. But today, it's actually not that bad. Just make sure to layer up. I've got my Nomex knickers on because they, they work. They just work. Even when you're not racing, they do work kind of well to keep the heat in. 
but if you want to come through it's 80 bucks for adults and 20 rand for uh, under 13s uh, and uh, yeah i mean come check out some solid racing good action lots of cars the vibe is real no more masks and by the way the kilani lease is all but signed and dotted so we can look forward to much much more racing in the coming years whether you're into drag racing drifting circuit racing rally cross all of those things will be leveling up there's a lot of work happening around the circuit now that we know that the lease is intact so we can expect lots and lots more action from Kilani Raceway in the future for all you enthusiasts out there. Doesn't matter what you like, doesn't matter what you race, there's a place for everyone here at the circuit. Back today is, of course, the Power Series, where we see who's the fastest around the track. And so far, Yuri Swart does same seem to be one of the fastest in GTI Challenge. Here come some of the bike guys now. Uh, I think that is pretty much the end of qualifying at this stage. And I'm just waiting for uh, the signal. And it looks like that's it. Looks like we're going to be wrapping up here. My name is Ernest Page, and this is the Kilani Power Series. Folks, stay tuned for a whole day of racing and entertainment. If you love motorsport, you've come to the right place. And I'm going to send it up back to Frankie and the guys in the commentary tower soon. They will be ready for us up in the tower, just waiting for that signal and the thumbs up from the guys. Uh, once they are, we'll send it up to them and you guys can get stuck into some incredible, incredible racing. So, folks, that's it from me. And I'll see you guys later on. There'll be plenty action coming through. Over to you guys at the tower. Frank, you're the guys. Ernest Page, unfortunately... Unfortunately, uh, Dex isn't uh, with us uh, today. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, and um, so Ernest is uh, busy running around doing uh, most of the work on his own. So it's a uh, hi, hello and welcome everybody around Kalan International Raceway and to the people at home that's watching this production brought to you by I'm Reset. My name is Frank Guinness. I'll be joining the commentary box today by Mr. Byron Hoyt, Mr. Francois Butler, and Mr. Emil Brunt from Tiny Spit Box. Uh, Byron, good morning. The weather, rather ominous today. I thought this was great beach weather, this actually, Frankie. <laughs> good morning, everybody. I think that's where Dex is. I think he's just lying there on Bloberg. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, well, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Frankie, uh, Tiny, of course, here with us as well, Tiny Spit Box. And uh, somewhere in the commentary uh, section over here is Francois Butler. As yeah, well. he's, he's running up and down the uh, race control tower. It's getting Jim. Things gym. sorted out, uh, but yes, he's here, and um, it's a full team. Well, it's not a full team because Gary Fleming is uh, in uh, Broemfontein at this point in time. They were come him and FC Nivota are doing a, a do for SA slash MSA oval track dirt national at uh, Skumans Park in uh, Broemfontein. Round one was last night, and uh, round two is uh, this evening. And then they are flying back uh, from Bloemfontein, I think only about 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. They've got a flight on, uh, on, on I think it's uh, Air Link, if I'm not mistaken. They are flying out of Bloemfontein back down to Cape Town. But yes, we are here at Kalan International Raceway. And Byron, race number one, about to uh, commence the uh, Pirelli V8 Masters, the guys out there in those APV Ford Mustangs. Yeah, no, just a note to the, each of them over there as well. Very careful out of the pits over here. Remember, all on cold tires. We had a, an incident last time that uh, we had a, a car go into the uh, pit wall and uh, well of course that uh, wrecked their race and uh, they all easily going out there now remember these conditions very ominous as frankie has said there's uh, drops of rain on the windows of the commentary box over here it is uh, a very cool out there it has been cool earlier on today we thought it would all clear but it doesn't look like uh, for now that's going to be the case uh, but uh, only seven of them out there frankie it's uh, not a big field at all we have uh, uh, over two classes, the gold class and the silver class. It's Sean Moore that'll be the man on pole position. And uh, we talk about 11, oh well, 1.1 seconds faster than uh, Carl now in second position, the car number 64. Yeah, normally we're used to about 13, 14, even 15 V8 master cars out there. We're down to seven. I think there was about nine or 10 of them that entered. You'll see uh, Byron is a name that's not on the list today and uh, that's the name of Menno Parsons 
Now, for those people that don't know, Menno Parsons actually flies aeroplanes as well as a hobby, as a pastime. He owns a North American P-51 Mustang, and he is flying that aircraft today at the Rand Air Show there in Johannesburg area. So this is why he is not taking part today. His aircraft's name is called Mustang Sally, and uh, so he will not be out uh, today, sadly. But yeah, there's still, it's a very small field of V8s, and this is not what we are normally used to. Well, hopefully an action-packed race, uh, despite the uh, small field. Seven cars out there in all. I mentioned the front row of the grid. Roy Campos will be uh, the car number 29, uh, the uh, number three on the grid. And then Richard Schroeder will be lining up alongside him in the TRS Construction APV. Then we have row three, Jason Ibertson uh, in the uh, uh, Autohouse Angel car. Dennis Geideck in the Knorhook car. Uh, that, of course, be number nine. And then uh, seventh, uh, in uh, all will be Gary Thompson but get Dennis Geideck and Gary Thompson they'll be the silver class runners the other five are all in the top gold class right so they are going to stop here on the grid just get the window a little bit open get some fresh air in the commentary box so uh, we are about to go and Sean Moore puts that car in pole position with a Carl Nell there on his outside the 73 and the 64 is on the front row of the grid then it is a 29 car that comes through there that is Roy Campos in the Campos transport outfit then behind him is uh, Jason Ibertson and uh, then coming through there as well is that 17 car and that is Gary Thompson he's in there behind Ibertson then Richard Schroeder coming through as well and then you've got the number nine car of Dennis Heideck that is in there just behind Richard Schroeder only seven cars, but I think it's going to be pretty interesting stuff, Byron. Well, it's an eight-lapper. Hear the whistle now. I think that is the two-minute board coming out, which will be followed by that one-minute board. It's not a full one minute. And then, of course, our man with the red flag over there will walk out of the way. The lights will go out, and away we'll go for this eight-lap race. Seven cars in all, the Pirelli V8 Masters. As the, uh, oh, there we go. There, of course, first of all, it is a rolling start. So uh, they'll have the uh, safety car, pace car, whichever way you want to put it. It will uh, drive ahead into turn one, holes hook. And the rest of the field will follow suit then. A lot of wheel spin off the line there for car number 29. Roy Campos getting the heat into those rears. Remember, a lot of power underneath that right foot of these guys over here as well. V8. Ford Mustang engines, APV 347 ISs. Right, out of turn one, they roll now. The safety car is making its way into turn number two, into Quarry Corner. And uh, through Quarry Corner, they go towards uh, turn three, which is Interceptor Shoeware Corner. A big thanks to Interceptor. A big thanks to uh, Fastron. A big, big thanks to the city of Cape Town. A big thank you to the Porsche Club. And then we'll say a big thanks to all our other major sponsors as well, namely Wingful Motors and best price for my car, Mr. Johnny van die Kerk. So, um, Byron, the uh, V8 Master drivers are busy rolling through Turn 3, Interceptor Corner, and making their way up the hill towards a Turn 4, Malmesbury Sweep. So very brave hardy dars on the outside of Interceptor over there as well. Yeah, well um, <laughs> I, 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 I tell you what, when, when they come through that full tilt, tilt those three hardy dogs are not going to be there anymore. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think in, in yesterday's uh, free practice two in the Dutch, for the Dutch Grand Prix, there were some oh. doves that were on the outside of one of the turns over there when somebody went off uh, of the uh, circuit and uh, the uh, commentators were actually uh, having a good laugh about those uh, very brave doves. We also had yeah. seagulls in Canada a number of years ago that were watching Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton come towards them. But yeah, like you say, Frankie, it's going to get nice and fast and loud and I think uh, they'll vacate the area fairly shortly as the Kia safety car takes them around you'll see them weaving on the back straight get the heat into those tires over there as well I don't and quite know how much heat they're going to get into those tires with the track temperature way down and they're not doing a heck of a huge speed as well but yeah they will they will get a little they will generate a touch of heat not that much but I think just enough to make it sticky before they go full tilt into turn one Oh well, yeah, they come around now. They'll be Sean Moore. Car number 73 will be pole position. Car now in the Gears for Africa. 64 car. 
That, of course, is our front row year. They come out of uh, turn five per Tamina Fastron. They rocket it now underneath the city of Cape Town Bridge. The lights will go out and away we will go for race one of this, uh, of course, power series race for today. Here we go. And uh, towards the line three abreast already, Frankie going towards turn one. Yeah, and Sean Moore had that car completely out of shape. Oh, there's drama going into turn one, and that's Richard Schroeder. And he gets collected there by Dennis Heiduck. So already two cars in trouble in turn number one as uh, the rain starts coming down again. As a matter of fact, Sean Moore was completely out of shape when he dropped the hammer. And he had that 70 cars squirming, 73 cars squirming all over the place. Lucky he managed to hold on to it. And the two cars that are out there is Richard Schroeder and then the nine car of Dennis Heiduck. Lots of bodywork out there, Frankie. Uh, Richard Schroeder is out of the car now. You'll see bodywork, you'll see uh, a wheel uh, and everything. So I don't know, they may have to actually stop this race. I have to take a look to see if there's going to be any red flag coming out. Not at the moment yet, but they're getting all that debris off of the circuits uh, quickly. So when the cars come around again, it's going to be double waved yellows, of course. Double waved yellows, marshals on circuit, of course, so that, of course, warns everybody. So down the back straight they go. While we have a look at that situation, heading down towards turn number five. Remember, the race is still on as uh, they head into turn five, and it's Carl Nell that has got the lead. Heading into turn five through Fostron Corner goes Carl Nell. Nell leading them out of five, out of Fostron. He's got Sean Moore tucked in there behind him there is a little bit of rain but really not much to talk about and to mention as they head under the city of cape town bridge it is nell that is in p1 it is a moore that is in second position and i see the safety card board being deployed here or being shown here at the start finish line as the marshals are still busy trying to sort out that uh, stricken number four v8 master ford mustang of richard schroeder yeah they all have to uh now line up behind the safety car as they come around and uh, yes uh, the uh, red flag was being on standby so they've decided on the safety car they've missed uh, the first and second uh, place runners of course Carl Nell and Sean Moore have come past so they'll have to join up at the back and get back into their positions as well and uh, then of course you'll pick up third place man who is uh, Jason Ibertson at the moment of course uh, Thompson the leader of the uh, silver class in fourth position and then, of course, it was uh, Campos uh, coming in after that, the number 29, but Shredder and Gaida. Here's the replay, Frankie, and losing the back end there as they go into turn one uh, was Richard Shredder, and he made contact uh, there, which I think was with Dennis Gaida. Yes. Yeah, that was Dennis Gaidak that he made contact. There's even a wheel yeah. that he's uh, rolling there on the circuit. As a matter of fact, uh, Roy Campos was also involved, that he was tagged there by Sean Moore. Ooh going into turn number one then there was chaos behind them between Dennis Heideck and then the number four of Richard Schroeder well, so three cars out of this one Campos Schroeder and Heideck uh, that's unfortunate we had only seven to start off with Frankie now we have a mere four of them left and Thompson the sole car left in the silver class as well running in fourth position behind the safety car though it is going to be the likes of Ibertson and uh, Thompson and then only joining will be Nell and Moore as they come around now that's a Kia safety car there lights on they'll keep behind that safety car and weave to try and get themselves some heat into the tires it's very difficult today it's a cool uh, bree or cool breezy day there's rain uh, coming down as well so it is incredibly difficult over there to keep the heat into the uh, into the tires maybe a little bit of brake temperature as well um, and uh, remember, as they go around, the tire pressures also will drop as well as they go behind the safety car. And as I speak, uh, Roy Campos uh, brings a 29 car back out on circuit again. So uh, Campos uh, will now make it five cars. Uh, yeah. Schroeder and Heidek is out of this one. I've just Two been informed down. here by, um, by Emil Brandt, uh, Tiny of a Tiny Spitbox. Uh, Tiny, you got some information for us on the radio? Yeah, Frankie, um, what they're gonna, going to do is they're going to um, carry on with uh, the safety car. Um, we'll just make double sure the safety car will come in this next lap. They'll be doing um, double wave yellows, I think, through the, through the race. Uh, we'll just wait for some extra confirmation on that. And with the rain coming down, it's going to make things a bit very, very tricky at the moment. So um, 
yeah, let's hold thumbs and see if we can get, actually get through this race at the moment. Well, talking about making things uh, tricky, look at our window uh, behind us as well. It's uh, getting quite wet and to see what's going on through the window is going to be quite tricky. But uh, luckily we do have the, uh, the screen and the uh, cameras around the track as they go past the stricken APV of uh, Richard Schrader, number four there as well. And uh, like Frankie also pointed out, Campos is back in the race. He should be about two laps down actually now of the field. Well, so at least we've got five of them out there. Nell Moore, Ibertson, uh, Thompson and Campos. A lot of rain there on the um, cameras as uh, the Ford Mustangs roll up the Jaber straight towards turn two behind the Kia safety car that leads them out of turn two. And uh, it is, uh, as you see them on the circuit, it is uh, Jason Ibertson that uh, leads them out from Gary Thompson. And that's about all that you see out there at this point in time. The rest are busy. Still trying to figure out where the rest of them have disappeared to. Dennis Hyduck's nine car is in the uh, pit. So they'll get that car sorted out for the second race a bit later on. I can see it through the commentary box window here. Standing there in the... Uh, uh, Jaber Pitts, but yeah, only a handful of them out. The rest of them are making the way out of turn number one. So that uh, leading uh, Dio is going into turn four behind the uh, safety car, as the rest of them, uh, Byron, are only working their way now through turn two. That's Carl Nell, Sean Moore, and uh, Roy Campos. I've just been informed by Tiny Safety Car will be in this lap. Uh, that's all fair enough, but these three drivers have to hoof it because the safety car is going down the back straight already with Ibertson and Thompson in there behind the safety car and the rest of them are only working their way up the uh, Tigerberg straight now towards a uh, turn number four towards Malmesbury. So by the time they get into Malmesbury, sweep and work their way out of four, these, uh, this leading duo behind the safety car will be making its way through turn five, through Fastron. Yeah, it's very interesting, Frankie. Five laps left to go uh, as they stand at the moment. When they cross that line, it will be uh, half distance. And of course, it will be in the four laps left to go. The safety car board will be now retracted. You'll see the marshal will do such. And uh, here comes our Kia safety car now. We'll come into uh, the old pit lane. And then uh, we'll have, first of all, Jason Ibertson, who's currently in third place ahead of Gary Thompson in fourth place. So uh, a little bit of out of track position here at the moment because we have Carl Nell and Sean Moore coming up. They will be the uh, first and second positions in this current race. They've got Roy Campos uh, that is with them who's now been classified as one lap down uh, in this race as they cross the line right now. Remember like Frankie you said uh, yellow flags will be waving in the uh, section where that uh, APV number four is of Richard Schroeder. The whole rear suspension on the left hand side being destroyed over there as well. And here they come right through already, side by side, Frankie. They're not really supposed to do that. No passing under yellow flags. Oh, losing the tail end there out of turn number one. That is a Sean Moore. Sean Moore loses the tail end. So these are effectively your two leaders, or should I say Nell is in one, in oh. P1. Moore is in second Moore. position. The car between Nell and Moore, on, you see on screen, that is a Campos. And he is uh, at least one lap down. Yes, there is. Well, there was, of course, not passing for position, Frankie, but still passing under yellow flags. There could be a bit of a reprimand over there. We'll, we'll keep you updated on that one. Sean Moore is just crawling around in that black and green APV of his. The man who started on pole position is now currently in uh, second position. But remember, it's very wet out. It's not very wet. It's more, a lot of moisture. You can see the back end standing out now. A change of surface flag will be coming out just to remind the driver of course that uh, this is a wet surface uh, that they're on but uh, I can tell you one thing they know that very well already yeah it's a uh, very uh, sticky I should I say very slippery out there the rain has stopped uh, at this point in time and uh, it's a very greasy track and uh, the guys are going to battle out there keeping in mind that they are on um, slick tires as uh, the leader heads uh, under the uh, bridge and that's uh, that car you see there in the middle that is a uh, Carl Nell that crosses the line he is there in a P1 then behind him is Campos that is not on the lead lap second place man is Sean Moore and this is Sean heading towards the bridge now Sean Moore crosses the line Sean Moore heads into turn number one 
and uh, Sean Moore is effectively in that second position but uh, there is a back marker between himself and uh, the leader Carl Nell now there's two of them as a matter of fact um, Roy Campos and uh, Gary Thompson. Yeah, 15.1 seconds between Nell and Moore now. When they started off and crossed the line, it was about a second and a bit. But uh, Sean Moore is just going to have to be uh, basically satisfied with second position in this race. Just get it home. Just keep it on the island. And uh, he goes now into turn two in that number 73 black and green uh, machine. And uh, Carl now still in the gears for Africa 1, still leading the way now. But we, uh, of course, have Ibertson, who should be coming around soon as well uh, to uh, start uh, another lap ahead of Thompson. He was 6.6 .6 seconds ahead of Thompson. Two different classes, though, because Thompson is the only silver class man left after the exit of Dennis Geiduk. So the leader is heading into turn number five. There's debris lying on the circuit there in turn four. We can pick that up on a monitor. That car you're seeing in your screen there. That is your race leader, that uh, red and yellow APV Ford Mustang. That is Carl Nell that sits out there in P1. This is um, Ibertson crossing the line, and here comes your leader towards us. And that is a Carl Nell sitting out there in P1 as he works his way into turn number one. Remember, there's double yellow, so there's no overtaking in turn one with that uh, stricken number four. Ford Mustang still standing there of Richard Schroeder. Well, Carl now puts a 133.842 in as his fastest lap. As we uh, wait for uh, Moore to cross the line, as he does now, it will be the penultimate lap of the race. He's 23.698 seconds further back. Then we have the Auto House Angel, a uh, car of Jason Ibertson that's yet to uh, come around. And... Uh, of course, they uh, were the ones who picked up the safety car earlier on, third and uh, fourth, Roy Campos. But yeah, it's only a lap and a bit left to go now. We'll see as they come through. Was it turn four? Oh, it's a lap now. Sorry, excuse me. My mathematics is uh, very much out this morning. So uh, there is a little bit of debris that's uh, on the circuit at turn four, but just off the racing line, uh, it looks like it. So it doesn't look like it's affecting anybody right now. So your leader going down the back main for the final time, the chequered flag. He's been ready there on the start-finish line, and that is that 64 car of Carl Nell working his way down the back straight. A lot of yellow flags out all over the place. Nell making his way into turn number five through Fostron Corner. Carl Nell comes. He does have uh, Ibertson in uh, front of him, but Ibertson is effectively in third position. And behind him is the leader coming towards us. He'll take the victory. Carl Nell in the 64 car. We'll bring it home in uh, P1. Moore will finish in second, but uh, it's Campos that'll come to the line. But he's not, he's not in that. He's actually in that fourth position. He's Roy Campos. And he's the last of the finishers, Frankie. Gary Thompson's number 17 was parked uh, in turn five at uh, Per Tamina Fast Run. So out of the race, no silver class cars finishing this race, unfortunately, along with the likes of Richard Schroeder, who's parked at turn one, and uh, Dennis Geidek's number nine car. So it's uh, Nell from Moore. Ibertson we uh, will get uh, soon as well. Here comes Moore in second position. Now, Ibertson's taken the checkered flag already. He uh, is a lap down. He is in that, uh, he's in that uh, third position. He's uh, Jason Ibertson. No, I don't see a checkered flag next to his name quite yet. So he will be on the circuit still. He will claim third place uh, overall. And uh, like we said, uh, Campos a lap down. And uh, I think uh, Iverson might be lost in the mist here somewhere. No, Iverson, <laughs> Iverson's making his way out of turn number three. So... Um, out of uh, interceptor corner heading towards turn four so Gingerly. yeah this is Gingerly. this is this is not exactly the way we wanted to start the day's racing with uh, seven cars and total con chaos out there and a uh, whole lot of issues and it was literally not what we expected but yeah we had to literally just figure our way through this one as uh, the 46 car is going down the back main i think he's going to pull into the pit so basically as you see them there on the monitor, it'll be Carl Nell in P1, Sean Moore in second, Jason Ibertson in third, followed there by Roy Campos, and two laps down is a Gary Thompson, and then a DNF there for Richard Schroeder and for Dennis Heiduck. So that was a very interesting way to start the day, as you saw the 17 car still standing there in your picture. That car was uh, pulled off there by the scrutineering area as the Ford Mustang drivers make their way into pit lane. So yeah, 
a rather weird way to get the activities underway. But hello everybody, wherever you're watching this, around the circuit, not too many people here at this point in time, they will arrive. But for you guys at home, hello, welcome, and welcome to Kalani International Raceway. For the Wingful Motors and uh, best price from our car, Power Series, the September round. You wouldn't say, Byron, that uh, today is the third day of spring, if you look out the commentary box window. <laughs> Well, that's always the, the misconception that spring starts on the 1st of September. Um, I don't want to get scientific, so I'll rather not. But yeah, it's still a bit of cold weather, still a little bit of rain. Remember, we are in Cape Town, Frankie. This is the... Oh yeah, now the weather changes. We're the capital of the world. You get four seasons in one day. <laughs> this is the only, one of the few cities in the world where you get four seasons in one day. Will we leave, however? Never. No, we wouldn't leave unless you were literally forced to, which I hope never happens. <laughs> Right, so uh, Francois Butler joins us on uh, Mike's side. He'll uh, join uh, uh, Byron because we've got three bike races coming up next and uh, let's hope that the rain stays away. Francois, good morning, sir. Well, very good morning, Frankie. And uh, yeah, welcome to those that are here, to uh, my friend, uh, the, Mr. Detoy on the uh, far side on the grass embankment. Hope he's having a nice day. He's got his tent pitched and everything. And... Um, it's a little bit wet to say the least and uh, yeah the uh, we're gonna have the bridgestone super twin cup 650s and the super sport 300s notable emission there of uh, my son jared who will not be racing for the rest of the season so yeah that's uh, what's happening here today we uh, are going to have a bit of it's waiting for that cleanup uh, byron i believe that car had its uh, dry shelf pulled right out of the gearbox that uh, it Richard did Schreder, that uh, i wonder if they're going to be able to uh, Repair that be, uh, before the uh, race after lunch. Well, guys do miracles out there, uh, Francois. So you can never bet completely against it, but sometimes, you know. As long as they've got wire and the locking pliers, that's the main there thing. There you go. You know, yeah. then they can fix it. <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we wait and see uh, if he can come back there, Richard uh, Schroeder. He would want to be back out there again. It was unfortunate losing the back end there and uh, then basically backwards T boning. Here we go. Uh, Dennis Geiduck. Uh, as they uh, came by, oh, there we go, and that took the whole drive shaft on the uh, left-hand side out. There goes the the wheel trying to make a break for it, not that far though. And then the whole rear bodywork, the bumper, and everything at the back, and the fire bucky over there with uh, that's usually Paul Lehman in that bucky right on the scene very quickly. So uh, unfortunate there, but uh, hopefully fingers crossed that Richard Schroeder can do quite a bit of work on that. Uh, they've still got quite a bit of time. The first race is off, the second race is after lunch as the flatbed comes out, uh, doing a clean up as they are. You know, my mom and my, my wife are very good at cleaning up after me. So maybe, you know, give them a call and see if they can come help out as well. It'll be spick and span right after that. Let me tell you one thing. Yeah, let's have a look, see how this one uh, pans out. All right, well, we're going to have a short break while they do the track cleanup. We'll come back to you shortly. Uh, stay in touch. Hi Cape Town, Johnny from Wingfield Motors here. After 33 years of service to you, we make everything about cars even better. We buy your car, we sell your car, we finance your car, we service your car. Through our best price from our car app, we sell your car while you are driving it and return you much more money. And we can even rent you a car while we clear your credit score. Wingfield Motors and best price from our car will keep you driving no matter what. Wingfield Motors is an authorized FSP. Here's to the hard workers, the steady, the strong, and the bold. For the brave, the courageous, and the dedicated, the honorable ones. For the builders, the fixers, and the makers who go beyond measure so the ones they love have all they deserve. Interceptor. Great comfort, better safety.
The Porsche Club in Cape Town has its home right here at Kalani. In fact, it's the only Porsche Club in the world to have a clubhouse at an international racetrack. We are proud sponsors of Kalani and the Porsche Club straight. Our passionate club members and their families regularly attend our race meetings. If you own a Porsche, come and visit us at the Porsche Club and we will let you know what fantastic events we have on offer. The Porsche Club, the best car club in Cape Town.
Well, Byron, the uh, Super Twin Cups and the 300s take to the circuit. It's wet out there. I don't know how many of them have got wet tyres, to say the least. Um, I know wet, wet the tyres are not in uh, abundance in Cape Town. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how this one pans out and uh, how the race is going to turn out. Yeah, we have quite a field out there actually that has been entered, but how many of them, like you say, will go out? Mm. Uh, it's uh, for us to find out. And uh, I saw Richard Dickinson down there holding out the change of surface flag as they come out of the, uh, the paddock, basically, out of the, uh, the back of the pit area. So it just shows you the rain persistently coming down now. And they'll line up on the grid. Tristan Pinon, the quacker, uh, sponsored by Dad. He will be, of course, uh, the man on pole position, sharing the front row with him. Will be his uh, fellow 650 uh, ER650, uh, the uh, Project 60 racing uh, slate for Nickek. Lance Jonas also going to be on the uh, front row here in the Samurai Racing and uh, 1X Performance uh, machine. Of course, that is a Suzuki, a lovely, bright, yellow uh, 83 numbered Suzuki. Yeah, Lance Jonas rolling back the years, having lots of fun this year. Nice to see him out there. Um, Billy De Beers out there. Billy's back after being uh, ill last time round. Uh, Andre Calvert, Ryan Kutsia, Gerrit Fisser, the Ginger Ninja. Kyle Helix, a newcomer to the class there. Brennan Goldie's out there. Then in the 300s, we've got Nicholas and Braden Hutchins holding the front row there on the HSC machines. Uh, Raymond Alexander there also on the HSC. And Mitch Robinson, Stavro Michelle. Gavin Smith, Bradley Finn is a newcomer, Vainan Donaggi is out there as well, and Sean Glenn. Well, here's something interesting now. Uh, Francois, the uh, number 93 of Lineker, has pulled into third position, and uh, Lance Jonas uh, says, no, 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 son, uh, that's my place. I Thank worked you very hard much. for this. I worked hard for this. You're not <laughs> taking it away from me. Go away. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, of course... Uh, sorry, Uncle. Uh, it will be, uh, of course, Lineker getting into the uh, position on row two. Right, so we're looking at the tyres. I don't see any wet weather tyres on those bikes, so hey, this is going to be like skating on ice, but here we go. Oh. Let's have a look, see how this one pans out. Another uh, notable omission, I don't see Minky and Glover out there either, so yeah. Yeah, it's a truncated field. Right, so where they go down towards uh, turn number one. Jonas having a good start of it. Uh, he's got Slade for Nikak up on his inside. Having a look-see there, going into turn one, it looks like Lance Jonas gets the whole shot. Um, Lance uh, just showing his experience there. I mean, he comes out of the old uh, Power Sports series still back when they had 400s. So Lance knows his way oh. to ramble around the circuit. A lot of uh, scraps going on up into uh, turn number Lineker. two. Lenica up into uh, first position there. It's wet. Um, he takes the gamble. He's holding on. So uh, Lenica pulling away there from oh. Jonas. Uh, that's uh, very quick. Have to keep an eye on him. He's uh, he's really got the bit between his teeth and uh, winding the throttle wide open down into Interceptor Corner. So he goes through there. It looks like it could be uh, Tristan Pina up in third. Having a look-see as they roll their way through. And uh, everyone uh, riding semi-gingerly around the circuit. Well, that just uh, takes us there to uh, Jason Lineker. Uh, Francois, I don't know, he must uh, keep it easy out there, maybe not try and sprint away too quickly. Anything can still happen, he gets the head down, down the back straight towards turn 5, per Tamina faster on as Jonas uh, will keep it there in second position for now. And uh, they'll break into uh, turn 5 to complete lap 1 of 9 racing laps they'll be doing here in all. Uh, just picking up Tristan Pinar, I think that of course would be the uh, third place man, I speak under correction. But we'll try and find everything up there where the Hutchings are as well, because Brad and Nicholas Hutchings in the uh, power sp or the Supersport 300 class as they come to the line right now and crossing the line. Well, it looks like Lineker is on wets, so he's going to have a notable advantage. Here comes Tristan Pino up on the inside of uh, that man, Lance Jonas, and uh, Billy De Beer up in uh, P4, slayed down the field. He's down in about P5, so uh, we'll have to see how this one goes, but uh, Lineker just romping away with it up into a uh, quarry corner. Nich Nicholas Hutchings actually leads the uh, Supersport 300 class uh, at the moment, two tenths of a second ahead of uh, Carl Halleck. Uh, of course, he's not in the same class as him. Just going into second in class is that number 11 of Alexander, uh, Raymond Alexander, that uh, holds second. And then, of course, Braddon Hutchings will be third in class, just 1.6 seconds ahead of the 71 bike of Robinson. So uh, they, of course, have completed lap one. Lap two now, eight left, left to go, including the one they're currently on. 
Yeah, lots of uh, scraps taking place there. Pinar down in second now to Lineker. Lineker romping away. He's not being held back by any measure of means. Jonas down in third. Billy De Beer up to fourth. Fanikak in five. Nicholas Hutchins in P6 effectively on the circuit and leads out the 300. So he is definitely giving it a good stonk there. Kyle Hellick down in seven. Great uh, position there for a newcomer. He's doing uh, exceptionally well. Uh, Brendan Goldie up in eighth. Raymond Alexander in ninth. Ryan could see down in ten. Ryan would like to be a little bit higher, but uh, we have a look-see here. And, uh, well, Jason Lineker looking totally untouchable in this race, and he's got about an eight-second lead over the rest of the field. Well, shows you what a difference some wet-weather tyres can do in these conditions. Of course, he goes across the line. Fastest lap, a 132.491. Not surprised over there. The RST-sponsored Kawasaki Ninja. And uh, then we wait a little bit over here where some of our experienced heads come. It's going to be Jonas that will still cross the line ahead of, uh, well, Billy De Beer now. Where has Tristan Pinar gone, uh, Francois? Well, uh, Tristan Pinar we've lost. Um, is, so I'm not sure he uh, possibly might have put it down somewhere. Yeah, there's Tristan going very slow down the back straight down towards uh, Patamina Fostron corner. So uh, he's obviously got a bit of an issue. Uh, might have had a moment, I don't know, but uh, yeah, he's uh, gone down quite far down the field. Yeah, hopefully still uh, in the race as uh, we come along here as well. Now seven laps left to go. Lineker leads the uh, uh, Super Twin Cup 650s ahead of Jonas. 16.9 seconds between them. De Beer doing very nicely over there. Red Beard Racing Academy ER 650 of his. Slade von Nickak having to hold the uh, fourth position uh, number one bike. Uh, three tenths of a second off of De Beer when they came across the line. But look now as of 300s are coming up quite nicely. 4.8 seconds back off von Nickak is Nicholas Hutchings on bike number 72 one of the KTMs yeah it's all happening out there uh, great ride from Hutchings up in five ahead of Halleck and Goldie so uh, Nicholas Hutchings is still prevailing as he has for most of the season doing exceptionally well on that 390 on the uh, Hutchings service center bike so uh, having a look see now with the uh, leader com coming through that is um, Jason Lineker the rest of the field going down into uh, Pertamina Fastron corner and it's still Jonas leading out there over Billy De Beer. Billy sits there with him. And, uh, well, Billy looks like he's getting a little bit closer to Lance Jonas as he got past him. As we look, they come up towards us now. It looks like Billy De Beer has got past. And uh, Lance coming back at him. Not for long. Lance comes down into uh, turn number one with Slade up behind him. And... Uh, well, there's a dice of plenty, as I say, as they go down into turn number one. Yeah, that's going to be the battle of the race, Francois. They've got a bit of a gap between themselves and uh, Hutchings uh, a bit further back over there as well. 7.3 seconds back is Nicholas Hutchings. He's 2.4 seconds ahead of Kyle Halleck. Uh, they've crossed the line now. Uh, Brendan Goldie uh, in seventh position on bike number 188. And then Alexander second in the uh, Supersport 300 class. But look who's closing up to him as well. It is Braddon Hutchings, who's 1.1 seconds off of Alexander but 6.4 seconds ahead of Ryan Kutsia who's on his Kawasaki 650 and of course that's Project 60 racing. Well having a look there Ram and Alexander sort of maintaining their lead out of quarry there over Brandon Hutchins. Brandon would like to creep a little bit closer. Um, having a look at Ryan Kutsia on the 650 very gingerly around uh, turn number two so he obviously doesn't have wet weather tires on that bike and uh, I can tell you something, to be out there while the uh, rain is falling on normal tyres is not easy. Uh, Mitch Robinson closing down on the back of Kutsia. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, all happening out there. There you see them going down into uh, turn number three. That's intercept the corner. And uh, having a look back at the front, still could, uh, Jason Lineker. And uh, Lineker posting some good times. Slade for Nika getting a little bit quicker now on the first, sec first two sectors. So to, Nicholas Hutchings is really winding up the uh, kettle at the moment. So Hutchings definitely one to watch. Yes, Tristan Pinar coming down pit lane. So that's his race. And uh, Slade for Nikkei still up behind uh, Lance Jonas, who is behind uh, Billy De Beer, going down into turn number one. So these guys obviously have uh, wet compound tires on, and uh, they're finding it a little bit easier. But I tell you something, Jason Lineker, 
He bolted out of the starting blocks after he relegated to the fourth position on the grid and said, it doesn't matter where you put me, I'm still going to show you I can ride. Well, he was eager from uh, before the start of the race there. Remember, he pulled into third place. Of course, they had to swap around on the grid. He didn't even need that third place after all. You know, starting fourth was fine for him. And, uh, of course, when you're on the right tyre, that is what it's all about when the uh, conditions are like this. And, of course, 35.8 seconds between himself and De Beer, who's currently having the race of his life uh, as they cross the line it was two tenths of a second ahead of Lance Jonas but uh, Van Nikak still holding in there as well remember also a big talent slate Van Nikak and uh, he's still gunning for a top spot over here as well in the uh, uh, Super Twin Cup 650 Hutchings of course uh, Nicholas Hutchings still leading uh, the 300 class ahead of uh, Alexander in second place but he's eighth overall Braden Hutchings in uh, ninth place but third overall then Robinson Mitch Robinson in that uh, number 71 he's fourth in class at the moment ahead of Fenner in 12th, Donaggi in uh, in the 13th position at 5th, of course, in the uh, Supersport 300s, and ahead of Klein. Yeah, Sean Klein ahead of Gavin Smith, so uh, Sean uh, back out on circuit after a little bit of an injury, and uh, going down the back straights there are the uh, rest of the riders and uh, Hutchings trying to uh, close down some of the riders going down into Pertamina Fast Strong Corner. It's uh, wet, they go down absolute hammer and tongs but they've got to climb onto the brakes to make sure that they don't lose those uh, front ends or possibly slip the back end out and uh, keep it upright as the some of the riders cross over we're having a look here who's coming up towards us and uh, it's Nicholas Hutchins who is absolutely pedaling that 300 and he's ahead of a couple of the 650s so he's doing a sterling job out there and uh, have a look here Brandon Hutchins has managed to get past Raymond Alexander so Brandon Hutchins is on a fly and uh, that means he moves up into second behind his cousin Nicholas. So uh, the Hutchings family and the HSC Sir Hutchings Service Centre team are really putting their numbers on the boards. And of course that's uh, the same relation of course to the, the likes of Trevor Hutchings and all of them as well. So so many Hutchings on two and four wheels. Trevor, Lane, uh, Lane. Braddon, Nicholas, the, the whole family is on, on the circuit at, at any given time so it's great to have a, a racing family out on circuit. Yeah and of course we've gotten used to having them as a, a top two in the Supersport 300s as there are three laps now left to go. Coming out now of turn four, the double apex right hand it is Lance Jonas who gets his head down now, down the back straight as he goes. Then you, of course, have uh, Billy De Beer hanging in there as well. He'll go onto the inside, onto the outside. Will be Slade for Nickak as they go towards Pertamina Fastron. Uh, Lance Jonas will hold it for now. Remember, this is the battle for second position. Oh, and De Beer going in a little bit hot there and nearly loses it going into Pertamina Fastron and has now let the likes of. Uh, Lance Jonas and Slade Fanica get away from him. He's about a second and a half behind him. He went very hot going into five and nearly had an overrun into the dirt. Oh, he's lost a lot of ground then, of course, as well. So it's going to be biker down turn four. That, of course, is red flag. Red flag. Biker down at turn four. Rider down at turn four. So let's see who it there is. The rider is actually lying down in turn four. He's taking a bit of strain. It, I'm trying to pick up there. It looks like it could be Mitch Robinson. I'm looking at the helmet. Um, so it could be Mitch that's gone down and uh, he looks like he's in a little bit of pain uh, just checking the bike no it's not it's uh, some other machine there I just can't see the number but they are pushing the bike out the way so yeah red flag it will be then and uh, of course there were only three or two and a bit laps left to go I was starting to think uh, maybe prematurely that everybody had stayed on their uh, on their machines but uh, it would happen eventually if you are on the wrong tires that uh, somebody will go off and of course uh, if they don't restart the race it will be this man Jason Lineker that will be the uh, victor most certainly we had a lovely battle going on as well uh, between uh, Lance Jonas and Slade for Nickak uh, Jonas of course on the uh, Suzuki ahead of two Kawasaki's and uh, well, we'll just find out for you now as well the number of the bike that has gone down. 188, and that of course uh, is a Goldie. It's Brendan Goldie. Yeah, Brendan Goldie that went down there. He's still uh, looking a bit uncomfortable. And uh, I'm sure the medics will be there pretty shortly just to help him out. But he obviously took a bit of a tumble. The bike seems to be okay, but I think just the way that he fell might have just uh, put him in a bit of a uh, measure of discomfort but of winded I think maybe as well yeah look you know and you, you that's the um, the the um, 
rumble strip that uh, he possibly came down on and that concrete is very hard. I remember many years ago my son in the 150 race coming off there and uh, being hospitalized for two days with a bruised hip. So yeah, that is pretty much what it is and um, the bikes have to make their way back to the line. Well, let me tell you one thing. These uh, guys and girls that are out there, uh, and there are a few girls that take part. Zante Otto was not in this particular race. Uh, she would have been on that Honda. Uh, well, uh, let me tell you one thing, they're all brave and even braver to be out there in these conditions. I can tell you that much, but you can't tie a good man or woman down and uh, they'll always be back in the race. And uh, hopefully Goldie will be up and walking again there. And uh, oh, here comes a replay, Francois. Oh, we just he, uh, basically high sides over there, flips over the bike onto, you see, over the rumble strip. So it's before the rumble strips. Uh, so he would have taken quite a knock, uh, I'll tell you that much. You know the story about the tar, it doesn't give way. So, yeah, there we go, and on the hip, so that feels, visor comes off. So he's definitely felt that one, and I can assure you he's not going to be ambling around very nicely for the next couple of days to come. But let me tell you one thing, I always say, tough as nails, all of them out there, and uh, our medics and uh, crew, Always on point, always doing a great job. I always do a good shout out for them here at Kilani, our marshals, our medics, our everybody. And uh, let me tell you one thing, everything will be sorted as we go. Right, according to our screens, we've got four laps to go. They had 66% of the race done. They could have called the race, but it uh, looks like they're still going to run four laps. Lance Jonas is uh, gesticulating to the uh, powers that be, but it possibly call the race because 66% is the race uh, you can call a race at 66% so we'll have to see what the uh, clock of the course decides on this one your thoughts uh, Francois maybe uh, considering the conditions I know you've got a lot of guys out there who want to get back out there even though it's a short four lapper sometimes maybe just do the you know about self-preservation and just maybe just say look maybe shorten it and always make up for it in in races to come because it is a nine lap race that we were due to do well, I don't know. You know, that's that's up to the clock. Of course, he's got to make that uh, critical decision. It's not for us. We can speculate. I mean, that's why we're here, <laughs> for to speculate. We're good speculators. Yeah, we're, we're great speculators. Great speculators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a pair of uh, spec spectacles on to speculate, <laughs> much like you. But nonetheless, let's have a look, see how this one pans out. They might have a little bit of a sprint just to finish it off. Um, dash for cash. A dash for cash, yes. Um, we'll have to see how that one pans out, but we'll take it from there. So while we've got this moment uh, of uh, quiet, so to speak, just remember the marshals are looking to go on the uh, 1st of October to uh, East London. Uh, had a chat to Bradley Jacobs this morning. He says they're uh, more than halfway there with the funding, but uh, they're making a call to the uh, public and to uh, those around the circuit, or possibly viewers that are watching or listeners, to uh, if, see if they can't help them with a bit of funding for the 1st of October. So we've got about... Uh, two or three weeks to go or no maybe four weeks and uh, see if you can jump on board if you want to chat to Bradley Jacobs he is at the uh, turn six the Marshalls Clubhouse and uh, you're welcome to go and chat to him on that one so having a look down in the line Nicholas Hutchings is doing a little bit of uh, getting the bike ready for the next race he's uh, scratching a bit there on the handlebars he's got his hand up he could have a problem that will not bode well for his race
Right, so uh, that was a weird call, that one there, uh, Mania, that uh, we're going straight into the race, no warm-up. Those tyres are ice cold. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, uh, Francois. It's going to be a three-lap race, a dash for cash, and, uh, well... Well, looking down here, it's Jason Lineker's got wet weather tyres on. Lance's on normal tyres, Slade's on normal tyres, um, Billy's on normal tyres, Nicholas on normal tyres. Um, everyone else seems to be pretty much on normal tyres. I don't see anyone else on wet. So it's only Jason Lineker that is on wet weather tyres. Possibly a good choice from his side. No, let me tell you, Francois, going out there on, uh, on dry weather tyres, it's like, it's like riding on a knife's edge. And you can see how gingerly... Uh, you know they go around but uh, at the end of the day as well it's difficult to get a rhythm which whichever tires you are on it's difficult to get a rhythm in these kind of conditions because what happens is you know the, the, the changing conditions oh. John Green runs out of the way Oh, Lance Jonas gets a rocket start off the line. Will it uh, pay dividends for him as he goes down? It's a three-lap uh, dash for cash, as Byron puts it. Going down into turn one, looks like Jason Lineker comes up on the inside. Those wet weather tyres are just uh, awesome. The track is damp. Um, the precipitation looks like it is uh, abated for the time being. But uh, the track's still very wet, and uh, hopefully it'll bode well. You see Jason pulling away, putting all his trust into those wet weather tyres. Billy De Beer comes up, uh, looks up on the inside of Slade for Nikak. Uh, Slade just uh, crosses his bow up behind Lance Jonas. You can see them going around the corner. They keep the bike sort of upright. You don't want it to lie down. You don't have too much grip. You can get you you can keel over on the body to bring the bike around, but you hold it sort of upright. That is the way to uh, ride in the wet. But uh, don't tell Jason Lenker that because he's just abducted and disappeared. He's decided, well, this is not for me. I'll make these three laps as short as possible. Yeah, like he did in uh, race one. Uh, they all make their way around now. There goes Jason Lenker. He turns right into the uh, turn four section, of course, where uh, Goldie uh, high sided earlier on. They clear that up very fast, and he goes down the back straight now. And already you could see on the visions, if you're watching online, there's no bikes uh, in the immediate. Uh, future behind him but uh, here they come now of course Lance Jonas uh, is on that yellow Suzuki he will hold that second position for now they go into turn five per Tamina Fastron and, and then Slade sliding up on his inside Slade going to second place uh, very late on the brakes Lance looks up on the inside tries to cut back at him but uh, Slade manages to hold out on the front end as they come out of turn of five your leader crosses the line here comes Slade for Nikak He's decided, well, you know what, I'll also put a bit of trust into the uh, normal dry weather tyres. And he's ahead of Jonas. Billy De Beer in fourth. Nicholas Hutchins, five. Uh, Brandon Hutchins down in six. And uh, they're quite a way ahead of the rest of the pack there. Uh, Ryan Couture comes through. Then it's uh, Raymond Alexander and Mitch Robinson. Yeah, the two Hutchings are uh, virtually together now as well. Of course, that is uh, Nicholas and Braddon Hutchings, 72 and 74. They are the... Uh, First and second in the uh, 300 Supersport class ahead of Kutsia. Alexander still holds uh, third in class. He's eighth overall ahead of Mitch Robinson. And of course, the uh, top 10 being rounded off there by the number nine of Brad Fenner on that Suzuki SV650. Well, uh, Raymond Alexander doing a great job going into quarry. He gets ahead there of Ryan Kutsia. Ryan's uh, holding out on the inside of Mitch Robinson. Robinson not to get around his outside as they make their way out of quarry corner. The rest of the bikes taking it very gingerly, having a look at Sean Klein at the back of the field. Sean thinks to himself, you know what, I'm not putting my life on the line for this one. And uh, I've just come off a bad fall, so now uh, I'll just uh, look after myself going around. But watch them come down the back straight. Yeah, only 13 of them out there as well now as well, Francois. Uh, Carl Halleck not taking any further part in this race. Even Pinar as well, who had uh, a bit of an issue in uh, the first piece of this race, or the first part of this race, not taking any further part. So it's only 13 of them. Klein, or Klein, I should rather say, Sean Klein on the KTM 390s, rounding everything off in that 13th position. I see Stavro Michel's also pulled out, so uh, he... He uh, decided that, uh, you know what, caution is the better part of Ella. Well, they'll of course come across the line. Two laps have been completed. This then will eventually, or virtually be now, 
the uh, final lap of the race. Yeah, it's one more lap left to go. Fastest lap of a 131.848 from Jason Lineker. 15.4 seconds ahead of Slade van Nikak now. He's also putting in some uh, very tasty fast uh, times, of course, there as well in uh, sectors one and sectors two and uh, fast as, as he is in that uh, purple color and uh, what happens is Lance Jonas will hang on to third at the moment 1.9 seconds ahead of uh, Billy De Beer the Red Beard Racing Kawasaki. Billy going to Quarry Corner with a foot trailing on the floor he's uh, decided you know what I'll try and get a bit close to Lance Jonas in this final lap but Lance uh, is on the 6.50 in third he'll try and hold on to that podium position ahead of Billy De Beer. Billy trying his utmost there going through uh, Interceptor corner on screen. You see the leader coming down the back straight. That's Jason Lineker giving it a full tilt. He's not hanging back. And uh, he'll be coming up and we'll have the checkered flag beckoning for him. Yep, the checkered flag is being readied as uh, Jason goes into p to Pertima Pertamina. Fast strong corner. Pertamina. Uh, different ways of pronouncing it. I believe Pertamina fast strong is the right way. But here we go. Lineker comes to the line. He decides, well, that's it. I'll show them I can ride with the tyres and he's quite elated as he nods going over the line and I would be too if I had everything going my way. Well we wait a little while then and uh, of course uh, Slade for Nickak was battling it out with the likes of Lance Jonas and Billy De Beer. He got past Lance Jonas who uh, briefly held second position uh, in this uh, second part of the race. Here yeah, now comes a Slade for Nickak to uh, cross the line. Bike number one, 22.2 seconds off of Jason Lineker. Lance Jonas will get third position in the, on the Suzuki. Billy De Beer on his Quaker will come through in fourth. And then we have the uh, battle for the uh, 300 class. And it will be Nicholas Hutchings that will take victory ahead of Cuzzy. 74, Braddon Hutchings, uh, 3.2 seconds. And Alexander coming up there nicely as well, Francois. Uh, Raymond Alexander coming uh, ahead. Uh, Mitch Robinson trying to reel him in, but uh, Raymond does more than enough to, as he crosses the line there ahead of Mitch Robinson. So uh, Raymond Alexander up ahead there. We heard the rest here. I think Ryan could see her. Should be coming over. Ryan comes over the line. Um, he decided just to take it easy. And then the rest of the field still going down the back straight out to Pertamina Fastron Corner. I got it right. No tongue twister. There we go. That's what we're all about, Francois. <laughs> yeah, we teach you language as well. <laughs> Elocution. Uh, so the number 10 of Donaji comes across the line. Uh, he will be uh, fifth in the 300 class, but 11th overall. And then the uh, 82 of Gavin Smith uh, should be next in the, on the Suzuki. Here comes number 82 himself uh, on the Suzuki. Crossing the line to take 12th. And then uh, Sean Klein. He, of course, one of the mainstays on the uh, short circuit as well. Uh, number 45 on his KTM. He comes across the line now to round off the finishers. Yeah, the classified finishers in 13th position. Well, just to take you through uh, our program for the day, of course, we've had our uh, Pirelli V8 Masters Race 1 and the uh, Bridgestone Super Twin Cup and Super Sport Motorcycle for 300s. We now move on to the South Superbikes, the Superbike Challenge and the Masters section. 
before going on to the third bike race of the day. Remember, three races today for bikes. The Strato Technology Clubman Classic and Breakfast Run Motorcycles. Then we go to open wheel racing with the Formula Libra. And then the louder classic cars and Bijou Trusty Fine Cars. A nice big field over there uh, in the two classes. And then rounding it all off before lunch, the Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge for all the VW fans uh, around. And there are many of you uh, around here as well. So we're going to have, of course, our fan walk at 1 o'clock, uh, round about 1 o'clock, I should rather say, uh, with the Aunt Hasey Spitfire Sports and GT cars. They'll be doing the uh, Aunt Hasey 100 a little bit later on after lunch, second race after lunch. So uh, a lot is happening here at uh, Kilani today, this Power Series. The 3rd of September 2022, just if you forgot the date, of course. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us online. And, uh, well, we're going to be off air for a short little while before we wait there for the South Superbike Superbike Challenge and Masters. Right, just having a look at the South Superbike and SPK Challenge, the Masters and 600s on uh, pole position. Kuhn Steyman, I see he's out on a uh, BMW 1000. Uh, Malcolm Rapson's out there, Jock Ackerman, Hilton, Reading, Ace is uh, posted as fourth, but Hilton will be taking part in this race um, due to a lack of uh, weaker tyres. JP Frederick, Sean McCrill, Michael De Toy, uh, Balan Tassana, Brad Bodsworth, uh, Matthew Van Ikak, Jamie Hall, and Nassif Smart. On the man that are all out there, uh, Jamie, all on that 600. Um, you'll have a bit of fun out there. So, uh, a very uh, small field of 11 bikes. Yeah, I was looking down uh, earlier on in qualifying this morning, uh, Francois, seeing that BMW of Q and Snayman out there. Missile Motorcycles is a sponsor, and that thing went like a missile, I can tell you that much, uh, down uh, the main street. Well, Missile Motorcycles is actually Q&'s own business, so he's self sponsored, to uh, put it plainly. And uh, yeah, that's weird. I don't see him on the. Uh, grid so it doesn't look like he's going to be partaking in this one either well we have the number 65 uh, out there as well of jamie hall on that uh, was well, a master glass garden route uh, r6 yamaha in castrol colors lovely to always see the castrol liveries takes us all the way back to the uh, was it the Hondas in the old days? That Colin used, Edwards. Yeah, they used the, to run uh, that. The VTR SP2. And uh, Aaron Slight uh, as, well. as well. Aaron Slight yeah. as well. The mid 90s. Uh, yep. We're talking about super bikes. Correct. Uh, that uh, great uh, VTR SP2 with the Castrol colours on it reminds me. And Nicky Aiden, I think, also rode Castrol at one stage, if I'm not mistaken. I uh, just love it when the uh, homage liveries come onto bikes or cars. Let me tell you one thing that's real passion that. And uh, it all starts maybe with a poster in the bedroom and, uh, of course, comes to life uh, here at Killarney. But uh, like Francois was saying, uh, slightly but a little bit of a truncated field. Not all the guys are going to brave it out there. Well, out of 12 entrants, we've only got five bikes on the grid. So uh, Goodness, yeah. we've got uh, Rapson, Ackerman, Frederick, um, 
But JP Brad, Brad Bodsworth and Jamie Hall. Well, JP Friedrich, I know one thing. He sees chance for anything. Uh, had a brief, brief, brief chat with him this morning and everything like that. And he was saying, good to be back uh, on the bike. Uh, of course, they didn't have the super bikes at the last race meeting here. So it's good to see JP. Bike number 24, that's the uh, Yamaha uh, R1. Well, Malcolm Rapson's on a set of wet weather tyres. Um, you could possibly get away on those. Um, having a look there at uh, Jamie Hall, he uh, flies up on the inside there, trying to keep it all together. He leans it into the corner. It's wet and he uh, looks like he's uh, ready to rumble as he pulls up behind Rapson. Well, here we go. So, uh, of course, that's now... Uh, so, first the warm-up lap. And uh, before we get excited. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, they come around. Rapson is definitely out there on the Suzuki. Race based Suzuki. He's also a master class runner as well. And uh, yeah, pointing out five bikes in all out there. So, uh, very, a very, very uh, watered down field to say the least. Watered, uh, yeah. Well, yeah it, sorry about the pun. Good, good choice of words, though, yeah, I have to very, say. Very punny. Um, it's a bit unfortunate. I think the weather was not predicted to be this wet. Um, it was cloudy with a, maybe an odd shower. I don't know if it's going to clear up. I'm looking in the yonder. Down the Cape Town side, it's a bit clear, but everything's coming out of the uh, north, which is down at Bloberg side, and the Bloberg Hill is closed, and that does not bode well for our weather. Well, you come to Cape Town, remember, the, uh, the sea comes to you as well. So uh, let me tell you one thing. We are in the right place uh, if you want something like that. But, uh, well, we keep racing because, let me tell you one thing, racing in any weather, hey, that's what we do. And, uh, yeah, we come now down to the grid now and the likes there of... Uh, all right, so we are well and truly underway over here. Cool, okay. And across the line, we then run. Well, Malcolm Rapson on the wet stays ahead there. Jamie Hall on the 600 just says lit up the circuit. He's on normal tyres. He reckons, well, wet doesn't bother me. Jock Ackerman's in third. Uh, JP Frederick down, lingering in fourth there with the uh, likes of um, the uh, 84 bike of uh, Brad Bodsworth not too far behind him. Brad said to me, I must look at the sponsor of the bike. It's apparently quite funny. I'll go down later on lunchtime and have a look. I didn't have manage to uh, look when I came in. So uh, we'll have a see what that's about. But uh, Brad Bodsworth is on uh, Pit Please. Pit Please, there we go. <laughs> pit Please, yeah. Uh, I can read a lot into <laughs> please that. Please, Pit, uh, you know, yeah. either pit way. Pit Please, you know. So it depends how you uh, sort of uh, exclamate it. But uh, definitely, yes, uh, a nice sponsor. Yeah, he was uh, earlier on talking uh, to our man uh, downstairs, Ernest Page. No Dexter Bruce here today. So uh, Brad Bosworth, also was a co-commentator for a short while as well. Very good speaker. I can tell you that much, uh, Brad Bodsworth. But uh, Malcolm Rapson has crossed the line. Uh, and, uh, well, we have the likes of Jamie Hall, Jacques Ackermann. He will always be out there, Jacques Ackermann. JP Friedrich and Brad Bodsworth. Hall currently holding second at the moment ahead of Ackerman. Remember, that's the 600. The only 600 that's going to be out there today now is Jamie Hall on uh, bike number 65, which is the Kawasaki ZX-10R. Well, I had a chat to Jacques Ackerman just before I came upstairs, and he was saying that apparently it looks like the lean angle sensor, the tall sensor, is a little bit defective. So he's a bit scared about going around the corners that it doesn't cut the bike out and uh, could cause him a bit of harm. So hopefully uh, that's not playing against him he seems to be out there and he seems to be doing okay he's holding on to third Rapson in first Jamie Hall in a very credible second on the uh, CBR 600 great to see Jamie uh, taking the the race to Malcolm Rapson and uh, well Jamie's not perturbed by the weather he reckons you know what these tires can stick so I'll just mosey on around the circuit and that's what it's all about and uh, yeah we're, earlier on I, I got confused actually I forgot the riders do their two warm-up laps and then they get on the grid no other warm-up laps so we were into this race seven laps left to go though and uh, well we'll cross the line now Brad Bodsworth has just done so and Brad Bodsworth finds himself uh, 4.9 seconds off of JP Friedrich so the Honda CBR 1000 pit please uh, machine uh, of course that is in the uh, superbike challenge he's the only superbike challenge guy out there is uh, Brad Bodsworth uh, but I'm working backwards here because JP Friedrich finds himself in fourth position at the moment on the R1 Yamaha that is the GR Tech Johnny Fox's 
and uh, the, the machine that he's on at the moment. But Malcolm Rapson, another fastest lap for him, a 130.38 uh, uh, fastest lap for him. He's 7.5 seconds ahead of Jamie Hall. Jacques Ackerman still holding it in there in third position at the moment, 14.2 seconds ahead of JP Friedrich. Just looking at the times of Malcolm Rapson, he's on a litre bike and he's doing the same times that uh, Jason Lineker was doing on the 650. So it gives you an idea how treacherous the conditions are out there. Um, a little bit of, uh, I won't say sunlight, but blue sky sort of showing itself. I don't know if that's going to change the conditions. I still sort of see a vague outline of Blobergill. So I don't know if that will uh, change. But the wind, the direction, the flags are telling me it's purely northwest. Well, down the back straight, uh, we then run and uh, into uh, Pertamina Far Strong. There we go. We have ourselves a pronunciation uh, lesson as well today. I thought my, my learning stopped at school, but uh, no, obviously... No, no, no. You're never too old to learn. You know the story, Byron. Um, and having a look there, sorry, I just want to correct myself. Jamie Hall's actually on a R6, not on a CBR 600. Um, a mistake from our side. Rather a bad mistake. Jock Ackerman, he's on the uh, ZX-10R. Uh, Malcolm Rapson, he's on the GSX-R1000S uh, uh, Suzuki. He leads out. He's uh, starting to uh, put in some quicker sectors, sector one and two, all in the uh, purple. So he's doing a bit well. Um, Jock Ackerman down in third. Uh, JP Frederick in fourth, still lingering around the circuit with Brad Bodsworth, trying to reel him in, but uh, obviously just a little bit more power ahead of him. Well, he's actually, he looks like he's actually taking maybe a little bit of time out. I speak under correction over there as well. They seem to be closer over the last lap as they cross the line. Now, four laps left to go uh, in this, uh, what is a nine lap race. Rapson still leads the way. We wait now for Hall to come across the line, which he does now on that Castrol liveried uh, uh, bike. He does so there. He is 13.4 seconds off of. Uh, Malcolm Rapson. Malcolm Rapson putting in a 129-118 there on the uh, Jixer. And uh, he still leads the way with those four laps left to go. Ackerman, he's uh, basically on his own, you could say now. Uh, he's coming into Pertamina Fastron. And uh, then will come to run and complete uh, his lap and do his four more. Yeah, Byron, just a bit unfortunate about the weather conditions for the two-wheelers. Um, very treacherous out there. I'm sure if we were in the UK, it'll be a different story because they're there riding wets all the time and they are used to it and they're very competitive, to say the least. Um, but uh, Cape Town, that's the thing with the winter. Um, it puts a span in the works and uh, the guy's not quite used to uh, even practicing in the wet for that matter because I don't think it rained during the week, to be quite frank with you, when they had time to practice. Yeah, actually, now that you mentioned it, it was cold this week, yes. Cold, yes. But rain, we, no. we were speculating mm. uh, whether or not the, the rain was going to come over the weekend. And then, you know, you look at the weather and you see, has, is it going to come? Is it not going to come? Well, the answer is right here, right now. But I always say, um, uh, Francois, and maybe, maybe getting Dave in quickly on this as well, with regards to rhythm in conditions like these. Now... You know, when you're doing circuit racing, it's all about rhythm. You know, on, in the dry conditions, you've got the dry line, you've got the, uh, well, the other line, you've got the racing line. But getting the rhythm, even every lap is different. You can't get that real rhythm in there. Well, you, you've, got, you've got some wind about. Um, Dave is standing next to me. Dave Abrams, our uh, public, uh, what do you want to call you? Public uh, relations officer <laughs> for Kilani. And uh, Dave, I mean, you've also, like me, we've had the opportunity of uh, riding on the circuit in the wet. And when you have a little bit of wind about, the conditions are ever-changing. That's right. The conditions are different on every lap. It's very, very difficult to get a smooth lap together. Um, I've never really cottoned on to the concept of rhythm, although I can understand how the MotoGP guys talk about it. What I will say is that for me, as a somewhat slow rider, I've never been competitive on the circuit, to put together a smooth lap means you've got to think ahead at least 100 yards of where you are all the time. And the problem with that is that when it is half wet, half dry, greasy and treacherous like it is today, you can't think 100 yards ahead. If you can think 10 yards ahead, you're doing well. Indeed, indeed so. So, yeah, there Dave puts it into perspective and a good one at that too. Um, yeah, it, uh, I mean, even driving a car on the road, I mean, you know, one minute it's raining, then it's dry, and you, you've got to sort of change your brake distance from the car ahead of you, and that's what's happening. Not to break away from the race, uh, the uh, positions remain unchanged. Um, so everyone's out there. Rapson leads Hall, leads Zackerman, leads Frederick, leads Bodsworth. Um, they're very strung out. 
So yes, unfortunately, the uh, like we say, the ever changing track conditions. Now having a look uh, down on the uh, Bloberg side, the hill is clearing, the clouds are lifting, but there's still rain about. <laughs> this is the difficult one. How do you uh, sort of uh, forecast what's going to happen? Well, it is amazing, uh, Francois. You know, it just adds that extra element in. I know the folks sitting at home uh, under the blankets with the hot chocolate and everything want to see some oh, interesting it. racing over there. And uh, sometimes, you know, you want to see the rain. But, you know, I, I love seeing them go out there at full tilt in the dry and, and doing amazing things. That's what I love to see. Yes, rain is an extra element, but it's something that you, you hope stays away. And that's what I always love about the summer coming as well. It's nice and hot and everything and uh, just the, the whole feeling of positivity in the air. Uh, and also full fields, hopefully, as well. Because remember, no, not a lot of riders going out there because of the conditions. Not everybody has the right tires. Yeah, it is. That is that is the thing. I mean, we look when we watch MotoGP, we've got three compounds. We've got a hard, a medium, and a soft. And they can choose which one to ride. But when it comes to wet weathers, they're all on standard wets. There's just one compound, and that's it. So it just depends, you know, where you want to be. Um, funny enough, in these conditions, the bikes are at their peak in performance. The cool northwesterly air flowing into those ducts, they can really tilt them. But hey, underfoot, it's, gr it's slippery. Yeah, it's always a balance of, uh, of the two, grip versus power. And, uh, well, here comes Jamie Hall now across the line on bike number 65, the Yamaha R6. And uh, that, of course, 24 seconds back of, of Malcolm Rapson, who puts himself on the last lap, uh, a fastest first sector in of 32.4. This is the final lap of the race. So uh, the next time we see Malcolm Rapson, it will be checkered flag time. And you look out for that uh, number one Jixa that uh, he is on. Of course, a man who's been around for many a year and uh, also a master class runner. Yeah, so he, as far as I know, is the only master out there. So he'll take first, second and third all in one. But uh, Malcolm Rapson showing why he is in a class of his own. And uh, Jamie Hall lying in second place with Jacques Ackerman not coming up on the screen. So I don't know where Jacques is. It uh, looks like he's going down the back straight. There down into Pertimino, faster on corner. So he must have gone a little bit wide or something, and that could possibly change him up and uh, put him down the ranks. Yeah, it's been a very lonely race for uh, Jacques Ackermann. The uh, likes of J.P. Friedrich and Brad Bodsworth are further back uh, on the uh, in the list. And yeah, there we go. Across the line comes Malcolm Rapson now. Uh, a last lap of 128.125. He's fastest. Here comes Jacques Ackermann now, who'll finish a lap down in third position. Bike number 10, the Kawasaki. And then uh, we'll wait for the wait for the likes of the uh, only 600 uh, out there, uh, Jamie Hall, and uh, then of course JP Friedrich and Brad Bodsworth out there as well. Brad Bodsworth, uh, every single lap just losing a bit of time there to uh, JP Friedrich. Here comes the uh, 65. Jamie Hall crosses well, the I'll, line. I, I want to take my hat off to Jamie Hall. That was a stunning ride stunning from him ride. on the 600. Um, yeah to be out there to uh, put the bit between his teeth and give it a full uh, go of it. Did fantastically well to take second on a 600 ahead of the 2000s of Ackermann and Frederick and that one too of uh, Brad Bodsworth. Yeah, JP Friedrich uh, will be the next man on the, the number 24 bike, uh, the uh, Yamaha YZF R1. And uh, well, here he comes right now to uh, complete his race underneath the uh, city Cape Town bridge. And then we have Brad Bodsworth coming along now here on the Honda CBR 1000, the Pit Please bike. And of course, remember, that's the only SBK Challenge uh, machine out there, number 84. So only five of them started, all five of them will finish. And uh, the sun looks to be coming out, which is some very good news. And I like with a bit of a wind as well, even though the wind is coming uh, from, the north, uh, from the northwest. Hopefully uh, a little bit drier. And uh, then you see a glistening circuit. All right, folks, while well, we wait for the next uh, bike race to come out, we want to say a big thanks to quite a few of our sponsors that uh, made things possible. And there's a new sponsor 
at uh, Kalani called uh, <clears throat> King Tony Tools and they sponsor the subway. We want to say big, big thanks to uh, the people of King Tony Tools. <coughs> King Tony Tools was founded by Charles Lai and Tony Lin in 1976 in a, a city in uh, Taiwan called Tai Chung, if I'm pronouncing it right. It's on the west coast of uh, Taiwan as a hot forge factory making budget and tools for the DIY market. By 1984, however, this market was flooded with a low cost merchants, merchant, merchandise, I'll get that right eventually, of a dubious quality. So Lai and Lin took a bold decision to go up market, making professional quality tools to compete with the world's top brands. Now every tool they make not only meets the uh, DIN and ANSI, which is the German and United States quality standards for professional quality hand tools. It exceeds them by a factor of 30 to 50 percent. The majority of Kalani's uh, featured sponsors are in the top tier of their respective fields. And King Tony becomes one of this elite group. One that is also very important to motorsport. Welcome to the Kalani family, gentlemen. We look forward to a long and a pleasant relationship. And that is a King Tony. For the people at home, you can see that uh, was just on your screens, your TV and your computer monitors. So we say a very, very, very big thank you to uh, King Tony's Tools, the sponsor of the subway under the back straight and we say a massive thank you to all of them thank you very much from our side as well to king tony tools Right, so as the uh, Strato Tech Clubman's Classic and Breakfast Round Motorcycles make to the circuit, a big shout out to one of our viewers, uh, Nicole Breit, for uh, always staying up with us and uh, sending us a couple of WhatsApps, etc. A very ardent follower of racing here at Kilani. A big shout out to her and say uh, thanks for watching and affording us the opportunity to be in your lounge and keep you entertained. Like I said, the uh, marshals are busy uh, collecting funds, so if anybody wants to uh, sponsor the marshals with a couple of rand for their trip to uh, East London on the 1st of October, get in touch here with Bradley Jacobs and uh, see if you can't help them get on their way. They have already got about half their funding, if not more, so they're just looking for a couple of rand just to uh, help them on their way. The Cape Town Marshals want to go down to East London and show the people in East London what marshalling is all about.
Well, Sean Harris, uh, pole position then for him. This is the Strato Technologies Clubman's Classics and Breakfast Run Motorcycles, their first race of the day. And then Harris and Weening and Deuce uh, on the front row of the grid. That is the three. A Honda, a Honda, pit please Honda, Weening on the BMW, and then the Kawasaki ZX-10 of Matthew Deuce. Norman McFadden also in that section as well. That's on the uh, Classic Bikes. 369 and Liwani. See what everybody's on there. Norman McFadden is on the uh, Yamaha R6 ahead of the uh, Samkelo Liwani. Well, having a look there, the uh, 49 bike of Liwani not wanting to start, and I gets it going. He stalled on the grid, he got everyone past him. Someone running a bit long down there in uh, turn number one. So, uh, a bit unfortunate about that. You can see that uh, 1000cc Beamer in there as well, weaning on, the, uh, on that machine. Pit please, also as well there, the Honda of Sean Harris and Deuce, the motorwise bulldog racing. Yeah, that's the pit please and the uh, motorwise racing. They're uh, pretty much uh, competitive with each other. So uh, Harris leading out, winning Deuce, McFadden, Lewani had a bad start. Uh, Hendrix is out there, Fenter, the other Hendrix, uh, Wayne Gress, um, Lowe's out there. I don't think all the riders are out there. We'll pick them up as they come through. Yeah, because I saw the, the name of John Kosterman. Uh, in the uh, on the program as well. That's also a name from the past. He's on the classic uh, uh, bikes, and uh, that would be bike number 81 that he should be on. That's the uh, Jixa uh, 1100. And uh, well, what happens is we also have Mario Ferreira. He's one of the Boxer Cup uh, riders. Uh, that will be in the classic bikes as well in 11th. Always good to see some of the classics come out there as well. But remember these changing conditions have uh, now seen most uh, of the riders also not come out uh, in the uh, field as there are seven laps race uh, race laps left to go now it looks like wayne gress uh, is now the man who's leading the way well wayne gress the head of donovan stevens harris comes through Sean Harris. so uh, wayne gress uh, very aggressive at the moment as he goes up towards uh, quarry corner Keeping an eye on him, he's on the Kawasaki ZX-10R up behind him there. Donovan Stevens on the Suzuki 1000 sits right there with him. Donovan looking to uh, take the uh, quarry corner a little bit uh, smoother as he forces his way around and uh, chasing down on the back of Gress. Uh, Stevens definitely looking like he's creeping a little bit closer. And uh, he's going to be giving Wayne a little bit of a, a run for his money as they go there. Three interceptor corner on your screen, taking the way up the uh, Tigerberg straight away up towards... Uh, Malmesbury sweep and uh, well Stevens right up behind Gress uh, he, he comes in a much smoother line once again look at the track drying out ever so slightly you want to choose a good line to get some good grip coming out there now Wayne Gress gets onto the loud pedal as they say winds that throttle wide open but look at Stevens come for him Donovan is coming for him and he reckons well it won't be too long and I'll be with you and we'll be able to uh, mount a challenge watch him into Pertabina Fastron then nose to tail between the two of them Gristel takes it around Stevens right on him here they come now down to the straight they'll run past the old bus stop chicane which used to be used for bike races and now onto the main straight underneath the city of Cape Town Bridge it was four tenths of a second the last time between the two of them and uh, it's now half a second so a little bit more on the straight here from uh, Wayne Grist but not out of trouble yet so I'll tell you that much as they have to wait a little while here for Niku Fenta well Niku Fenta doing well as he comes through and uh, well Wayne Grist the quickest man on the circuit there He's uh, posted a very good time, so uh, he's obviously shown he's put his intentions down. But going through the twiddly bits, that is where Donovan Stevens tends to want to reel him in. Uh, the track's still a little bit slippery and uh, still damp, as you can see there on screen as you come up into Quarry Corner. Have a look there now at uh, Nico Fenta. There's Nico Fenta coming into picture. He's followed there by Mario Ferreira. Ferreira on that uh, BMW uh, 1000, the uh, twin pot. Oh, and running a little bit loud there into uh, that uh, quarry corner is Ferreira, Mario Ferreira. So uh, he manages to rescue a Shannon Thompson up behind him. Uh, some Keller Lewani has managed to climb the uh, order after having that bad start. So uh, he's looking a little bit better. Yeah, the only... Uh 
breakfast run uh, class runners, of course, is Thompson and Schmidt. And uh, that, of course, as I said as well there, Shandon Thompson, uh, on his, uh, that's the breakfast run class in fifth position. He leads uh, from the 18 of 30. Schmidt, uh, he's eighth overall. There are only 11 of them out there. There would have been much more. So about half the field has decided not to take part in this race. We might be able to see them for race two a little bit later on. But Wayne Gress, a 1 minute 30, 9.52 for him over there. And he's opened the gap just a little bit more now. Another two sec a tenth of a second that he's had over Donovan Stevens over there. So it looked like Donovan was getting closer a little bit in the little with the uh, the earlier parts but now he started to react to that now and getting away slowly but surely well wayne is uh, winding up that zx10 that red and white zx10 at the lead there and uh, donovan up behind him on the suzuki trying to reel him in uh, nico fent on the r1 a little bit further back about uh, 20 seconds off them mario ferreira shannon thompson liwani sean harris they're out there schmidt lies in eight low down in ninth uh, was the Hendrix down in 10th and Peter Hill down in 11. Ferdy Schmidt comes across the line. Of course, he is uh, second in uh, his class, the breakfast run class, and he's ahead of Hendrix. Uh, 5.4 seconds, in fact, ahead of Hendrix. But uh, going a little bit further up, we talked about Mario Ferreira on that uh, Boxer BMW. He is the number 44 bike, uh, and that's the only classic class bike at the moment. 4.2 seconds ahead of the uh, 34 there of Shandon Thompson, who's on the Yamaha R6. And, uh, well, uh, a little bit further uh, behind, of course, he, well, he's actually 4.3 seconds behind Fenter on the number 99 machine. That's, of course, the uh, Clubman's class third place man, who's in turn 20.2 seconds off of Donovan Stevens. He's still holding that seven tenths of a second uh, uh, behind Wayne Gress as they cross the line once again. Lap four completed. Well, now it's a two second gap that Gress has got over yeah. Stevens. So Wayne Gress obviously starting to light up the circuit. You see them going there into turn number one and uh, Donovan Stevens uh, just making sure he keeps the bike upright as he comes out there but Wayne Gress up the middle of the circuit using the dry patch as you can see him going onto the dry line making things work for him and uh, Donovan Stevens trying to follow suit but eh, it's still very gingerly. Yeah, three and a bit laps uh, left to go out here as well. The sunshine has disappeared once again. We had a, a ray of sunshine come through but uh, on days like these they uh, tend to disappear every so often and uh, well, now uh, we'll go into this Wayne Gress, two seconds ahead of Donovan Stevens. Fenter, 24.9 seconds further back. That's the top three at the moment. The 44 of Mario Ferreira on his BMW, the uh, Promar Projects and Alf's Motorrad uh, machine. He is currently in fourth position, the only classic class bike ahead of Shandon Thompson. Liwani, we haven't been speaking much about him. He's only three tenths of a second off of Thompson in that sixth position, bike number four. And ahead of Harris, almost five seconds behind is uh, Harris, but ahead of Schmidt by 11.4 seconds. Only 11 of them out there. Peter Hill still uh, hanging in out there as well. He looks like he could be a lap down in this particular race. Well, he is now because Wayne Gress just bullets past him. And I think that uh, Donovan Stevens will be up on his inside as well. Stevens looking to come up on the inside of Hill. He does as they come down into uh, turn number one. And Wayne Gress, well, he's uh, doing a sterling job out there. Maybe not the greatest of times that he's posting, but he's leading out and uh, quite unopposed at this moment in time. Yeah, he doesn't really need to put anything special in at the moment, just to make sure that he's uh, well and truly ahead of the competition. And, uh, well, he's now 1.5 seconds. So Stevens has taken about uh, half a second out of him over the last lap, just more than half a second. But he doesn't really need to, need to do anything heroic over here. Remember, it's all about self-preservation. Three laps left to go, including the one they are currently on. So uh, he just got to keep it on the black stuff. Fenter is further in the distance. Nico Fenter on the Yamaha R1, still ahead of Mario Ferreira. But Mario Ferreira has now opened up over Liwani, of course. That's Sam Kelo Liwani on the Yamaha, who's now 5.0 seconds further back. And then he is ahead of Thompson, 1.6 seconds. Remember, Thompson leads the breakfast run class by uh, 3.7 seconds over the uh, Clubman's class man, number 38 of uh, Harris. And then Schmidt still holds that second place in class. Well, some Keller Lewan has done well, considering that he had a bad start, uh, a little bit of a, um, you know, he stalled on the start line. He's come back tremendously well and finds himself up in P5, which is not too bad. Half a second there or Ferreira. Can he uh, change it up? But I can tell you something, Lewan, is pedaling around the circuit. He's posting some good times. If I look at some of the uh, other riders, so uh, 
Keep an eye on him. He's about two seconds quicker than some of the other riders, so uh, he might just come back and uh, climb up the leaderboard, possibly to fourth position. Well, penultimate lap of the race. It's a 128.641. The fastest lap of the race by number 95, Wayne Gress, the man who's leading by 2.4 seconds over Donovan Stevens. Donovan Stevens, his uh, last lap of 129 uh, in the brackets, of course, of 129. I didn't catch that last little bit now. We wait now for Fenter uh, to come through and uh, cross the line, which he has done. 31 and a half seconds back off of Donovan Stevens at the moment. Mario Ferreira on that familiar mustard colored uh, BMW 1000. He runs right through now. And then Liwani looks like he could have closed up the gap ever so slightly. Yes, he has. It's now 3.8 seconds uh, as they come on this penultimate lap now. So the next time that uh, Wayne Gress comes across the line, it will be the last lap of this nine lapper. Well, Wayne Gress makes his way down to Bit Bitamino Foster on corner and uh, right up behind him there, Donovan Stevens giving it a full uh, tilt. There in your picture now is uh, Gress as he reels around through Bitamino Foster on corner and uh, gets on the gas. There's uh, Stevens not too far behind him, so Donovan trying to reel him in here in the closing stages, but it's uh, last lap um, that they will do. One lap to go. There we go as they cross the line. It's the final lap there for Wayne Gress. He's done a sterling job. Donovan Stevens really cranking the handle, but he's still about two seconds behind him. Although, although it says no, four seconds. Doesn't seem like four seconds on the picture, does it, uh, Byron? No, it doesn't. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to see now with the timing transponder and what you actually see with the naked eye. But uh, yeah, four seconds it, uh, it is on uh, the timing. Wayne Gress on uh, lap eight of eight now and uh, yeah ahead of Donovan Stevens and then Fenter will come to the line shortly which I think uh, he will do soon right now uh, and yeah Nico Fenter comes across the line 34.2 seconds back and uh, then Mario Ferreira will be the next man on the main straight now as well he is the only man in the uh, classic bike section we had quite a number of them actually entered so it's unfortunate not to see them but hopefully for race two well have a look there there's Mario Ferreira and there's Liwani right behind him so uh, there could be a bit of a dice going towards the line and Liwani is closing down on the back of Mario Ferreira coming out of turn number one on the way to uh, Quarry Corner but the leader he's going to be coming down towards the flag that is Wayne Gress He's done a sterling job. There is in picture going around uh, Pertamina Foster on corner. Turn number five. He'll uh, crank the handle. And I do believe the checkered flag is beckoning. Indeed it is. So here he comes towards the line. And uh, he'll be pretty elated with that. And he gets a checkered flag. And a sterling job coming out of Wayne Gress there. So uh, well done to Wayne crossing the line. Donovan Stevens. And uh, Wayne Gress doing exceptionally well there. And... Uh, that is uh, Tiny's motor spares, uh, Wayne Gress coming through. So I didn't know Tiny had something on the side there. I know, Tiny's got a lot of side hustles, hey, I can tell you that much. Hey. There's a lot of things we don't know about this man sitting right next to us. <laughs> Never mind. No, take the thing is, away. do we want to know? No, we don't. We don't. The, 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 the less you know, the better, you know. That's the whole story. Uh, Nico Fenter and uh, Lewani are down in uh, turn number five. And I think Lewani has got passed. So Zakele so Liwani is definitely going to climb up the ladder and he's going to be pretty elated after having that stall start. Indeed it is. Liwani ahead there of uh, Fenter. So Liwani crosses the line. He'll be happy with that. So Zakele Liwani ahead there of uh, Andre Ferreira. There we go. Lovely racing there from Liwani. As you said, Francois, elated, but hopefully not your ego too much inflated. So, uh, no, great ride from, uh, from Luani over there. And from Mario Ferreira, of course, remember, he's a classic bike runner. So the top four, all clubmans. Then uh, it is Mario Ferreira. Then it's Harris, and also the clubman's class, but sixth overall. And then Thompson, uh, Shandon Thompson in number 34, the uh, seventh place. Of course, uh, he crossed the line ahead of Hendricks. Yes, Derek Hendricks uh, on the R6, the Bikers Delight uh, machine. And then ahead of Schmidt. Uh, who will be uh, the last lap. He was about 1.5 uh, seconds behind. I think he just came across now. So ahead of Lowe and Peter Hill uh, finishing also a lap down along with Lowe. Hi Cape Town. Johnny from Wingfield Motors here. 
After 33 years of service to you, we make everything about cars even better. We buy your car. We sell your car. We finance your car. We service your car. Through our best price from our car app, we sell your car while you are driving it and return you much more money. And we can even rent you a car while we clear your credit score. Wingfield Motors and best price from our car will keep you driving no matter what. Wingfield Motors is an authorized FSP. Here's to the hard workers, the steady, the strong, and the bold. For the brave, the courageous, and the dedicated, the honorable ones. For the builders, the fixers, and the makers who go beyond measure. So the ones they love have all they deserve. Interceptor. Great comfort. Better safety. at an international racetrack. We are proud sponsors of Kalani and the Porsche Club Strait. Our passionate club members and their families regularly attend our race meetings. If you own a Porsche, come and visit us at the Porsche Club and we will let you know what fantastic events we have on offer. The Porsche Club, the best car club in Cape Town. Well, Formula Libras coming out now for race one, and yep. uh, we have ourselves <clears throat> quite a nice little field out there as well. As the raindrops start uh, coming against the commentary box window once again, and uh, well, according to the uh, Google app, the uh, rain is supposed to be gone for the rest of the day, but that's clearly not the situation. It is a dripping out there on the circuit. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens out here. What combination of tyres has the Class S uh, drivers got? That is what's going to be uh, very interesting to, um, to see, Byron, as uh, they start to make their way out onto the circuit. The Formula Libre single-seaters. Yeah, Byron Mitchell, no surprise there. He is on uh, pole position. And uh, I was speaking actually earlier on to Gordon, um, just saying hello to uh, Hayden Jonas over here. How's it, Hayden? You well? Yes, you are doing lovely. <laughs> but cold. Good to see you. Of course, a uh, former rider here at Kilani. Of course, a man who now uh, uses a kite to get around. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, he gets there faster than most <laughs> the, of us. The rest of us use cars and bikes and buckies. He uses a kite. <laughs> but, but just going back, I was talking to Gordon Mitchell, uh, the old man of uh, the, the dad of uh, Byron Mitchell. Rather say on. the dad, not the old man. Yeah, it's <laughs> one of those situations again, frankly, where halfway through the sentence, I had to change the word around. But no, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was treated to coffee uh, down there as well at, at, uh, at the Mitchells. And of course, uh, they run Thanks. a number of cars. Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I'd just give them a, a bit of a punch. No, 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 there. that's 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 brilliant stuff. And, yeah, uh, yeah, no, he's quite mm. a stable uh, runner. Runs quite a stable of cars there, uh, Gordon yeah. Mitchell. Because uh, we were talking as well. Because remember, Byron Mitchell is going to be doing double duty today. He's in the single seaters, and then he goes over to GTI Challenge. It's a true class and I, B. And and I was asking him, how is that? Because now you're coming from a single seater, disc brakes all round, uh, and something that's incredibly quick down the straights, jumping to the GTI. Uh, challenge car which of course of course is front wheel drive uh, you've got drums at the back you know it's quite a different feeling and everything and he yep. enjoys them both <coughs> thoroughly because now you have two very different styles of racing yep. you know uh, and everything and it's great to see the passion and you know for both saloon cars and for single seaters well of course he um, should be out here in two weeks time because he races in the global touring cars in the Audi for RDSA for race driver SA so um, he'll be out there as well 
on the 17th. And talking about Byron Mitchell, he is there in pole position with the Dolphin Engineering uh, uh, Formula VW. Yeah, the Reynard. Yep, and then uh, DJ Boyson pulls in there next to him with the uh, uh, Daiko Auto Electrical Groove tires. Yeah, and uh, he's got semi -slick, well, he's got semi slicks on. Uh, sorry, uh, wet weather tires. Mitchell's now, got that, slicks. That might not work for him because the rain that was very very light has disappeared, and the track is dry, so this could count against DJ Boyson. And then behind him, the seven up car that is uh, Hayden Elwood. Yeah, it's mostly a lot of semi slicks that go on these cars at times there, uh, Frankie. But you'll see the odd wet weather tire. Here comes now the My Girls. Now, I love seeing the uh -huh. My Girls uh, run together as well. That's number 13. That's Storm Lanfear. Remember yes, from karting days? Yes, yes, yes. There's still part, still part of karting uh, Storm Lanfear for Race Driver SA. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's going to be lovely stuff. And then James Beaumont. He's out there and he is in Class A. And then Andre Lerich, also a carter of note there. And then Byron Lucas out there in that uh, 22 car. Uh, Kelly Fletcher's out there. She's a bit further down. In any case, we're going to get going shortly. The lights are off and away we go. And a lot of wheel spin there from Byron Mitchell. Off the line he goes. DJ Boyson goes with him. Then Storm Lanfear is there in that third position. That's the first three cars working about at turn number one. Then that's James Beaumont and behind him is Hayden Albert. Those are the first uh, four or five cars that is busy exiting at turn number one as uh, they race down the Jubair straight Byron towards turn two. Everybody gets to turn one and now into turn two. Watch out for the V's as well. That's going to be some exciting racing. There's more of them out there as well. And uh, of course we had uh, earlier on Vainant de Ridder. That's the man who went into the wall during the week and they had to rebuild that car. Yeah. I do, I do see him out there. He's now at the tail end of the field now. And uh, remember, he's uh, getting himself out there. He's relatively new, you could say, going through the kink and into Interceptor Corner. We've got a Formal M car out there. That's the one I was talking about earlier on. And that is Darren Liebenberg in that uh, Formula M car. He'll be right out in that mid pack. Uh, that was a 22 car that I was speaking about. He sits there uh, with those uh, Formula Vs. And he might be dropping down towards the tail end of the field because uh, these other cars are a heck of a lot quicker but he will hang in there all the way Byron but the leader crosses the line to end lap number one Byron Mitchell racing down towards a uh, turn number one wow what a run out there DJ Boyson is there in that second position and that's the first two they're pulling away now from everybody else here comes Storm Lanfear racing down towards turn one and then right behind him is james beaumont just talking about byron mitchell's tires over there those tires that he's on they are four races old uh, as of this particular race meeting because andrew rackstraw is not here they're not changing them every uh, single race when he's here they use a new one every race but it looks like somebody's gone off into the dirt at turn one and i'll have to find out it's a black formula v that's made his way off the circuit i haven't caught a number We'll get the number early on. It's uh, probably one of the guys that was to the tail end of the field. But have a look at those Formula V cars. They are busy working their way through the kink, racing down towards turn three. And there's always a lovely, lovely fighting out there in the uh, Formula V section. Yeah, it's always lovely to see. Remember, that's the uh, Libra V class. Aiden Elwood out there on his own in Class C. Actually, he's got a few Class C. Uh, Darren Liebenberg and Graham Knight all in that section as well. But let's go back to the leader. Here comes Byron Mitchell. He leads the way. Unsurprisingly, a 112.481 is the fastest lap of the race. Coming through DJ Boyson, second overall, second in class to both of them. VW Reynolds, the uh, Deco Racing Machine. Then we have a little bit of a wait over here. The man who is leading class, uh, no, the third in class is is Storm Lanfear, uh, who's uh, very quick indeed. Here he comes now, across the line in the Mygale 1600, the AMD engineering car. And uh, then James Beaumont comes across the line in fourth position, but a leader overall in Class A, ahead of Hayden Elwood. Uh, Anne Larish coming through, and then we've got Zayna Munson. And look is there with Zayna Munson, that's Darren Liebenberg. Liebenberg dives up on the inside of turn one of Zayna Munson as uh, they work their way out of turn number one. That is going to be a lovely, lovely one. Then Elroy Weiss and Kelly Fletcher is uh, right in there with them, followed there by Reno Pence. That is those uh, 
group of Formula Vs that's working its way out of turn number two. It's been led there by Darren Liebenberg. Behind him it's Amundsen. Then behind Amundsen, uh, sorry it's Weiss. Um, it is, sorry, it is uh, Amundsen, Liebenberg, then Weiss, Fletcher and Pence. Fletcher only a tenth of a second off of Weiss as she crossed the line. They were having troubles with that car during the week. There was a misfire and there were a number of things cutting out of the engine. But it looks like that uh, is running on song at this time. Reino Pence, 11th position. Remember, these are all V runners. The V runner who's leading at the moment is Lurich ahead of Amundsen. 2.8 seconds between the two of them. And of course, we didn't uh, mention, of course, uh, White in the uh, Formula G. GTI in 12 positions, the uh, Formula Ray that, uh, of course, is Damien White. That's a Class B runner at the moment. The only Class B runner out in the field at the moment. 18 of them out there in all. Right. Uh, we'll have a look now at this uh, Formula Vs. They are being led there by uh, Andre Lariche. And then we've got Darren Liebenberg, Zayna Munson coming through. Then it is Elroy Weiss and uh, Reino Pence has now got his nose ahead there of Kelly Fletcher as those group of Formula Vs are worked their way out of turn number one. But where are the leaders? They are storming around this track. The quickest man out there with the 110.715 is your overall race leader in car 21, Byron Mitchell. Yeah, DJ Boyson will follow suit after that as well. Uh, and uh, well we'll see the uh, time between him and uh, the man leading the way of course uh, he comes across the line now number three Lanfear still in third position at the moment and uh, Beaumont uh, just watching him as well in that Libra A class uh, in the uh, Formula uh, Reynard of course the VW Reynard and then Hayden Elwood in that uh, Formula uh, Ford uh, seven up Formula Ford liveried car uh, and uh, there we go, is ahead of uh, Andre Lurich, who leads the V-Class at the moment, ahead of Liebenberg, who currently is in Class C, second in Class C. Right, racing down towards a turn um, number one is uh, Storm Lamphia in the AMD Engineering and Race Driver SA, and uh, he sits a third overall in Class S, busy making his way out of turn number one as uh, he works his way down the uh, Jaber straight towards turn two and then heading into turn one now is uh, Hayden Albert. He's working his way out of turn number one is Hayden Albert and right behind Hayden Albert is the leader of the Formula V section and that's Andre Lariche. Then right behind him is Darren Liebenberg. He's got that motorcycle engine purring there in that Formula MOVs and then right behind them it is uh, Zayna Munson and uh, um, Munson has got them racked and stacked there as he just keeps out the way and lets the overall leader go through because right behind him is Elroy Weiss then at Kelly Fletcher who's now once again ahead there of Reino Pence as uh, they exit at turn two but those V's are just holding their line Byron and they are letting overall leader Byron Mitchell carve his way through between yeah. them. Blue flags waving of course the leaders are coming through Damian White uh, who's a little bit further down the field that's of course in uh, the 29th car uh, a little bit further let me see uh, well he's having of course uh, DJ Boyson come through on him in the Deco Racing, the Burner Factory machine, who currently holds second at the moment, not only in class, but overall as well. And uh, looking at uh, things as they're going, Liebenberg in that uh, Formula M doing a sterling job over here in seventh position, uh, but also second in the Formula C class. And uh, that is 2.8 seconds off of Larisha Munson, holding off Vice Fletcher a further three seconds back, and then Reino Pence, seven tenths of a second between them before we get to the Whites. And Ben Jack Phillips as well, who Who's going to be doing some double duty today he's got the fiat 131 for classics well i'm just keeping an eye here on uh, the race leader that's making his way up the uh Jaber straight towards turn two that is a byron mitchell he has lapped up until the man in p5 has put a lap on hayden albert there's albert coming out of two now and heading into turn three interceptor corner is your overall leader and uh, that is a byron mitchell so he's literally lapped everybody up until the man that sits in P5, Hayden Elwood. Oh, Ben Jack Phillips going very slowly. Uh, Frankie goes into turn one now to misfire uh, uh, that car. So that four-cylinder engine running on three. And uh, while well, they'll come around there, here comes Zayna Munson. 
in that orange, oh no, so it's not Zayn Munson. It's uh, one of the other uh, machines a little bit further down the field. And uh, well, they'll I be coming. I, th I think that's Luan van Yeden. You are quite right there, Frankie. Luan van Yeden. And uh, there are four laps left to go in this race. Byron Mitchell still well and truly leads by 21.1 seconds over DJ Boyson. Yeah, so the overall leader just uh, carving his way through, making his way now into turn number one. And he's actually put a lap now on James Beaumont. And James Beaumont sits out there in Class S. Can you believe it? He's lapped everybody up until P4. Has overall leader Byron Mitchell. What a stunning performance there by Byron Mitchell. And he's still the quickest man out there with a 1 minute 10.715 by car number 21 and he is literally lighting up Kalan International Raceway he's uh, Byron Mitchell and he's not going to be easily caught right let's have a look and see the leader of class of Formula V's Andre Lariche is making his way out of turn number two and then uh, there's a lovely fight there Elroy Weiss going into turn two has got his nose ahead there of Zayna Munson and that's a lovely one that we have to look out for and then behind them Kelly Fletcher she has got Reino Pence in there, so that's also an awesome fight with the Formula Vs. The first group is going through turn number three, uh, Interceptor Corner, and that second duo is now making its way towards turn three, Interceptor. A little bit of debris on the circuit as well, Frankie. On the main straight, there's a uh, red object lying there, and I just saw as they were coming through, I think that was Zayna Munson and, uh, and co. coming through just to go past that section. Kelly Fletcher... Uh, ahead there of, uh, like I say, uh, Reno Pence. And Reno Pence coming through. It's nose to tail between them. But now you're going to see sometimes spoiling the party is some of the lapping being done over here as well now. I see uh, by, uh, it's uh, Elroy Weiss and uh, Co. is also being passed at this time. Yeah, Byron Mitchell is just dissecting everybody and everything that he sees out there. He's uh, lapped up until uh, Beaumont. I don't think he's caught up to uh, uh, Storm Lanfear yet. We'll have a look and see as they work their way around. But we have to keep an eye on this battle for second and third and fourth and fifth in the Formula Vs. The one battle I'm talking about now is making its way up the Jaber Strait. And it's heading towards turn number two. And it's Zayna Munson that's got his nose ahead there of Elroy Weiss. As uh, they exit there, and then, uh, then they're catching uh, uh, Liebenberg. They are catching up to Darren Liebenberg as well. So that's a three-way fight that's heading down into turn number three right now. It is Darren Liebenberg. Right behind him is Zayna Munson. And on his back wing there, or should I say on his gearbox there, is uh, Elroy Weiss. That's the three of them that's working their way on your screen into turn four. Yeah, Liebenberg might just hold it here, Frank. It is the last lap of the race. We look now, now for Byron Mitchell. And, uh, well, Donovan Ramsey comes through the uh, screen now. And, uh, well, here goes Byron Mitchell. will go past Damian White. Remember, a 110.715, his fastest lap of the race, considering these conditions, that is mighty, mighty, mighty quick. And can tell you that much. He's been like lightning out there as he's put his laps on almost everybody in this race. Well, you should be making his way down the back, main. This is the last lap. Down the back straight goes your leader towards a turn number five, faster on corner. Racing down towards Fostron, the checkered flag is out and it will be uh, Byron Mitchell that works his way out of Fostron towards a checkered flag as uh, he heads out of five under the city of Cape Town Bridge. The flag is out and victory goes to uh, Byron Mitchell and he's the fastest man out there with a 110.715. Well, I was just looking at that uh, Kelly Fletcher uh, battle with Reino Pence. That is something to watch at the moment. Onto the Jubei straight. They then run now into turn two. She might just keep it ahead of him over there as well. But uh, we'll wait and see as they come around. This is the final lap for them as we speak. So heading towards us now will be uh, Storm Lanfear crosses the line. And behind Storm Lanfear will be uh, James Beaumont. And then finishing his race as well. In Class C is uh, Graham Knight. So, Byron, here comes DJ Boyson towards the line now. And DJ finishes his race. So, back to that fight you were chatting about earlier on. Well, here comes Hayden Elwood also is going to cross the line. He'll be the uh, winner of Class C. And uh, we'll watch out for Darren Liebenberg as well. He was the one trying to keep Zayna Munson and Elroy Weiss off of him. It looks like he is. Andre Lariche will come through to take uh, the uh, Libra 
Oh, so the uh, V win, I should rather say. The V's come through. The number 18 of Andre Larich in the Formula V Lantis. Here comes the Formula M of Darren Liebenberg. And just to the line, it's going to be Zayna Munson over Elroy Weiss. Right, another one towards us. Here comes Kelly Fletcher. Kelly Fletcher heading towards us. Will she hold this one off here of Rayno Pence? Yes, Fletcher just, just holds off uh, Rayno Pence there at uh, the uh, at the chequered flag so there well we well done there to uh, kelly fletcher kelly fletcher that uh, colorful stuffed unicorn that she keeps uh, the little one she keeps at the side over there giving her all that lucky charm that she needs over there but she's been brilliant over the last how many race meetings and uh, let me tell you one thing a real talent over there but uh, damien white will also finish remember damien white is one of the class b runners the only class b runner that will be 11th position but 20.3 uh, seconds ahead of uh, Graham Knight, who's had a bit of a quiet race, actually, if you ask me. Graham Knight, he was just lapped uh, earlier on uh, as well. That's when I saw him. Uh, he was ahead of uh, Van der Westhuizen, 7.7 seconds. But he gets third in class, does uh, Graham Knight, which, uh, of course, uh, is a lovely, lovely result indeed in Class C. So Class S is Mitchell, Boyson and uh, Lanfia. Class A is uh, James Beaumont. Uh, class C is Hayden Elwood. Formula V victory there is uh, to Andre Le Riche. And then Class B went to Graham White. Lovely, lovely stuff out there by the uh, drivers in the Formula Vs. And there was a time, Byron, that uh, we battled to get uh, 10 cars out on the circuit. They would normally have seven, eight cars, and then the powers at B would say, right, take your seven cars. One 10 lap race right at the beginning and then lock and load because you guys can't get to 10. And I must say, the Formula Libra guys have come to the party. I think there's about 15, 16 of them that entered now and they are picking up in huge, huge numbers. If it keeps on like this, they are surely heading in the right direction. Well, that's actually the plan, you know, talking to, uh, to, to Gordon Mitchell and some of the, the folks down in, in the pits. There's talk about more of the Reynards coming out as well. Uh, of course, that's, there's uh, Byron Mitchell and, and uh, then we'll have some company as well. We don't have Andrew Rackstraw, unfortunately, yeah, which also added another element to it. But we have so many Adidia. V's. Yeah, yeah it, it, you know, so many more V's. Look at how the V's have grown. And Formula V racing, always to me, like Formula Ford racing over the years, has been some of the most exciting open wheel racing you'll ever it, see. It, it's always been uh, Formula Fords and Formula Vs. I mean, we see it at the Nationals in the Formula 1600s. And they now have the uh, Formula Ford Kent drivers that uh, race with them as well at the Extreme Festival. Talking about that, two weeks from today, the second Cape Town round are, and the second last round of the Extreme Festival of Racing will be at Kalan International Raceway. The final round will be in October in uh, Swartkops. But yeah, we will be here for that one. And uh, I was having a chat to, I can't remember right now, but uh, they reckon that more than half of your Extreme Festival, that includes cars and bikes, so you're not going to have bikes uh, on, on the 17th, but um, they it's mainly cape town based competitors that is going to be taking part in that one as a matter of fact uh, i actually saw the um, poster we're going to be having the global touring cars we'll have the uh, super cup uh, which is the guys that progress from polar cup to there we'll have the polar cups formula 1600s and possibly the ford kents with them um, we will have the uh, toyota gazoo drivers out there that's the media and then we are going to be entertained unless something changes by the extreme supercars and the mobile one v8 supercars will be down here in cape town on the 17th there was talk about our clubman's regional saloon cars joining them but that is still under confirmation that's not uh, that's not signed, sealed and delivered yet. That might happen, that might not at this point in time. Well, fingers crossed, Frankie, that it does. Because yes. let me tell you one thing, if it's great entertainment on a Saturday afternoon, it's the GTO, it's the Clubmans, the GTI Challenge uh, guys and girls that give us a lot of that. And uh, if you can have a chance to race at a Nashville as well, a lot of yeah. the, the folks not having had be, uh, driven at a Nashville yet, is always a great thing. Yeah, look, I remember back in the day, when um, they used to have um, regional championships at Kalani. It would be, for example, the Shell Spring Festival race day 
and you've got all your regional and club classes and in between them you'd have your nationals and that of course changed when the Vodacom Power Series took over. There were no uh, regional and club classes that ran with them and it's been like that ever since through the West Bank Super Series and now into Extreme Festival. So um, there is a possibility that we could see the clubmen's but as I say that has not been confirmed yet. Right, we move on to the next race and uh, Byron will be joining Francois for the Lauda Classic Cars and BJ Trustees Fine Cars. Well, let me tell you one thing. What a field we have of cars. Sorry, Byron, I just got confirmation from Trappis van Tonde here. Clubman's is racing, so that's awesome, awesome stuff. Right, so the uh, classic cars, the louder classic cars take to the field, together with the Bijou Trustees fine cars, and uh, all your usual suspects take into the circuit. Frank and Denadio is out there, Eric van der Merwe, Dave Aladef, Trevor Momberg, and it Louis looks Powell. Like Louis Powell's out in the escort. In the escort, it was great to see that escort come out there. Ben Jack Phillips, as I said earlier on, he just rode, drove in uh, Formula Libras. Now he's in a 131 Fiat, uh, of course, reminiscent of the Alitalia colors, all the way back to the early 80s of Volta Raw and rallying as uh, it came from. Well, we see out there Charlie Arton out in a Mazda Capella, looks like an RX2. Um, then it's the uh, Toyota Corolla out there as well. Fatty um, no, that's not Fatty Maton, that will be uh, Mike Litchcock. Yep, Mike Litchcock's out there. Um, Bruce Evan Taplin, he's in the Corolla. Lane Hutchings out in the Golf Trevor, out in the Sirocco. There's the Sirocco. So lots of cars coming out for this race and a real nice field and i believe these guys are going down to east london on the uh, 1st of october that'll be for the ford and friends uh, that's events. the ford and friends yeah um so obviously the if the mobile one v8s are coming to us they'll go from here straight to east london and uh, it'll be uh, good to see but uh, unfortunately i was invited to go down but uh, won't be going down to east london uh, a bit unfortunate but uh, work comes first that's one of those things so uh, we wish them all the best of luck on their uh, trip down to East London. Definitely a next time. And uh, we'll wait for this uh, Lauda Classic Cars. A big shout out there to Lauda Investment Cars in Cape Town. Headed up there by uh, Clinton Lawrence. And uh, I'm proudly wearing their jacket today to keep me warm. The uh, Jaguar Lauda Classic Jacket. And uh, what a lovely jacket it is. So. Uh, Thank you to them and uh, we look forward to an exciting race as the cars make their way through uh, turn number five, Pertamina Fostron, and we'll come up towards the line to start on the grid and uh, they will have a rolling start. Yeah, Charles Arton, of course, in the uh, the Master Capella RX2, as you pointed out there, uh, Francois Albert Cook in his E30, up to going through the Class X runners. It's uh, Kerry Blows that will be doing the Datsun 240Z, usually driven by uh, Charles Arton. And uh, then we, of course, go Mel Carstens in his Ford Cortina uh, in there. The uh, 140Y Datsun of John Hurst and uh, Rob Rowe in the BMW 2002. That's actually a lovely little BMW. I saw it. took a picture in the garage of that uh, 2002 BMW. Uh, and, uh, well, we go through also more of the field over here. Uh, the Neil Maton in his usual Alpha Julia. And uh, Vaynant now in the Anglia. No Jacques Blom today, unfortunately, in that uh, Ford Sierra Cosworth. Ben Jack Phillips, the 131, the classic car care machine. And then Dion Conradi in his Conquest. Lane Hutchings and the Trevor Hutchings as well. The all VW uh, father and son pairing. They, of course, uh, will come through. Here comes uh, Kerry Blows as well now. He'll park on the uh, ninth spot on the grid, right behind that uh, Mazda RX2 Capella. There is uh, the... Uh, Capri, the blue Capri of uh, Trevor Momberg will be in fifth position. Alongside him will be Louis Powell uh, in the Mark One Escort. Dave Aladef, dancing Dave Aladef in his BMW. And look here at the front row. It's an all Ford front row. We have the uh, Pinto engined uh, Franco Donadio Escort and then Michael Hitchcock in that Mustang alongside him. The 944 of Eric van der Merwe 
in uh, position as well, right alongside there on row two. Turbocharged, front engine. And uh, Louis Paul still the company that buys the Escort all these years. And, uh, well, a real trustworthy steed of his. I'd like to see that uh, RX-7 be done the circuit at some stage. I saw yeah, the, uh, the Chris Carolyn was actually initially entered with the... Um, with the uh, capella of his, yeah, uh, the, the old black one, which I yeah, got to yeah. sit in a number of years ago. But it's good to see out there. Unfortunately, no uh, Dave Kopka today. And he's R100. None of that. Hopefully, back soon one day. Albert Cook in his BMW. There's the 2002, the 140Y of John Hurst. Then a bit of a gap, and then we have Robert Toscano in the MX-5 Mazda taking them off. Uh, Robert been campaigning for absolute years in that MX-5, a real trusty steed for him. And uh, Joanne Ferry out there, everybody uh, working their way through. Theo Klaassen in the Skyline, he's also out there campaigning. So, uh, only one Skyline real, today. Yeah, only one Skyline, pity about that. I don't see the... No, the uh, other one is there, sorry. My apologies, these two Skylines. There we go. There we go. I had to just adjust my eyes a little we bit there. Are you missing, know? We are missing the, the Skyline though, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, that's not here, but hopefully we'll see it back on circuit in not too distant future. So they roll around out of uh, Quarry Corner, make their way through the King down towards Interceptor Corner. They're uh, running up behind the pace car. Um, the pace setter is Mr. Franco Donadio. Alongside him, Michael Hitchcock in that awesome uh, 67 Coupe Mustang. He'll be looking to uh, climb on the hammer early. Uh, Eric van der Maver there with Dancing, Dave Aladef, then uh, Trevor Momberg together with uh, Louis Powell. I reckon it's anybody's game out there to see who's going to bring this one home. Uh, even money, I reckon, would be on Michael Hitchcock. Uh, no uh, what's there? No substitution for uh, this. Uh, what, no replacement for displacement. There we go. That's the whistle. I'm really tired. The brain is not working today. I do profusely apologise for the uh, re retardation in my brain. Well, on the straights, yes, I'll say so. But remember the nimble, short wheelbase. Uh, escort there of Donadio. Always watch out there in the corners. You know, he's nippy. The old British touring car way of doing things over there. The big Mustangs versus the Minis. Mustangs had the legs, but they didn't have uh, under braking. You could not brake so late with the Mustangs. Yeah. And the lighter cars, you brake later, go through the turn, maybe acceleration under, you know, out of the corner. And then, yeah, we'll see them as they come around now. So, a good mixture, a gaggle of great cars over here. Always excited to see and uh, it's good to see big fields right so the pace car the lights have gone off that's well it's yeah that goes off and that's a little Kia that'll uh, roll off to the right hand shoulder it'll get out the way and your pace setter Frank and Nadia will bring him up towards the line wait for the lights to go out and then they will stomp their feet down on the pedals and get cracking down into turn number one so Byron have that privilege of taking them away and it will be my pleasure here we go now watch the lights there's that little light on their right hand side which will go out with a five ahead of them and it will be nine racing laps ahead as we go and initially on the straight of course uh, it will be Hitchcock that will get uh, the nose ahead just slightly but not for long the corner advantage goes to the escort and it is going to be Donadio that takes the lead of this race the Porsche 944 turbo of Eric van der Maverick is in third Aladef's BMW in fourth position and there is Trevor Momberg as well now right behind in that blue Capri watch out for Louis uh, Powell he's on the outside he's got a Porsche to contend with there of Andrew Honeywell but looks like everybody getting clean out there as well as they come through looks like a day uh, Trevor Hutchings under pressure there uh, from the uh, conquest of Dion Conradi. Lovely stuff there, Fatty Maton, just the head there of uh, Trevor Hutchings. But they're going to make their way up now out of Malmesbury Sweep. They're getting it on those loud pedals and the back straight is going to see where it comes. But look at Donadio, crack on the pace of that Pinto as he makes his way down towards Bertimina Fostron. And uh, Michael Hitchcock, well, he winds up the Mustang as well, hard as he can. Eric van der Maver in the Porsche 944 sits there in uh, third place. He goes down into between the fast run corner. Dancing Dave Aladef is there. Keep an eye there on Charlie Arton. He's in the Mazda. He's caught in a bit of traffic. He sits there up behind Andrew Honeywell's Porsche. They work their way now out of uh, turn number five. Make them up towards us. Denadia from Denadia Plant High leads out. Then it's uh, the Cape Forklift uh, Mustang there of Michael Hitchcock that tries to reel him in. The Black Widow Porsche of uh, Eric van der Maver lies in third. And the Intellibus BMW 
of uh, Dave Aladef is uh, being followed hard there by the suburban spares uh, Capri there of uh, Trevor Momberg. Well, going to the fine cars, Robert Toscano briefly lost the lead and he's got it right back now. But the big battle is between the two skylines. We have Stephen Manuel that's made his way ahead there of uh, the uh, Theo Klaassen uh, uh, just uh, uh, behind him over there as well. They're coming through on the 140Y that's not really running on song over here. John Hurst having some troubles here. He's going to have there Joe and Fury come up to him as well. And then the Fox of Natasha Tischendorf as they go into turn one now. She has got Kunrat Matthias 928 all over the back of her. Right, so have a look now as the leaders make their way down the back straight. Frank and Nadia in the escort. Uh, reels ahead there of Michael Hitchcock in the 67 Mustang trying to reel him in. Then it's uh, Eric van der in the Black Widow Porsche. Then Telebus BMW 325i of Dave Aladef leads out on Trevor Momberg has been followed there by Louis Powell. Andrew Honeywell's in there. And uh, Charles Harton in the... Uh, RX2 uh, Capella reeling in hard there, late on the brakes, Honeywell right up behind uh, Louis Powell, they work their way out at turn number 5 and uh, Dave Aladef is feeling the pinch as Trevor Mombert's all over his back bumper, they exit turn number 5 and work their way under the city of Cape Town Bridge, have a look at Mombert, he's going to be drafting uh, Aladef, Aladef's going to try and go late on the brakes as they go in, comes the uh, escort of uh, Powell, and uh, already he's been passed there by uh, Charles Arton and Arton's having a look at Honeywell. Yeah, things not going quite his way, Louis Powell in that escort. Yeah, into turn one though, there's the uh, Datsun 240Z that is now Kerry Blows is in behind the wheel of that car. He's ahead of Bruce Avon Taplin. Now Bruce Avon Taplin is leading class at the moment, that's class B. He's 1.9 seconds ahead, or 1.4 seconds rather ahead of uh, the 68 of Ferdi Mouton in his Mustang. Yeah, they come into turn two now. And and then he's ahead of Lane Hutchings. Lane Hutchings is uh, leading Trevor Hutchings at the moment. Of course, Lane Hutchings in that Mark II eight-valve golf as they come through the kink right now. And that, uh, of course, Kunradi will be in that section. That's all for the uh, Classics Class C section. Yeah, the Classics are having a really classic time of it, to uh, excuse the pun. But uh, uh, some great racing out there. Keeping an eye on the leaders now. They make their way into Pertamina Fostron. Out of Fostron they come. And it's still that man, Frank Adonardio, leading out over Michael Hitchcock. Hitchcock uh, trying to throw the kitchen sink at him, but it's not working. You've got to put a plug in to keep the water. As uh, he puts the hammer down and works his way down towards turn number one. But uh, Adonardio is making that escort scream. Eric van der Merve in the Black Widow Lynx uh, sponsored Porsche. He's in third. 3 to 5 i in Telebus sponsored uh, BMW there of uh, Dave Aladef comes through. Then it's the uh, m &E Auto. Um, Trevor Momba car, he doesn't have the Suburban Spare sponsors. Now m &E Auto, keep an eye there on uh, the inside line. Uh, Charlie Arton sits up behind Andrew Honeywell. That is a lovely scrap. Now uh, Louis Powell coming back into it, looking a little bit more racy as he tries to close down on those uh, few cars ahead of him. And uh, just up behind them, probably about two seconds of them, is Curry Blows in the 240Z. Well, here comes uh, the uh, Anglia versus the uh, Fiat 131. Ben Jack Phillips and Nell, who's uh, going into turn one now. They will still stay as they are. And, of course, that's 15th and 16th places. Nell currently leads in f uh, class uh, E in the uh, car number 44. But uh, going a little bit further back to the uh, fine cars here yeah, that come through, it is Robert Toscano that still leads the way in the Mazda. And then uh, with him, it's going to be uh, the... Uh, Clarsen and Toscano, yeah, Clarsen actually came through first, excuse me, Theo Clarsen leads the fine cars class in his uh, Nissan Skyline, then it is uh, Robert Toscano and then it's the other Skyline uh, there of Stephen Manuel, they are ahead of Mouton at the moment but 6.3 seconds to be exact. Well, Donadio now encountering a little bit of a slow traffic uh, ahead of him. Will that play into the hands of Michael Hitchcock? I have to wait and see. And uh, Donadio tries to squeeze his way through. Natasha Tissendorf stays out the way. Here comes Michael Hitchcock up towards uh, Quarry Corner. And uh, Donadio knows that there's traffic and he knows he's got to hasten because uh, up behind him is Hitchcock. But Hitchcock encounters a little bit of slow traffic. He cannot be happy about that, trying to get past some of the slow traffic and uh, works his way through the king down towards interceptor corner he's trying his everything to uh, weave between the cars because he doesn't want denadio to get away denadio still up ahead of him gets past some of the cars makes his way up towards Malmesbury. sweep that double right hand and he'll work his way down the back straight and we're going to have two and a half laps left in this one 
Vaynon Nell comes across the line. He leads Class E ahead of Benjack Phillips. Benjack Phillips is on the back bumper of that Ford Anglia. Here they come now, under breaking into that section. He's on the outside in turn one, but uh, no, he's not going to make any move over there now. Here come the fine cars. They're going to go into turn one, and uh, it is uh, the uh, Ford Escort that will uh, make his way in there. I just want to see who that Ford Escort's been driven by, but uh, yeah, here come the fine cars now. And it is Robert Toscano that still holds second position at the moment. Klaassen leads in number 85. And then the 162 of Manuel. That Ford Escort is Hermann de Kock, who's a little bit further down in the field. Louis Paul not having a great day, but he's dropping slightly off the pace. But uh, still being led out there by uh, Franco Donadio, who's uh, managed to weave his way through some slower traffic. He makes his way up towards Quarry Corner. Followed there by Michael Hitchcock, who gets past uh, the... Uh, Alpha of Maton works his way into uh, Quarry, goes in late and deep there, manages to throw the back end of that Mustang around, works his way down towards the kink. Going into uh, Quarry now is uh, Eric van Amava. He's followed there by, well, he's not followed by anyone because quite further back is little Dave Valadef uh, battling it out with uh, Trevor Momberg. And, uh, well, Momberg uh, pushing as hard as he can with Charlie Arton up behind him, Andrew Honeywell, and now it looks like... Uh, Louis Powell's coming back into it now, chasing up the back end of Andrew Honeywell. Maybe a slipped gear that uh, made him run, run a bit slower, but he's back in it now. And he's got that Meisner Escort working hard down into Interceptor Corner. Yeah, they go through Turn 3, Interceptor Corner. But remember, uh, that three of uh, Aladef and Momberg and Arten are all coming through private battles now. So getting through the traffic is a heck of a thing for them, man. Yeah, they're going to go down the back straight now. they got Joe Ann Faris in that golf uh, right ahead of them. There's Mel Carstens in the tw number 20 uh, court. Tina and Natasha Tischendorf as well. On your screen there is uh, Frank Adonadio, your leader, making his way down into uh, turn number one. He's uh, got uh, Toscana up ahead of him and uh, want to work his way through. He doesn't want that uh, traffic to slow him down because he knows Michael Hitchcock's hurtling up behind him. Hitchcock now working his way out of turn number one. He can see Adonadio ahead of him. He's going to throw everything down and uh, try and reel in Adonadio. Some of those fine cars coming out of Quarry Corner want to stay out the way there of that uh, flying Mustang. You can see the Mustang going through there on screen. And uh, the Nadia working his way through there. So, uh, yeah, lots of racing out on the circuit at the moment. The cameras can't be everywhere. Enjoy what you have on screen there as they work their way up towards turn number four. But going into Quarry now is uh, Dave Aladef, Trevor Momberg. Uh, and there is oh and uh, Rob uh, gets it all uh, wrong Robert Rowe on the 2002 gets uh, banked on the outside of the fringe of uh, quarry corner um, whether he'll get out he's spinning it he's uh, stuck in some soft sand there and that's not going to do Robert Rowe any justice yeah the problem is uh, France he's going to wait for everybody to come past first and I see there 30 Mouton's uh, Mustang is one of the cars in that gaggle so he's lost quite a number of places John Hurst is still hanging in out there he gets Lane Hutchings goes right past him they're not on the same lap as each other but look at Trevor Hutchings he's now fending off still from that conquest of uh, the Conradi Con conquest and that's of course the battle for uh, 13th and 14th places they're 16.1 seconds ahead of Ben Jack Phillips 1-3 one Fiat but uh, looking at the uh, positions Nadia still leads the way by 8.8 .8 seconds over Hitchcock that of course is the uh, class uh, the uh, class a section Arton in the uh, Capella leads uh, the class uh, X section of course new car driver combinations and he's ahead of Honeywell by four seconds over Powell in eighth at the moment ahead of Kerry blows in the 240z that was campaigned by Charles Arton on your screen now he is uh a couple of cars coming through, but there comes your leader now, Franco Donadio. He's absolutely murdering the escort, putting it sideways through the corners. Here he comes up to that double apex. Uh, and, uh, and look Good at time. that, that uh, escort sideways. Donadio bringing out his oval track racing uh, expertise from yesteryear as he pedals that car down towards Pertimin uh, Fastron. I hope somebody got a shot of that there on a the camera. Oh, man. Uh, man, that looks beautiful. Coming sideways through the corner. And uh, once again, he puts it in into uh, Pertamina Fastron. He comes up towards the line. He's going to be starting his final lap. And I'll tell you what, this is spectacular stuff coming from Franco Donadio, rolling back the years. He looks up against the wall now. He's got Benjack Phillips ahead of him. He'll want to get past him Ooh. as he works his way down. And a bit of slower traffic. He's going to dis try and dissect those two cars. No, no. not worth it. No, not worth uh, it. throw caution to the wind. No, he reckons not. Uh, 
Caution favours the brave, and uh, he works his way. Now the two uh, fine cars having a little bit of a, a scrap there with each other, but he's going to work his way past up into Quarry Corner and close the door on them. Let's watch him go through Quarry. He's flashing the lights. He's flashing lights now, and he's going to put his uh, foot in the light. Once again, sideways goes the escort. Oh, look at it. It's beautiful stuff coming out of Donadio. He lights up the back end there. Watch him come down into the Scepter Corner. And uh, all happening. The leader on his final lap giving the crowd an absolute show as he puts that escort sideways up towards Malmesbury. Another battle to watch here, Frontra. Sorry to jump in there. It's Dave Aladef yes. versus Trevor Momberg. BMW versus Ford. Here we go now into turn two. Remember, this is the final lap of the race. He sticks his nose in there a little bit. They've left Andrea Honeywell behind. Uh, Louis Diaga is going to have to be content there with seventh position in this race. But if there you go, Francois, they're coming down the back straight, is our leader. Donadio. Keep an eye on Frank and Donadio now as he goes into Pertimina Foster on corner. And Cyril Bullet Escort, man, up there behind Robert Rowe, just uh, backs it in and whirls it out. And check it, flag time's going to go to Frank and Donadio. It's been a spectacular race from this guy as he crosses the line. He'll be absolutely ecstatic with that one as he crosses the line there. And uh, I tell you what, uh, looking far back, Michael Hitchcock, almost eight, nine seconds behind him. Hitchcock now only coming out of uh, turn number five up towards us. And I suppose probably a dejected Hitchcock, but I can tell you something, a very elated Donadio. Vaynant now comes across the line ahead of Ben Jack Phillips. There was no to tell this entire oh, race. i got to say, Momberg's just got past Aladef. Trevor Momberg gets past Aladef. And they've got a bit of traffic, but here comes Trevor Momberg to the line. He got past Dave Aladef, going down into Pertimina Foster on the m &E Auto. Uh, Capri gets past, and Dave Aladef after being so long ahead there, eventually gets pipped by the post. Uh, I think he's going to rue the traffic, I think, there, Francois, because he came into quite a battle. Uh, there was, of course, Ham on the cock in there. You saw one of the skylines there of Stephen Manuel in that section. By the way, Stephen Manuel gets third in class uh, as far as uh, the fine cars are concerned. It's, of course, Theo Klaassen that, uh, that wins the fine cars class by 15.1 seconds over Robert Toscano uh, in the uh, Mazda. Uh, de Kock was in that group as well, uh, but he's a little bit further down. Fourth in class, 19th overall in the Escort. But going here as well, Arton will win the uh, class X section, of course, for new driver car combinations in the uh, Mazda. And uh, then uh, Bruce Avon Taplin in his... Uh, Toyota Corolla 77B will uh, take the Class B win ahead of Kerry Blows, who's second in the Class X section, and then Fadi Mouton, number 68, 11th overall, but second in Class B. It's going to be Lane Hutchings that will win uh, Class C ahead of his old man. I'll say old man, yeah, and I think I'll say it as out of the as utmost respect for uh, Trevor Hutchings as well. Uh, the uh, Sirocco finishing second in that particular class and then uh, Dion Conradi giving a valiant effort to uh, push Hutchings all the way will finish third 14th overall and as I said it was going to be Vainant Nell that will uh, be the uh, 44th in uh, class uh, E and class E Mouton was in there as well the number three I think it was the Alfa Romeo that uh, was uh, going to be down in 21 but uh, 15th overall for now ahead of Ben Jack Phillips who pushed him all the way and then Klaassen Toscano the cock and manual so what a lovely racing a great wave there from that um, MGA uh, of Roger Lewis Roger Lewis is always out there as well and uh, well we're gonna give you some things now as well as we talk but uh, I see Ernest Page is down there getting some uh, good shots why does he look so puzzled I can I don't know why he, I think he's, he's unhappy that the, the race is over already you know uh, so well of course you'll hear him uh, in, the, in our uh, lunchtime show we're going to be moving on now to some more excitement yeah the last race before lunch and then it will be the uh, alert engine parts gti challenge remember there's a fan walk of the alt hasty spitfire sports and gt cars coming up on the lunch break but uh, we'll go off air for a short little while and we'll chat to you soon Hi Cape Town, Johnny from Wingfield Motors here. After 33 years of service to you, we make everything about cars even better. We buy your car, we sell your car, we finance your car, we service your car. Through our best price from our car app, we sell your car while you are driving it and return you much more money. 
and we can even rent you a car while we clear your credit score. Wingfield Motors and best price for my car will keep you driving no matter what. Wingfield Motors is an authorized FSP. Here's to the hard workers, the steady, the strong, and the bold. For the brave, the courageous, and the dedicated, the honorable ones. For the builders, the fixers, and the makers who go beyond measure so the ones they love have all they deserve. Interceptor. Great comfort, better safety. The Porsche Club in Cape Town has its home right here at Kalani. In fact, it's the only Porsche Club in the world to have a clubhouse at an international racetrack. We are proud sponsors of Kalani and the Porsche Club straight. Our passionate club members and their families regularly attend our race meetings. If you own a Porsche, come and visit us at the Porsche Club and we will let you know what fantastic events we have on offer. The Porsche Club, the best car club in Cape Town. Right, folks, it's time for the Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge race number one. Giving them a chance to come out. The track is dry. The sun's come out. I had a look at the uh, weather on uh, the uh, Google, and uh, there is no more rain predicted for today. There's a lot of drivers and riders, especially riders, that uh, didn't come out for the first race because of the weather. I know Michael DeToy was one of them and he did say that he would be out on the track for the second one. So we'll have a look and see. I'm almost certain we'll have more bikes out for the second race. The guys didn't want to go out there and put it on the line with the track being so wet. A lot of the riders don't have the appropriate tyres so just take it easy. They're not racing for World Championship points and uh, so why put it all on the line? and uh, a lot of them have decided no not yet wait till the circuit dries out wait till the rain goes away and then we will be on track so i'm almost certain we'll see a lot more uh, drivers and especially riders out the moment the um, you know their race comes back up again so we're just waiting to clear a car that i see there going into turn number two and uh, get that vehicle off the circuit then the track inspection will be done by the wpmc marshals and then we'll go alert engine parts gti challenge racing to the start there, to the fastest pet So I'm in the V8 Masters pit over here. Unfortunately, I can't chat to any of the guys yet. They're frantically trying to get some of the cars ready again. We can see Richard Schroeder's car over there. It's covered up, which means it's pretty much done for the day. And that incredible incident we saw into turn one. It started over here on the main straight with cars tussling and bumping all the way to through uh, to the start there, to the first corner over there. And now V8 Masters finds himself in a situation where uh, at least one of the car is out, one of the cars is out, and some of the others are damaged. And uh, yeah, not an ideal situation. 
for the V8 Master Series at this stage, but I'm sure some of them will be back for race two. Stay tuned to find out who that is going to be. This is what's left of Dennis Gaiduk's car. And uh, yeah, it's been in a bit of a war of its own. You can see this was the turn one incident over here. Fiberglass body panels ripped off. And unfortunately, the terminal damage, although it doesn't look terminal, is this windscreen damage over here. They are trying to find the specific windscreen. There's no stock in Cape Town. So this car is definitely out for the day. But again, a testament to how strong these cars are built, how strong race cars are in the modern era and no damage suffered to the driver sitting on the left-hand side of the car over here. So I'm standing here with Mark Ridgeway, someone that usually finds himself on the start line, but today you were watching the pandemonium unfold from the sidelines like I was, and from your perspective, Mark, uh, what happened out there? Yeah, no, it, it wasn't very pretty, whatever it was. Um, We'd had a discussion with all the drivers prior to the race. We're a little down on numbers today, and uh, everyone said we'll take it easy into turn one. Oh, yeah. And that <laughs> I've heard that one before, happen. Mark. Obviously, it is, it is exceptionally hard to drive these cars when it's uh, greasy like this, and it was greasy at the start, and then it started to come down a little bit harder. So the chaos started on the, uh, right at the start with Sean Moore losing it uh, under acceleration, which almost put him in the wall on the right, which then let a couple of guys jump into some spaces. Um, and in the rundown to turn one, um, I know that one or two of the drivers say that they were hit, but it looks like uh, there was like maybe a little tip here and a tip there, and, and unfortunately Richard Schroeder got it sideways and then was clipped by Dennis Kadak coming through. And that's uh, a worst case scenario for Schroeder over here because the back axle on the car is destroyed, eh? Yeah, unfortunately there was nothing Dennis could do. Richard ended up in, the, in right in front of him and, yeah. and Dennis connected him, so it was unfortunate. Um, and then they put out the, the safety car and the guys trolled round and round and round. But uh, yeah, not, not a good way to, to start a day's racing. But it's not over yet. You guys have another heat coming. We're going to get as many cars on the grid as we can, I would I'm imagine. I'm not sure that we're going to even start because we've got five cars and that doesn't mean a championship point. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to go and talk to the stewards now. Yeah. So big drama happening here at the V8 Masters Pits. But I'm sure Mark Ridgeway and the guys here will uh, try and do something. If not, we'll see them at the next race. But one thing's for sure, action is guaranteed. I want to say a big thanks to Triple Eight Motorcycles. Uh, we couldn't talk earlier on because uh, Ernest was uh, doing his show. A big thanks to them for uh, providing some water and uh, energy sweets and uh, Red Bull, a nice gift pack for the commentary team. So to um, Gareth and Nicole Agnew of Triple Eight Motorcycles, a big, big thanks to also sponsor Yilton Redling Ace as well. So, Gareth, Nicole, from the entire commentary team, thank you very much for what you have done for us here. Big thanks to Triple Eight Motorcycles. Right, so next up, the Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge, race number one. And uh, well, I think we must call it the Mayhem Challenge because it's absolute mayhem when they hit the circuit. And uh, we look forward to some exciting racing. And uh, a couple of uh, newcomers to the class as I look down through the field. And uh, that makes all the race for uh, exciting racing. I see up in class A, Dierwald Tron, Skull Geldenes is in there. Um, John Henry Vaughan leads out the class B's with the likes of Carl Wiltshire and uh, Byron Mitchell. 
So it's going to be a real humding of a race. Uh, Frankie, you go, we're going to be commentating this in the absence of Gary Fleming, who's gone together with FC Niva to, to the uh, South African Nationals in Bloemfontein. Yeah, they're doing the uh, Dirt uh, Oval Nationals, the 2 for SA that falls under MSA Nationals at Schumann's Park, the old Free State Central X Factor, and they will be. They are. They did day one last night and day two this evening. And then they're only flying back home at about seven o'clock from Bloemfontein tomorrow evening. So they stuck there and if they start for the whole of Sunday before they can get home. And yeah, <clears throat> I was at uh, George Motor Club last week, Gary FC and myself, for the uh, 2 for SA Heavy Metal National, and also part of the uh, George Show Championships. And then the second round of the Heavy Metals goes to Victory Raceway in October, and then the final round is in <clears throat> Oatshorn Motor Club in November. So we've well, been booked for that one I for was the 26th there. of November. I drove past Oatshorn on Monday, I had a look at the circuit. Up on the hill. Yeah, the Red um, Rock Raceway. The Red Rock Raceway, I saw it, yeah. So I uh, had a good uh, look to see where it actually lies. So I was fortunate to see that. I went down to Neisner, but I went down uh, Route uh, 62. Yeah. And uh, saw where it lies. Pretty close to the town, uh, but uh, like you say, it can be quite a noisy affair. Yeah, it's uh, about 50 k's Oatshorn outside of Carlet's Door. And then you get to Oatshorn and about 5 k's before you go into the town on the left hand side as you come in from Karlsdorp uh, next to the army camp. That's where you'll find the Arnold de Jaga circuit also known as the Red Rock Raceway. But that heavy metal national will be there on the 26th of November. Talking about oval track racing next Saturday here at Cape Al Drivers. There is the following round of the Cape Al Drivers Club Championship right here on the Oval, the Kalania Oval. And uh, it is the 1660 Spring Festival that they're going to have at uh, Cape Al Drivers. So they are inviting all 1660s of all clubs to come and take part here at uh, CHD next weekend. Um, it's only a pity they'll be having a double header because uh, Mega Oval and Worcester is also having their opening event on that Saturday so uh, you can basically come and watch the one CHD and then you can purchase the ticket and then you can watch Mega Oval after that so yeah you get two for four for one if I can call it that but yeah um, Gary will be down at uh, Mega FC will be at the Rock Raceway there is the Speed Weekend and it's also the following round of the National Hot Rod Tour of which Kursi Vayers is one of them and uh, the World Hot Rod Champion will also be there next weekend at uh, the Rock Raceway and I will be down here at uh, Cape Al Drivers so the team completely split up next weekend well, next, for the ovals. While you're on the calendar next Saturday we've got a uh, short circuit race on the uh, karting circuit Correct. with a four hour enduro. I will be uh, hosting that one together with uh, hopefully with uh, Derek Peak for a change. Four hours is a bit long to matter. Yeah, I know for <laughs> sure. And uh, then that Sunday we, uh, we've got uh, radio control cars. My friend uh, Mr. DeToy will be there on the uh, grass embankment from the hooligans. And uh, he will be down at uh, Para Radio Control Circuit. Unfortunately, tomorrow we were supposed to have uh, Cryfontaine radio control cars, the petrol cars, but it looks like the weather's going to be a bit inclement, so that one had to be postponed, hopefully, till two or three weeks from now. And uh, yeah, lots happening. And uh, then we've got the Extreme Festival. Not yeah, too far away. that's the 17th. That is the Extreme Festival. I've actually saw inside your Kilani program, there is a, I'm going to just find it, there is a, here we go, there is the whole, um, uh, not write up, poster, if I can call it that, inside the book. And uh, we will be having the Extreme supercars, the GNH Extreme Supercars, the uh, Netstar uh, GR Cup, that is the Toyota Gazoos. You'll have the Super Cup, the VW Super Cup, the GTC Championships, the uh, Formula 1600s, the Comcare Polar Cup, and then the Mobile One V8 Supercars. And I got confirmation from uh, Trappis van Tonde that uh, our regional clubman's saloon cars will be racing that day as well. So it's a full days of racing here uh, extreme festival the second cape town round and it's also the second last round 
that will be hosted at Kalan International Raceway. The last round will be in October at uh, Swatkorps Raceway. Talking about that, we've also noticed that Nathan Victor, that races GTI Challenge Class A, is putting a Polar Cup car together as well for the uh, 17th. And hopefully we'll see him out there at, in the finals at uh, Swatkorps as well. But uh, it's pretty close up front there between Umpis, what I think is a point difference between Umpi that was leading the championship and now Clinton Besaidenot that is leading the championship. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all up for grabs still in the uh, com in the Comke um, um, Polo Polo Nationals. Well, you know, coming down to Cape Town, uh, Cape Town is Yuri's home circuit. This is where yeah. he prevails mostly. And if you throw in a wild card like Nathan Victor, we can probably ride shotgun for him. It could be a little bit difficult for the uh, Northern Region guys mm. to uh, come through. Well, you we were talking about that national, uh, that uh, world hot rod champion, that's Robert McDonald, that will be at the Speed Weekend at the Rock Raceway next Saturday. I remember an interview with him last year, if I'm not mistaken. He uh, put his, uh, he was here down at, uh, in, Cat or in South Africa and uh, he did pretty well, yeah, I remember. Mm. Kursi Vales, I think, prevailed in that race, if I'm not mistaken. This is true. And uh, it was very exciting to watch that race. And Rob McDonald was actually very humid by it. He uh, said, well, you know what? On any given day, it could have been anyone. But uh, it's nice to have uh, foreigners coming out to our shores to come and race here, especially when they come out of that top echelon to come and ply their trade here. And I, I do know that the car that he was given was one of the best in the country. Yep. to racing so he had absolutely no reason and uh, while well, we look forward to that one and we'll try and follow it on social media it looks like we're going to take to the circuit with the alert engine part gdi challenge pole position yuri swa jr second kai van sale third colin meader fourth devil tron then nathan victor the cars go out onto the circuit frankie and i think we're in for some good entertainment before lunch well 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 here we go this is what it's all about Alert Engine Parts, GTI Challenge, Classes A, B and C. As uh, they head out to the pits, lovely to see Danny Sandenberg Sr. and Danny Sandenberg Jr. race out there. Remember, Sr. raced uh, late models at the old, uh, well, I can't say the old Tigerberg race, but they still exist. They don't have a circuit, but uh, the club still exists on paper. And... Uh, Tiny Sundenberg <clears throat> Jr. also raced uh, V8s as well in the SKF Bearings uh, Flexi that was campaigned by Chase Herald uh, as well. Talking about Chase, Chase will be out there in Class C. And they burnt the Midnight Oil uh, late on uh, Thursday and Friday evening to get that car out on track. Uh, they entered, but they weren't sure if uh, they were going to get that car sorted out. They have got it sorted out. As a matter of fact, it's making its way out of turn number one now. So uh, from NDT Racing, Neander Toy Racing, they were working very hard on that C29 uh, Golf of uh, Chasey Herald. And it is out on circuit as well. As a matter of fact, it doesn't really qualified in pole position for Class C. Having a look at Class B, quite low down in the order there, Tate Bishop. I spoke to Tate uh, at the karting. He said he was uh, looking to get a new uh, motor put in that car. I don't know if they have the new motor in yet and if they're running it in. I haven't had a chance to uh, speak to the likes of um, the Bishop family, to Tim or Tate for that matter. So uh, otherwise he's still running the old motor, which I know was giving him a little bit of problems. But uh, give Tate anything and uh, he'll try and steer it to the front of the field. So we'll have to wait and see how this one pans out as the cars warm up around the circuit and make their way to the start line and uh, we'll be able to get this one underway it is a static start not a rolling start and the classes are separated by a few seconds right the leading group of cars is working its way out of uh, turn five out of fostron corner and uh, they will be coming down to the line shortly we see ian long and the rest of the guys just waiting for the uh, gti challenge car sponsored by alert engine parts to work their way out of uh, five fostron corner under the city of Cape Town Bridge towards the uh, grid. And uh, here they come down towards us and it is Summit Racing's Umpi Swart that uh, is bringing them down towards us. Umpi Swart, all these hot shots of Comke Polo Cup. Lots of them, Tate Bishop, 
Um Piswat Charles Fisser, Charles not out there on the grid today, but he is one of those hot shots as well. So Um Piswat and Kai van Sale, Colin Nieder, and then Deval Tron in uh, the Interceptor, that is the main sponsor on his car that also sponsors turn number three. Dam Stip, so he's got Interceptor there. Then Nathan Victor of Summit Racing, GNA tra Transport, that is Cal Caldenace. Number 19 out there is Razi Harris. And then the 7 0 is Danny Sandenberg Sr. And that's your Class A cars. Class B, let's have a look, see who's rolling up towards us there. That's Johnny Nivon. That's on pole position. On his outside is Carl Walsh. Byron Mitchell, he sits there in that third. He's just ahead there of Ian Cup, who is just there behind him. Sundenberg Jr. is the last car out there and on his outside is the angry Jeep Jetta 2 of Tate Bishop. Mark Thompson is there just ahead of him. So is Wayne Field and then oh, that is uh, Grant Kluter that is in there as well. He's in the 88th and he is just behind uh, Kyle Walsh. And the man in pole further down in Class C is uh, Chasey Herald. And on Chase's outside is the Van Eerdens, that is um, Dylan Van Eerden, that's in Seth van der Biele, and then Ryan Van Eerden. That's the first two rows out there in Class C. Frankie, um, I think Chase Errol's glad that his boss is not racing with him today. Yeah, he doesn't want Neon out there, that's for sure. But Neon was out there with him at the last event and they had a good fun. Right, the lights go off. Here we go. Alert engine parts, GTI challenges underway. Class A is off the line. And it is Umpiswat. Oh, Carl van Sale is missing gears badly and has rolled back almost into P6. Maybe even P7. After being second on the grid, he's going to kick himself about that. He's got a lot of work to do as Yuri Swart gets away from him. Class B off the line and it's John Henry Vaughan and Carl Walsh that's sitting there on his outside. As they work out at turn number one, followed there by Byron Mitchell. Mitchell sits out there in that third position. Then uh, Ian Cup is right in there as well. Then uh, Kluter has been overtaken there by Mark Thompson and diving around him on the outside is Tate Bishop. And then in there as well is uh, Sundenberg Jr. followed by Wayne Field. But the Class C cars are heading into turn number two and they are being led there by uh, Chasey Errol. But the Class A guys, um, Francois, working out at turn four. Yeah, they come out at turn four. Yuri Swart gets the hammer down. And he's been followed there by Colin Meader. Nathan Victor's in there. Up behind him there's Razi Harris. And then uh, having a look through, have, the man that really lost out there was definitely Kai Van Sale. He slipped a gear going down into turn one and uh, missed out big time. He's got a lot of work to do. He lies down in about P6. And uh, he's going to have to try and see if he can get his way through coming out of uh, turn number five, Pertimina Fostron. Right, now lap number one is in the bag for the Class A cars as they head down into turn number one. It is Umpi Swart, it's Colin Meader, it is Nathan Victor, it's Razi Harris. Right behind him is Deval Tron, then it's Kai Van Sale, followed there by Skalke Geldenhuis and uh, Danny Sandenberg Sr. That's the Class A cars. Here come the B cars. Uh, Francois into turn number one and it's been led there by John Henry Vaughan and right on his case there is uh, Carl Walsh. John Henry Vaughan going totally defensive, not allowing Walsh through but that's going to be something on the outside. Let's have a look at Class C. Oh, it's all happening at Class C there. Chase Herald uh, and Ryan van Eerden are having a bit of a scrap. Tate Bishop trying to work his way up towards them to uh, join that party but uh, not happening. And uh, we'll have to see as they work their way around the circuit. What a fight out here in Class C that's heading up to turn number two. Dylan van Eerden sits there on the outside of Chasey Herald. Seth van der Biel is in that third place just hanging on to that third position. There's about six, seven of them. Ryan van Eerden's in that fight as well. As uh, they exit uh, uh, turn two working their way through the kink. What a rumble out there. Matthew Rowe was also involved in that fight. That's a group of about five cars in Class C working up the hill towards Turn 4, um, the Malmesbury Sweep. Right, the Class A's are coming up towards us. Uh, Yuri Swart uh, leads them out as he crosses the line. Looking up behind him there, um, it's going to be Victor and then uh, Colin Meader, followed by Rosie Harris, then Van Sale, then Tron and uh, Geldenhuis and then Sandenberg so that's your top eight that's your class A cars so uh, Van Sael has uh, worked his way back up to five he was down in seventh made up two places up behind Razik Harris 
and uh, a little bit of a scuttle going on there as uh, Colin Meader sits up there behind uh, Harris. Harris has got through on him, so there's uh, a lot of uh, dicing happening in Class A. Right, Class B is making its way towards turn number two. We'll have a look at this fight between Class B, working its way to turn two. It's been led there by Johnny and Yvonne. Right behind them is Ian Cup. Then it's Walsher that's here in that third position. He's been hunted down there by Byron Mitchell. Right on Mitchell's case is a Tate Bishop, followed there by Grant Kluter. Mark Thompson, behind Mark Thompson, it's a Sundenberg Jr. and Wayne Field. As, uh, well, one of the Class A cars uh, got it all wrong. That, I think, is Skull Kjaldenes. He's dropped all the way down and he sits uh, in no man's land between classes B and C. Well, in Class C, Chase Herald and Dylan van Eerden having a bit of a scrap. Daniel Rose holding up the, uh, van, uh, the other van Eerden and van der Nabile. Oh, someone off. Colin Meade has gone off. And uh, that uh, let launches uh, Yuri Swart out there. Um, so Yuri Swart doing pretty well. Up behind him, Nathan Victor, then Razi Harris. Then uh, Kai van Sale comes through, followed by Tehran. And, uh, well, Mida has got a lot of work to do. He's uh, got a flailing bumper as he makes his way down. Donny Sandenberg climbs in the brakes, drags a bit of brakes. Colin Mida, that bumper, we don't have it doesn't come loose. It doesn't fly into somebody as the Class Bs enter Turn 1. Byron Mitchell's going backwards in this class. He's dropped all the way down now to P5. He's just uh, uh, behind uh, Tate Bishop at this point in time. And ahead of Tate Bishop is uh, Carl Walsher. So he's dropped into 3-4, he's down into P5, let's hope he can fight back from that as that group works its way into turn number 2. Then behind them is Grant Kluter, Mark Thompson, Sandenberg Jr. and uh, then uh, the uh, Jetta of Wayne Field. And he's been caught again here by Skull Kjaldenace, that's the Class A car, but where are the Class C boys? <laughs> here they come. Here they come, working their way down into turn number 2. What a rumble out there. It is a Chasey Herald that leads him there from the 55 of Dylan van Eerden. It looks like it's Matthew Rowe followed there by Ryan van Eerden and Seth van der Biele. We'll just get confirmation of that. Yes, it is. As uh, they work their way through uh, turn number three, interceptor corner. That is a high-speed train of five class seagulls that are nose to tail as they work their way into turn number four, Malmesbury. Well, having a look at class A, Yuri Swart leads out. Uh, Nathan Victor's in second and Kai van Sale has made his way all the way back up to third and Kai is pedaling that car at the moment coming out of turn number one making his way up the Bear straight van Sale ahead of Tehran uh, Rising Harris has dropped down uh, Donny Sandenberg ahead there of uh, Colin Meade who's about one and a half seconds behind Sandenberg so uh, we've still got four laps to go anything can still happen so let's have a look and see what's happening in uh, class B class B is making its way out of turn number one out of Holzuk comes a Class B, working the way up the Jaber straight into turn number two. And Ian Cup is all over the back end of John Henry Vaughan as they work their way through turn number two. And oh, lock up there by Carl Walsh, sliding it up on the inside there of John Henry Vaughan. And here comes a Byron Mitchell. Mitchell is launching a comeback. Right behind them is the Golf 2 of Grand Kluter. Keep an eye on those four that's busy making its way into interceptor corner that is that fight for three four five and six in a class b working up the hill towards a turn number four well, oh sorry this contact coming out of turn number two i do apologize there francois and a chasey herald was sent packing and uh, we knew that was going to happen he's uh, rejoined again but he's now dropped way off the back of that four Class C cars that's heading up the Tigerberg straight towards turn number four. Class A, Yuri Swart leading out up here, bear straight up towards uh, Quarry Corner. He's got a considerable lead there over the second place man, Nathan Victor Kaifan sells in third. He's trying to chase down on the back of Nathan. Up behind him, it's Tron, who sits at Devaltron, chasing hard. He's. Uh, Trying to cut up behind Kai van Sel. Then up behind Devil Tron, it's uh, Razi Harris. A little bit further, Colin Mida has got past uh, Danny Sandenberg with that flailing bumper up behind him. It's uh, pretty well tied. It's dragging. There's going to be no paint left on it when he's finished, but he's not worried about that. He's worried about getting a place up on the podium. There's still a lot of work left. We've got three and a half laps to go. Class C is coming down towards us. Look at this four-way fight. It is a Matthew Rowe, which Dylan van Eerden, Ryan van Eerden, and Seth van der Biele. As the four Class C cars make their way into turn number one. 
Remember that Chase Herald was part of it. He sits in P5 and uh, <coughs> he's away off the back of that lot now. And for him to catch up to these four that's working their way into turn number two now that's going to be a massive massive mountain to climb as uh, they work their way through turn number two and they're going to catch the class b jetta of wayne field pretty soon are uh, these are four class c cars that is working their way through the kink into turn three interceptor corner but francois where are the class a boys class a just come out of uh, turn number one yuri swart leading out in uh, class a Doing a fantastic job. He's got about a six second lead over second place man Nathan Victor, who's trying to be reeled in there by Kai Van Sale. Up behind him, Devil Tron, Razi Harris, Colin Media Jr. And we see that uh, a car going off the circuit, and uh, that is Skulk Caldenace that's gone off there. A bit unfortunate, maybe some mechanical issue. Right, let's have a look at this fight that's raging on here in a class uh, B as they work throughout a turn number one. Out of turn number one, they come now, and it is John Henry Vaughan that leads it. John Henry Vaughan that leads it from Ian Cup as they work their way towards turn number two. It is John Henry Vaughan from Ian Cup. Then it's Tate Bishop, followed there by Carl Walsh. Right behind Walsh is Byron Mitchell and Grant Kluter. Then uh, Mark Thompson is in there as well, followed there by Sundenberg Jr. as the Class A. Look at these four, sorry, Class C cars. Are busy working their way out of turn number one. Francois, what a rumble in the jungle out there. As uh, the four of them work their way, they are side by side. <coughs> it's a two van Yedens that is in there together with Matthew Rowe and Seth van der Biele. Well, the van Yedens riding shotgun on each other. Dylan leads out there from Ryan. And Seth van der Biele sticks it up on the inside. Three cars through the kick. Is it going to work? I don't know. Oh, it's tight stuff. Going into the kick. Seth has his nose rubbed off. And uh, it throws him a little bit out, but he manages to keep it together. Finds himself down in fourth. So uh, Dylan van Eerden and then Sonnenberg Jr. followed there by Ryan and then Seth van Nabile. Unfortunately, uh, some of the riders getting put out there. But uh, having a look there at uh, Yuri Swart, absolutely untouchable at the moment. Seven and a half seconds ahead there of Nathan Victor. Um, Kai Van Sale three seconds back on Victor, followed there by Devil Tron. Razi Harris, Colin Media Jr. and then uh, Donny Sonnenberg. Um, in the uh, Class B, well, plenty of battles happening out there, and uh, the flag will be coming out, so we'll wait now for uh, that man, Yuri Swart, to make his way down the back straight. Yeah, Yuri Umpi Swart, there he goes, down the back main for Summit Racing uh, on his uh, last lap as he comes down to take the uh, checkered flag. The Class C cars are starting their last lap to we'll get to that one, and they have put a lap there on Wayne Field, but you have to stay with uh, the leader that's working his way out of turn five, out of Fostron corner, towards the checkered flag. We'll see him now. Here he comes to us. Summer Racing's Yuri Umpiswat brings it home in P1 in Class A as uh, Francois, the rest of the eight cars, work their way towards the line. Crossing the line now. Nathan Victor, also from Summit Racing in second. Summit Racing having a good run of it. Then it's the uh, angry o unlimited auto of Kai Van Sale. He's followed there by Deval Tron. We wait for the next uh, runner-up will be Razi Harris. Harris brings it home there. Colin Media Jr. trying his utmost to come back there. He crosses the line. Danny Sonnenberg's a little bit further back, but there's that Class B battle. And uh, John Henry Vaughan has been keeping Ian Cup at bay. Tate Bishop has joined the party. They're coming up towards the line. Let's have a look, see what happens here. So uh, John Henry Vaughan, Ian Cup holding or staving off uh, Tate Bishop. And Bishop, who was further down, comes through in third. Carl Walsh comes to the line. Just behind him is a Byron Mitchell, followed there by Grant Kluter and uh, Mark Thompson. As we wait for that Class C fight, here comes a Danny Sundenberg Jr. So this Class C fight is working its way out of turn number five, out of Fastron. It is a four-way fight for first, second, third, and fourth. As the checkered flag is out to greet them. Here they come down towards the line, then it's going to be Matthew Rowe. It's going to be Matthew Rowe, Dylan van Eerden, and Ryan van Eerden just ahead there of Seth van der Biele, followed there by the 29 of Chase Herald. What a fight out there between van der Biele and Herald was Wayne Field, but he was the lost class B car. Wow, what a race out there by Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge. Class A was won by Yuri Swart from Nathan Victor from Kai Van Sale. Class B, John Henry Vaughan from Ian Cup from Tate Bishop. 
Hank Classy, Matthew Rowe from Dylan van Eerden, followed by Ryan van Eerden. Brilliant stuff out there, alert engine parts, GTI challenge. And uh, yeah, I've just been informed here by uh, Emil Brandt of Tiny Spitbox, a maiden win in Class B for John Henry Vaughan. Right, we're going to go up here for a while, folks. It's now lunchtime here at uh, Kalan International Raceway. And uh, we'll speak to you afterwards. Remember that the uh, grid walk will be between turn three and four. And it will be the sports and GTs, the Spitfire Furniture Sports and GT cars. And they will be doing the second race after lunch will be the Onsa AC 100. Chat to you soon. Hi, Cape Town. Johnny from Wingfield Motors here. After 33 years of service to you, we make everything about cars even better. We buy your car, we sell your car, we finance your car, we service your car. Through our best price for my car app, we sell your car while you are driving it and return you much more money. And we can even rent you a car while we clear your credit score. Wingfield Motors and best price for my car will keep you driving no matter what. Wingfield Motors is an authorized FSP. Here's to the hard workers, the steady, the strong, and the bold. For the brave, the courageous, and the dedicated, the honorable ones. For the builders, the fixers, and the makers who go beyond measure so the ones they love have all they deserve. Interceptor. Great comfort, better safety. The Porsche Club in Cape Town has its home right here at Kalani. In fact, it's the only Porsche Club in the world to have a clubhouse at an international racetrack. We are proud sponsors of Kalani and the Porsche Club straight. Our passionate club members and their families regularly attend our race meetings. If you own a Porsche, come and visit us at the Porsche Club and we will let you know what fantastic events we have on offer. The Porsche Club, the best car club in Cape Town. Few cars make me want to run my fingers across them and this is one of those cars. The iconic 240Z, 240Z, depending on which part of the world you live in. But one man doesn't just get to run his finger over these smooth lines, he also gets to sit behind the wheel. And that man is with me over here. This is Kerry and this is your car. One of many cars like this, the iconic 240Z. What is it like to drive? Hi, morning, <laughs> Ernest. Um, yeah, it's awesome, eh? Really <laughs> awesome. It's my first time out today. Um, in this car? In this car. Uh. And um, it's going well. Well, the, yeah. yeah, exactly. Hopefully the weather holds. But, yeah, um, the, I can see the smiles on you, your face, Connor's face, your son yeah. over there. I'm nervous, loving it. Man. I'm nervous. <laughs> Yeah, but everything it, in God's hands. Eh? But, yeah. but today, is, isn't it a bit tricky out there, tricky conditions today, especially in our first time out in the car? Absolutely. Everything's tricky for me. I don't know the car. I don't know how the slicks are going to work. I don't know what's happening in the circuit, but it will be as it's meant to be. But this is the thing. I mean, personally, I would probably wrap this car in bubble wrap at some stage, but now, for now, you get to enjoy it. And that's what these cars are for, isn't of it? Of course, it's meant for our enjoyment, you know. Um, this is what it's about. We've been kettle heads since I was 14 years old. Yeah. You know, 1986, I stood at the fence there <laughs> and I said, I saw Richard Quixley's Golden Grove that. Which said, you now one, own. I said, one day I'm going to own that car. Yeah. And so, yeah. Well, that iconic car. Datsuns in your garage, this being one of them. This is really one of the cars that I can just stop and stare at. The lines are beautiful, the proportions are spot on. One of the most iconic designs, a sports car in the true sense of the word. And you get to drive this thing today. Enjoy, my friend. Thank you so much. <laughs> but let's not forget Uncle Richard that prepares this car so beautifully. Yeah. And thank you. And does he, does he prepare all your cars as well? Yes, he does. Well, no surprise there, Richard Schroeder, of course, Richard Quixley, Richard Quixley sorry, Quixley. Yes. Richard Quixley, I apologize, behind the bolts of these cars. Yeah, look forward to seeing more of these cars. Yeah, I'm just going to stand and stare for a while, if you don't mind.
There we go. There we go. We are back, folks, and this, of course, is the Lunchtime Show. My name is Ernest Page, and I'm joined today by uh, a Miss... Mia Pina. Mia Pina is joining us today, and she is one of our many supporters here today. And we're just going to showcase what a supporter looks like, your typical supporter over here. So, Mia, who are you here to support today? My brother, Tristan. Okay, and Tristan races bikes, I understand. Yeah. Okay, but Mia doesn't even like cars that much. Mia, what do bikes you do? Gymnastics. See what I mean? So this is what I'm saying. You don't necessarily have to be the biggest petrol head in the world. You might just want to come support a family member. Or if you like bikes and cars, you can make your way down to Kilani Raceway. Isn't that right, Mia? Yes. Well, Mia, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you at the next race. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mia Pina. There we go. Are you okay? Can you drop a bit? There we go. So that was Mia Pina joined us for a quick pop-in uh, at the lunchtime show. And she's supporting her brother on the bikes. Unfortunately, she had a bit of a tumble early on, but hopefully he can get that sorted out. He's here to join us now. And uh, Mr. Pina over here, you got your, your fan club, your support crew was here with you seconds ago. And she's back. <laughs> uh, tell us a bit about yourself and uh, what you're racing today. I'm Tristan Pino. I'm racing the 650 Power Sport Class. Jeez, that's a big bike, eh? Quite big, yeah. Yeah. And it's really nice to race. It's like a tight class. Yeah. What do you mean? It's like very competitive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And but I, I did hear your support crew told me that you might have had a bit of a spill today. Yeah. In the first race, when it was a bit wet, I went into turn four and it just tucked the front. Hmm. And uh, do you guys manage to get the bike sorted out? 100% and oh, hopefully okay. we'll be back for race too. Okay, that's nice. That's good news. Because a, a crash on a bike or spill on a bike can be, it can be very detrimental to the rest of your day. So the fact that you guys managed to get the car, or at least the bike, right for the next heat, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, I'm excited for race too. Okay. And uh, I mean, uh, that, that, isn't that, uh, like I said, that 650 is a huge bike, surely? You don't seem too bothered about it though. Yeah, it's just a really fun bike. <laughs> Clearly, you're just very good at riding bikes, so this is no big thing to Tristan. But Tristan, thanks for joining us. And what time is your race today? What time can we look forward to seeing you race? I think it's half past two if, or five past two, if I'm not after mistaken. Two. Okay, cool. So watch out for Tristan Pina after two. Number 50. Say again? Number 50. Number 55-0. Go check it out. If you, and if you don't see him on the track, I'm sure you'll see the rest of the Pinas on the side cheering him on. Thanks, Tristan. Oh, Thanks for popping by. Cheers. There you go, folks. Tristan Pina, the entire Pina family here supporting today. And that's the thing about motorsport. It is very much, in fact, a family affair, whether you're watching a friend race, watching a family member race, or just coming to support your favorite brand, bike, car, whatever, make your way down to the circuit. Somebody asked me earlier on, on my live stream, should they come down at 2 o'clock? And basically what happens now is we're going to have this lunchtime break for about an hour on the live stream to keep you guys entertained and keep you guys company until the racing starts again in about 45 minutes from now. But the people here have lots to do. They can go to the fan walk over there and go walk around and go check out the cars up close and personal, chat to the drivers if they wanted to. They can also go sit in the clubhouse. They can go sit opposite at the new pits, which is not really that new anymore. They just call it the new pits. And they go sit over there, have a burger, have a beer, have a coffee, whatever, and relax and take in the racing. There's a lot happening here at the circuit. And the second of the race there is oftentimes a repeat of what happens in the first half. Having said that, there is a very long race that's happening. It's the Ons Hasey 100, which is happening now after lunch. It's an endurance race. And uh, these guys will be driving 100 kilometers in some very, very fast sports cars. And that's what we can look forward to after the lunch break. But of course, lots more action happening here. Race two of the GTI Challenge. We just saw Umpi Swat now running away with that race in Class A. And Chase Herald being kept very honest in class C over there. Even Tate Bishop didn't have it his own way in class B. So anything can happen in motorsport and it usually does. And that's why we watch racing because we don't really know the outcomes, do we? Of course, folks, if you've just joined, this is the Power Series. My name is Ernest Page, joined today by nobody because Dexter Bruce can't make it yet today. So I'll be keeping you guys company for the rest of this lunch break and hopefully pulling a couple more guys closer for interviews and uh, finding out exactly what's going on out there on the circuit. Because even if you watch the racing, it's a bit difficult to uh, 
figure out what exactly is happening out on the track. Someone that's making that a bit easier is Suleiman Effendi, who had a live stream running on his Instagram early on. Uh, so you can check that out on his Insta to see exactly what it's like to be racing around the circuit. I'm looking around here because I'm waiting for my producer to bring me someone to talk to and we can hopefully get you guys some more interviews. Keep those comments and questions coming on to the live stream. And uh, if you're hearing a bit of an echo, it's because I'm actually out live here at the circuit as well. So the people around the track are also hearing me wondering what's going on. So, so for those of you out there, it's Ernest Page on the mic here. And I'll be chatting to you guys for the next uh, 40 minutes or so and having interviews, talking to riders, drivers and team managers to find out exactly what's going on out there on the circuit. We saw earlier on that it was a wet and rainy start to the day. But that has changed and it does look to have cleared up over here. The clouds still looking quite ominous at the moment. But so far, the threat of rain has dissipated, at least for now. So it does look like the riders and drivers have a dry race to look forward to for the rest of the day. But Kilani does have its own climate. We know this. So anything can change and often it does. So when the rain comes down, these drivers are going to have to deal with hopefully more changing conditions, having to change tires, pressures and setups before they head out onto the circuit. Driving in these conditions can be quite tricky though, because you're not exactly sure what's going to be happening. Oh, he's back. And <laughs> Brad is back. Brad is back. Brad is back. We're just talking about how tricky these conditions are. The mic's always working for you, brother. That's the mic's always working. But they call it the hot mic. And don't worry it's about it. It's not on. It's not on. That will come on when you talk, so don't worry about okay, it. Okay, okay. How's it, guys? How's so everyone ladies going? Ladies and gentlemen, Brad is back. And this <laughs> is going to be a familiar fixture on this broadcast over here. Brad, before we go on, uh, uh, tell us a bit about yourself so that people know who I'm talking to. Uh, well, Brad Bodsworth is the name. Uh, I'm actually involved in sports nutrition for our uh, stay in Somerset West. So I am and distribute some of the top brands that we have in this country in terms of supplements. Mm. Um, I've been in that game for 20 years now. Okay, nice. Yeah. Lekker. So if I want to get ripped and lean, then this is the man to speak to. Oh, but if you want to get big, I'm not the greatest <laughs> spokesperson, but there's, there's one of the, the, the guys. Okay, 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 okay. So uh, uh, that gentleman over there also rides bikes. I see a whole bunch of you guys are in this bike crew. You guys have now started a team recently. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we have Bulldog Racing, Team Bulldog, Bulldog Racing, Racing baby. Um, which is Ooh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Bulldog's not necessarily the fastest dog yeah. out there, but it's, but it's always the dog that has the most fun. Yeah, yeah, this is true. This is true. We're, we're athletes like incognito okay cool and how many uh, guys we got on your team at the moment we officially have 11 guys on our team um, solid, and eh? you know what we're not i wouldn't say we you know the top racers but we're the team that has the most fun mm -hmm. and that's the whole reason we started this whole team thing was to have fun so the moment it doesn't really become fun i, I can see guys dropping up but but for us it's like guys from track school filtering through from the breakfast class through to clubmans and then we've got some obviously in spk but it's all about the fun i, I look there's, there's there's certain statements in motorsport that are what they call Truisms. And one of the things, it's, it's difficult to race for fun, but it is fun racing. And I, I, I feel like it's important to have that bridge where in the beginning, it doesn't matter what the results are. Yeah. You just get in, yeah. you just ride, you just drive. But then there does come a point where guys want to start taking it seriously. And you guys obviously have that mechanism built in as well for the guys that want to you know, head down. Let's yeah. go out there. So we've got two guys on our team, uh, Matthew Van Niekirk and Sean Harris. And they're, nice. they're very serious racers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but they're also the guys that we tease the most and give the most amount of stick to. You know, <laughs> hey, Sean, check how wet it is out there. You're going to drop yeah, your yeah. bike, bro. Oh, you think I might drop my bike? Yeah, Sean, oh, yeah, is gonna... <laughs> Sean is in the zone. Sean is in the zone. So, yeah. 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 He's on a very expensive bike at the moment. Collector's item VTR SP1, uh, which Jeez. is his bike he's owned for 20 years. But uh, he didn't want to drop his BMW. So he brought his VTR here to race. Yeah. And everyone was okay. like, he's getting a lot more attention than my normal MV Augusta, <laughs> which is actually quite a problematic. Which is a you know? fantastic yeah. bike, by the way. It's yeah. just the name, MV Augusta. Mm, those that know, know. Yeah. So your team, how's the results looking so far today? Look, I mean, uh, we we only had two races, well, race one for the day in both classes. Um, so a lot of our, in fact, two riders went out, myself mm. and Sean Harris. I went out in SPK. Sean Harris went out in uh, in Clubman's. He got moved from Golden Oldies with his bike. He missed the cutoff by one year. Um, and I can tell you this. I've never raced in the wet before. I, I have stick tires on my bike. I went out in the wet. It took me six laps to figure out how to do this. Yeah. I can tell you this, I think it was more fun than racing in the dry. Jeez. It was an, I got back in and I was absolute trouble. So absolute what trouble. are the rules that apply to bikes? I know in a car you want to brake in a straight line, you want to square off the circuit, you want to drive in the middle, you want to make sure not to drive across when you're turning, across the wet line, all those sorts of things, the, the usual dry line, you don't want to go there. 
do those same rules apply to the bikes? Um, I think more so the things that I learned in the six laps as a complete novice and newbie to racing or riding a bike in, in the wet is that when I opened up the throttle, even in sixth gear coming out of a very hairpin type, t uh, type turn, like turpin one, uh, the moment I open up the gas, the rear starts sliding out in the yeah, wet, yeah, obviously. And when that happens, the moment I close the gas all the way, it flicks over to the other side and then it gives you a double, oh, double whack. The old so tank I, slapper. The so old I, tank heard, slapper. I learned very quickly that when it starts going, just to roll a little bit off, five degrees off. Uh, one of the other things I learned is that... You, yeah, yeah, because you don't want to jump off all the way. Yeah, because then it flicks the other way. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. Uh, and then one of the other things I learned is that you can engine brake the hell out of a bike and it really slows down. So when I was coming down, I got to, uh, on my, my lap time, it showed a top speed of 219, where we normally run 262 or I do. Um, but even with those brake markers, when I hit the, the you know, the, the engine brake, because I wasn't touching the front, mm. don't touch the front, it's going to touch. It just slows down. Yeah, it and slowed then, me all the way down to the turn. And these, uh, these are things that people will tell you, but you only really know it when you try it for yourself, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the guys, there was two guys on that, in that race that came uh, past me in, with red tires on. And I thought, uh, the one guy, I thought, I'm, a, I'm just as good as this guy. And the moment he got on the throttle, I got on the throttle. Uh -oh. and so I went <laughs> left, he went straight. <laughs> but as you say, you're having a heck of a good time out there. That's what it's about. About the fun. Yeah, exactly. Look, this is season one, eh? This is season one. <laughs> Tune in for season two, and then we'll see where you're at. I look forward to watching your journey, Brad. It's so nice to get the updates from you and your team. Keep them coming, please. And we look forward to seeing what you guys do for the rest awesome. of the year. Thank you very much. Yeah, Appreciate what a pleasure, it. man. What Appreciate a pleasure. Guys. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Brad Bosworth over there. Bosworth, eh? Bodsworth, yeah. Bodsworth. Brad Bodsworth over there. Uh, and uh, we've got Andrew and Bradley over here coming through. Are, are we coming through, Andrew, Bradley? Uh, which one's Andrew? Which one's Bradley? Can I forget? <laughs> we've got Brad over there. Andrew, how's it going, brother? Can I have a seat? Pull in, pull in, coming nice and close over here. You guys are going to have to share this mic. Um, so, what's happening with the. I hear there's a raffle going on uh, today. Yeah. Um... The marshals are going up East London uh, mm. for foreign friends. Yeah. So, um, which is going to be a massive event, I've heard. I'm hoping so. Yeah, I've heard it's going to be big. Yeah. So, um, Uncle Louis from foreign friends approached us and asked Louis us. Louis Paul, who's racing today, by the way? Exactly. Mm. He approached us, asked us to lend a helping hand up there, and mm. we are more than willing to go up there. Yeah. Because we haven't done a weight trip in about 10 years plus. Yeah, you mentioned that the last time it's so been a while. A and the, you guys were supposed to go pre-COVID, I think it was, and then obviously things got interrupted. There was, yeah, talk about it, but yeah. now it's coming, mm. it's coming about. It's so It's more of a team building thing, to be honest, because mm. we haven't been away for 10 years plus, like I mentioned. So yeah. we're looking forward to it. Okay, so what's the deal with this raffle? You guys are obviously trying to raise funds for this event. Yeah. I mean, well, let's talk about the, 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 the Cape Town Marshals, award-winning marshals. L literally internationally recognized when the Rallycross guys came down here. They wanted to take you guys home with them. We said no, no, no. But, <laughs> <laughs> and here you guys are now again. So, uh, Andrew, what, what's the deal with the, with the raffle? Yeah, well, what the raffle is, uh, what we're trying to do is it's towards the funds for the guys as we support for them as we go down here. As you know, the marshals always like to um, compete in little events that they try to do themselves. So mm -hmm. what we want to do is we like to get all the drivers involved and supporters and spectators to support the marshals mm. in what we want to do because without the marshals, yeah, they ain't racing. At yeah, all. yeah, so exactly. that's a good cause we want to do, and the guys are all excited about it. Mm. So, how do we get in touch with you guys at the race today? Obviously, would be the best time to do it right now. Anybody yeah. out there that's listening, because we're going out to the PA system. So, to the firstly to the people that are here today, how can they support you guys? Okay, what we can do is what we've got the marshal uh, we call turn six. And then there is a lovely lady walking around with a clipboard. Um, she does the marketing for the marshals. <laughs> okay. So she'll walk around. Is she the one that's getting... smiling over there? Yep, the that's, that's her face. Okay. Lady, yes. Okay. So you can't she, miss her. You can't miss her. If you go and get all of it, turn six, you can, guys can most welcome to, to come there as well. Okay. Yeah. That's where we all are. Awesome. Turn six, for those of you guys that know, there's an extra turn at Kilani. That's the Marshalls Clubhouse. Turn six at the end of the pit straight over here. So yeah. if you want to go chat to the guys, into the pits at least, the old pits, you want to chat to the guys, go to the old pits, turn six and chat to them. And they see if you can support them for this very worthy cause. And for those people that aren't here today, how do they get in touch with you guys? Well, um, you can check on the Marshalls Facebook page, make contact with us through that. Um, some of the details are there. Send us a message and we'll gladly get in contact with you. Well, there you go. Uh, and on, the other, on another note, with regard to today's racing, what have you guys seen today? Can you give us some inside information that we haven't seen yet? What's happening out there that we can't see on camera? 
Well, um, quite a few have gone down, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Spills here and there. Yeah, Lots of, there was an oil spill in five, I heard, eh? Yeah, I was thrashing to turn five with little splatters all around the circuit. <laughs> <I'd either. laughs> One of our long-standing <laughs> officials here at the track, always a smile, always a wave. Mm. Yeah, so we had a bit of splatters, let's put it that way, nothing too drastic, okay. thankfully. Yeah. Easy clean up, just okay. took a bit of time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And one or two pranks here and there. Unfortunately, yeah. one of the bikers came off in turn four. Kind of odd, but... Oh. He's mobile. He's mobile. Okay. Yeah, the, bike's okay. Not that good. the bike's not that good. He's not that good either. Yeah, He's going to not a place you want to go down. We, we spoke about that with Brad early on. Going down in turn four is not a good thing. Even in a car, it's not nice. So I can't Tell imagine on the bike. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I caught you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's another story. But yeah, folks, uh, Brad, uh, thanks for joining us here. Andrew, thanks for joining us here. These, of course, the Pleasure. marshals from Kilani Raceway. Uh, literally, these guys have been accoladed internationally, and now they're looking to go down to Ford and Friends. Uh, incidentally, a fantastic event. I'm hoping to possibly be there as well. So we'll see you guys at Ford and Friends. And support the guys on the Facebook page or head over to Turn 6. Or if you see a lady smiling with a clipboard in the pit lane, walking around with Andrew over here. Then give them a hello, give them some support, and chat to the guys from the Cape Town Kilani Marshals. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Mm. There you go. I'll pop that in there. You can just hand that to my producer. And well, there you have it, folks. Those are the Kilani Marshals uh, here at Kilani Raceway. What an action pack day so far and it does seem like the weather has changed but you never know with this place though you never know because always Kilani has thrown us curveballs last day of the race I've seen it 10 minutes before the last day of the race the rain comes down uh, we've got uh, Kyle and Nick over here looks like it and they'll be joining us Kyle and Nick I know we've only got uh, we've got two seats for you guys oh, there we go Kyle and Nick, I saw you walking around here early on. Guys, uh, please introduce yourselves and tell us a bit more about yourselves and what you guys are up to. Judging by the Honda and the Yamaha hoodies, I suspect you guys might be bikers. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> um, yeah, well, um, Nick is from H uh, HSC Racing and uh, nice. we're part of Hobo Racing. And um, yeah, I race uh, short circuit. We do super motards and also the Aprilia on the um, one to five two strokes. And that's basically where we progress to come through to main circuit now, where we're racing on the 650s. I started on a 300, and now I'm on a 650. Um, and I've also just acquired a supercar, which is very nice. exciting because we're busy growing. And um, nice. yeah, I love racing. It's in, it's in my passion, and yeah, it's fantastic. But the HSC stable does all sorts of racing. So you guys are playing in the right spaces here because you can do, like you say, you've got a supercar race car, you've got the bike now. I mean, from your side, what's been happening on your side lately? Yeah, so I also come from the short circuit. I mean, I raced the 150s um, with Carl. Well, he had a 150, not anymore. <laughs> now he's got a 650. Starting yeah, with the big so boys now. Starting with the big we, boys. We started off at short circuit and progressed to main circuit. So yeah. I think the short circuit is a really good uh, learning curve for everyone to yeah. come to short circuit and grow through to main circuit. It's important, but, especially on bikes, to take that initial sort of growth on a smaller bike, things are happening a lot slower. There's a lot more technical. nuance, technical stuff there. Yeah. And that circuit is super technical. The short circuit is very, very technical. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you can learn on short circuit. And when you come to main circuits, it's a lot easier yeah. to corner, to but from yeah. bike handling. I actually everything. call that the handling circuit because that's kind of what it is. You're always going left to right all the time, trying yeah. to figure out the handling of your car, your bike. Eh? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it's a lot of a tighter circuit. I mean, yeah. short circuit is where you adapt and you learn all your skills. And um, it takes a bit of uh, practice and learning to get into it. But once you get into it, I mean, it's it's fantastic fun. And what was um, it like when you came over to Main Circuit, opening up that 650 for the first time? I yeah, it was a 300 that I started on. Yeah. Um, and it's it's another ball game. I mean, you're doing a lot higher speeds. Yeah. Um, your cornering is a lot longer and wider compared to the short circuit where they put the cones out and the ropes and all of the safety yeah, 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 features yeah. and everything. Um, but with adapting from also riding and off-road uh, skills and bringing that onto short circuit then main circuit it just you adapt a lot easier I would say yeah um, it's, it's fantastic fun man and I'd recommend it to anybody out there that wants to come and you know join the community and pretty much a racing family and, what would um, you say what would we I would uh, in practicality what would you recommend if someone says to you uh, I want to come and race with you guys where would you, where would you I say, would say I mean come down support the fun come and get to know the guys chat to us um, yeah get, get a feel for what's happening um, watching and learning and then basically just do there's a lot of um, um, communities out there that are helping the younger and smaller yeah. guys getting into the racing yeah. like uh, red beard racing yeah um, and basically just 60 
360 as well. Start small and, and, and practice and learn and, and you'll be able to tell and adapt from, from time of, okay, you can progress, you feel like comfortable to move forward. Um, you know what? Yeah, I think uh, the best way to get into racing is through Red Beard Racing. Mm. I mean, well, well, tell us about Red Beard Racing. What exactly is that? So Red Beard Racing is an academy that goes on Mondays and they train guys on a 150 race bike. Nice. They, that is one of the best ways to get into racing if you don't know anyone. If you is it Red Beard the same guys who do the wheelie school? Yes. Yes. yes, yes now yes, I'm, I might be going to that wheelie school. By the way, <laughs> 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 I can only ride on two wheels. I don't know how they're going to make me ride well, on one. But let's wheels, see. So, I mean, oh, that's fine. all right. <laughs> I can do that. Training wheels, baby. So uh, we, you were talking earlier on. One of the things that I get asked often is, how do I get into motorsport? And that's such a repetitive question because everybody thinks all they're going to do is come do one race, they're going to get sponsored and then their lives are going to change. It doesn't work that way. What you said now, Ryan, eh? Carl. Uh, yeah, Carl. Carl, yeah. sorry, Carl and Nick, yeah. What you said earlier on really makes sense because come down to the track, mm. tap this guy on the shoulder and say, hey man, I did that with, with uh, Walker back in the day. Somebody invited me, yeah, I met the son and I just spent the day with him at the track. Yeah. Just to see what it's about, meet the right people. Now you, you hear about a bike in somebody's barn, that's 3,000 Rand. But because he met you and he knows you're going to start racing, he'll go, you know what, I'll fucking give you the bike for 2,000 Rand. And, and another thing yeah. as well is the endurance races from Short Circuit. There's a lot of endurance races that are coming out now that um, I, I, Andrew Hutchings is actually busy implementing. There and you what's go. fun about the endurance races is you don't have to get into the racing straight away. But what's nice is the endurance race, you race as a team. So you start to learn a lot easier as yes. a team of four guys or three 100%. guys. 100%. Get on the track, feel and not all like. four guys need a bike then. There's only one guy with a bike. Correct. Bike, so you yeah. borrow one bike between the team and I mean that just gets your ball rolling. Then. Well endurance racing has certainly taken over. I'm part of the South African endurance series and it's growing big time because you get a lot more seat time. Uh, you get a lot you can share the car, it's a lot more cost effective. Look if your guy bins it on turn one, then you're sitting and watching from the sidelines yeah. for the rest of it. But that's the risk you take. But there you go, they come and meet you guys. I met when I was in the UK, I met someone there and they invited me to a twenty four hour endurance race just like that. They said we got a car this is how much it's going to cost it's cheapest chips if the car breaks sorry but at least you get seat you time get so seat time and you get the this is yeah. exactly what you guys want to be doing listen to the guys like this come to the track come talk to the guys don't just sit at home on social media and say i wish i could be racing actually yeah. come down to the circuit so you can race yeah come come down to yeah. the circuit support show face find a, a guy that you see it like a, as a role model talk to him he'll probably probably come help you out if you're yeah. really interested in I racing. think it's possible especially for the 150s especially for uh, 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 like go-karting for example something that's not as uh, uh, something is more cost-effective like for yeah. us it's rally cross I'm sure you guys know HSC Motorsport yeah, knows yeah. about <laughs> rally cross well. and for us it's rally cross uh, my friend has given his car to multiple drivers and pulled them in like that it's the most cost-effective racing I think in in, in in South Africa they are ways to get involved but you can't do it from your cell phone at home. The best Correct. thing is come to the tracks and meet some guys. Get involved. Some, some fantastic yep. advice there, guys. Buddy. Thank you. Thanks for stopping Thank by, you. Carl. Yes, Nick, I appreciate you. it. Right. We'll speak to you guys soon. There you have it, folks. Straight from the bikers themselves. That's how it's done. That's how you get involved in motorsport. Some very solid advice there to get behind the wheel, get on the seat, and come feel what it's like here at the circuit. Ah. Looks like the guys are starting to get ready. We're making our way towards now the end of the day, or at least the second half of the day, where the Orns AC100 is going to come. And now we finally got, you know, I, I like to think of myself as a, as a commentator, but this, this is a real commentator here, folks. I just talk on a mic. Okay, <laughs> you got, you got, you can't. Have, this is too few gray hairs. You need this much gray hair to oh, be a real commentator. It's, it's, not, it's not that bad, and it's definitely not. Uh... Yeah. Why does your voice sound familiar? Please tell the people there why your voice sounds familiar. Well, I'm one of the guys that stands up in the ivory tower and commentates uh -huh. on the racing. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, it's been a very indifferent day today. Uh, we've had rain, sun, all five seasons in one day. Cape Town. Cape Town. You know how it Needless is. to say. Uh, big shout out to the viewers on YouTube in uh, heating us up with a couple of comments. Nice yeah. to see the guys. Uh, yeah, they're viewing. engaging. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys engaging nicely. So uh, I've done a couple of shout outs to some of the viewers. Nice mm. to have them on board. Um, it's important to do that, they engage with them and then make must, people feel must. like they're here with us yes, from the comforts yes. of their home. Sometimes people can't be here for whatever reason. I just barely made it this morning. I got him at midnight last night. So, uh, yeah, it's been a difficult one. Parties like it's 1999. <laughs> 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 like it's 1999, people. Yeah, well, back in the 80s, eh? Yeah, was the good days. We'd actually work at the track till about four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, 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 work. 
work here, uh, 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 and then race at about seven. I, I do miss those days, those post uh, uh, race day celebrations. It's oftentimes the best. Like your son races bikes, if I'm not mistaken. He did. Unfortunately, his racing's come to a, a sudden halt. Uh, oh no! Reasons unknown to us, unfortunately. But yeah. Okay. It uh, happens, mm. and um, well, we'll have a look next year. Maybe we'll yeah. get something on the circuit, but who knows? But yeah, the racing um, been a little bit ifish this morning. I think it'll be a bit better after lunch because as you see, it's cleared up. Yeah. The track is yeah. dry, and uh, these are the perfect weather conditions uh, for both cool cars. Air. Like cool air. Um, you have a lot of air intake. You've got an oncoming wind going down into it, so. Uh, It'll make some exciting racing. Let's hope post lunch is going to be exciting. For yes. Us. Well, we got Colin Meader standing by now. He's, yeah. he's coming in from GTI Challenge. Colin has been on the GTI Challenge. I'll, t I'll let Colin take my seat. Colin, yes. you can come and chat here. Nice to see you. Hi, my boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Day. How's it, Colin? Thanks so much. That is, of course, our representative from on top in the ivory tower, as they so accurately put it. <laughs> Tune in. We'll be throwing back to uh, the commentator soon, Frank, and the rest of the team in a couple of moments. But before we do that, Colin Meader. How's it going? Long time no chat. Yeah, uh, you, you're racing GTI Challenge today. How was it out there? It looked frantic out there as always. <laughs> but you guys kept it clean on turn one, eh? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't too bad. Um, started third for the day and uh, had a pretty good start, which I was happy about. I think maybe the tire pressure was a bit low, so it took quite some time to get back on. Mm. And um, made a small mistake in turn two. Nathan got me on the inside, uh, had a bit of a dice, and then just ran wide on, on turn five and then ended up farming a bit. So, what's the that. car? Is the car fine? Yeah, fine. Car's fine. A uh, bit of alignment that needs to be done. Uh, Are you guys going to be able to do that before the next uh, race? Yeah, we'll have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the thing. You, you, the GTI Challenge cars, the tolerances are so small. I was just talking to three-time champion earlier on Piet Pervald about the fact that if you are 1.1 degree camber out, it's going to make a difference. It might not make a big difference, but now you're not able to keep it consistent with those front-running guys anymore. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I knew my alignment was out after farming, so... Um, Definitely, you just can't do the lap times that you normally could yeah. do. So it was just an unfortunate race, you know. Sometimes with motorsport, things go like that. That's um, racing, eh? Tough event, but we'll be we'll be there for the second one. Well, thanks for coming to chat to us. Anyway, just one more thing before you go. The car that you're driving, can you give us just a base spec weight, kilowatts, newtons on that car, and what type of car it is? Yeah, so the cars that we're running now in Class A and GDI Challenge is X Polar Cup spec cars, which is a VW Polo 6R, 2 liter FSI motor. Nice. Um, weight is around about 1090. Mm -hmm. And kilowatts on the wheels about 150. Jeez. Now, those cars are powerful, eh? Those cars are very, very powerful. And the fact that you guys are doing those times with a heavier car nowadays compared to back in the day. Frankly, unbelievable. Watch out for Colin Meader on a G in the GTI Challenge race, the second race happening after lunch later on. Good luck with that alignment, man. I hope you guys, hope you guys get it sorted. Will do. Good luck. Thanks. That was Colin Meader. I'll pop this over here and uh, watch out for him in GTI Challenge later on. And as we mentioned, the tolerance on those cars so small. If you will align, those cars normally run about four point something degrees camber in front. If you knock that camber out and it's now on, on especially on the left wheel where you need all that cornering ability, you, instead of 4.5, let's say you're now at 4.3, you're not going to be able to go as fast as you need to. The tires don't work the same way they do. So those cars are very sensitive to camber changes, to any sort of setup changes. That's why the guys have the jigs here at the track where they can actually do wheel alignment at the track. Now, it's not something easy to do and you've got all the strings and stuff connected, but at least you don't have to go to the quick fit to go get your wheel alignment done. They're going to do it right here in the pits. Now we wait for our next interviewer and these guys are already starting to line up over here. I think everybody's getting a little bit hasty. How much time have we got before uh, lunchtime ends? We're just waiting now to find out how much time there is before the lunch break is over. And then, of course, we're going to get back to the action if you look behind me over here you can see this is where the bikers pit right over there the cars are lining up and on the other side we've got the classics single seaters and of course the v8 masters who might not be racing but it looks like we're gonna get ready to go out soon folks as mentioned my name is Ernest Page this is the Kilani Power Series and stay tuned the race racing is about to get going right now
Well, thank you very much, uh, Ernest. And yeah, Ernest, of course, entertaining you through the lunch break with a number of interviews over there as well. We are ready uh, to go for uh, race two uh, of the uh, Pirelli V8 Masters. Uh, we said, of course, earlier on only seven were entered, but let's see how many of them will be out there because remember, we had that uh, contact between uh, Richard uh, Schroeder and uh, Dennis Kaiduk. So, uh, unfortunately, I think we're going to have uh, a smaller, smaller field. Here come the, uh, the various uh, APV Ford Mustangs. The man on pole position will be Gears for Africa's Carl Nell. Class, uh, the gold class, I should rather say. And they will be going for a rolling start behind the safety car. Into position. So the number 64 will be Carl Nell. Yes, uh, it will be uh, taking first position, pole position. And Sean Moore will be starting alongside him. Jason Ivertson and Roy Campos. There's the number 29, and then the uh, 17, who also did not finish the last race, Gary Thompson, the silver class uh, runner, he's in fifth position. Sixth position will be car number 69, which will be Dennis Geiduk. Yeah, he's out there in the uh, Menno Parsons car. Remember that Menno is not racing today, he's flying his uh, P51 Mustang at the Rand Air Show. So he's not going to be out there today. So um, Dennis Geiduk that was out there in car number nine. He will be out there now in car number 69, the Menno Parsons mach machine. Well, lucky for him, he's uh, got uh, a car that he can use, like uh, Frankie said, the Menno Parsons car. Unfortunately, Richard Schroeder does not have the same privilege, looks like it. So he uh, will have to uh, sit this one out, unfortunately, after that big contact in race one. But there are five, uh, six of them out there, and uh, away they go on their warm-up lap now much different conditions than what we had earlier on the sun has come out it's a bit warmer and uh, the second half of our program now uh, gets underway as uh, they make their way around this uh, 3.2 kilometer circuit yeah 3.267 kilometers of Kalani international raceway and uh, we kick off the uh, second half of the program with the uh, pirelli v8 masters directly after that will be the Spitfire Furniture Sports and GT doing the Onsa AC 100. And that's just over 30 laps that they're all doing at uh, 100 kilometers around uh, Kilani International Raceway. And that will come up directly after the Pirelli V8 uh, Master Series car. Six to the seven cars out on track. No Richard Schroeder, but all the others have made it out there for race number two. So, a big hi, hello and welcome to everybody around Kalani International. Not too many spectators out there today. It's pretty chilly out there. And um, with the rain we had early on, that's kept a lot of people away. But I'm sure there are tons and tons of people watching the uh, live stream. Brought to you by IMUSAT. A big thanks to uh, Stephen Rhodes and everybody else that's there involved in IMUSAT. We say a big thanks to them. As well as all our photographers out there, I know that Aubrey de Brain will be out there, Patrick for Mark, uh, um, Uncle Colin Brown will be out there as well. Um, so many of them that uh, Frankie or Frankie's Funky's photo, just to name a few. Desmond Butler also takes photos, he takes a lot of photos. I actually greeted him when I walked under the subway this morning, the uh, King Tony Tools uh, subway, and I said, uh, Big hello to, to him. And that's just to name a few. There are others out there uh, that's also taking photos. Dion van der Berg also takes photos. And there are just so many, many of them. So, well, uh, uh, Byron, they are rolling out of turn number five, Fastron Corner. Yeah, the Kia safety car will come into the pits. Uh, that will be a shot right. And then uh, regulating the pace will be our pole man, Carl Nell, in that red and yellow car. And uh, alongside him, the fellow or the uh, likewise Mustang APV of Sean Moore. Now we wait for the lights to go out. It's an eight lap race that lies ahead. And they roll it to the line now and the lights will go out about this time. 
and away we go for the start of this race. You watch them down to turn one, all six of them there, but it looks like, yes, the corner advantage, of course, will go to uh, that uh, Carl Now machine, and uh, falling into position will be the uh, green and black Sean Moore Carl Ibertson, holding third at this time, and then the number 17 there of uh, Gary Thompson, ahead of Roy Campos. So Roy Campos uh, has fallen to the back of the field here. Yeah, it sits in there behind uh, Dennis Heideck. Campus, as a matter of fact, went very wide in uh, turn number one and lost uh, tons of positions there, did Roy Campus. He sits at the back there behind the 69. That's being campaigned now by Dennis Heideck. So up the Tiger Big Straight, these six APV V8 Ford Mustangs <clears throat> work their way out of turn number four, heading uh, down the back main. And it's Carl Nell that leads them down the back straight there from Sean Moore from uh, Jason Ibertson, from Gary Thompson. Then it is uh, Dennis Heidick, and right on his case there is uh, Roy Campos. As uh, they fight for positions, Campos dives up on the inside. Does Campos move up a position on the inside of Heidick? No, it's still Dennis Heidick that holds on to that place, but uh, Byron, uh, he is not letting go, is Roy Campos. Oh, they're side by side with each other underneath the uh, city of Cape Town Bridge. He will have the outside if it stays like this now, but I think he might just make it right past. Under breaking they go then, and Dennis Gaiduk, well, he's on the inside, but just putting the nose ahead there is Roy Campos. He's up into fifth position uh, at this time. You'll be chasing down Thompson, uh, the number 17 car, of course, that is the silver class car, and look at the battle for the lead. Frankie coming out of turn two. Right out of turn number two, they go now. That's a battle between Carl, Carl Nell and Sean Moore. Through the kink, they work their way into interceptor corner, turn number three. Out of interceptor, they come now. They're getting slightly away there from uh, Jason Iberton, but the man to watch, I believe, is Campos. Campos is having a go there, Gary Thompson, as they work their way up the uh, Tiger Big Straight. Level it out there at. Uh, Turn number four, down the back main they go, but the fight for the lead is still very much on you. And they are side by side, down the back main, and it looks like it is Sean Moore, but sitting right there on his outside is Nell, but it's Moore that gets his nose up into P1. Yeah, he'll push it ahead there, Frankie. Now they'll come out of Pertamina Fastron onto the straight. They'll then run. Will the uh, Carl Nell machine, will he go back at him? Let's see as they go down the straight. I don't think he's close enough. This is going to allow uh, Jason Ivinson maybe to close. Close up the gap to them, but on the inside goes Cole now, but he's not close enough in turn one. And uh, while well, Moore will still keep the nose ahead for now. And then we have Jason Ibertson coming through. Let's take a look at where Roy Campos is. He's made his way. No, he hasn't made his way through to fourth yet. He's still got that, uh, well, that uh, Gary Thompson's actually ahead of him. He's actually fourth, excuse me. And then he has uh, the uh, Thompson car right behind him. Yeah, sorry, getting my numbers mixed up over there. As uh, Campos comes out of turn two, he's leaving Thompson behind. And then Dennis Kreiduk will be holding up that last position. Yeah, so he has moved up another place. Has uh, Roy Campos. He's ahead there of Gary Thompson. Thompson, but the leaders are heading into turn number four through turn four they come now that is a Malmesbury sweep on the gas down the back main they go and it's a lovely fight here between the 73 and the 64 of uh, Sean Moore and Carl Nell as uh, they head down the back main Nell dives up onto the inside and if they bog each other down that will bring the 46 of Jason Ibertson back into play as Ibertson is getting closer and closer to the combination of Moore and Nell. Well, the fastest lap of the race so far, Frankie, a 117.342 by Sean Moore. And he crossed the line first in the last lap. He does so this lap as well. It's a 116.788 now for Sean Moore, going even faster. And there's seven tenths of a second between himself and Carl Nell as they cross the line. But Ibertson is visibly closer. He's two seconds back off of Nell at the moment. But in turn, Campos is 2.9 seconds off of Ibertson. Ibertson in that fourth position at this time. Going to watch uh, that fight for that third position to see there if uh, Campos does close the gap there on the man that's in third position, namely Jason, uh, Jason Ibertson. And now that Sean Moore going through uh, interceptor corner, turn three, has got his nose ahead there of Carl Nell. It looks like there's no stopping Sean Moore now. The gap between himself and Nell 
will probably get bigger and bigger as the two of them work their way out of Malmesbury Sweep, turn four. Only four and a bit laps left to go in this race. Sean Moore, car number 73, down the back straight as he goes. 116.788, his fastest lap of the race. This looks pretty quick as well. Carl Nell still hanging in there in second position. There was seven tenths of a second between them when they came across the line the last time. Let's see if that gap has grown or shrunk. Jason Ibertson still holding that third position at the moment, but how much closer is Roy Campos to him? It was between them 2.9 seconds across the line we then run. It's a 116.271. He's faster again is Sean Moore, and the gap has grown to one and a half seconds between himself and Nell. Yeah, it's 2.9 seconds between Ibertson and Campos, so... Uh uh, Roy has not made up that much ground there on uh, Jason Iberton that is there in that third position. But there's a one and a half second, almost 1.6 second gap between cars 73 and 64 for P1 and 2, uh, Sean, uh, one and two uh, Sean Moore <coughs> and uh, Carl Nell as uh, they head out of Interceptor Corner. Iberton sits out there in P3, Campus sits out there in P4. P5 is still uh, Gary Thompson, and not too far behind him in P6 is uh, Dennis Heiduck. Well, Roy Campos, Frankie, was uh, a tenth of a second faster than Jabez Jason Ibertson in third place ahead of him. He's going to have to do a hell of a lot more work to try and close that gap up. It's still 2.9 seconds between himself and Ibertson ahead. So Campos going to have to really push it hard now. He's left Thompson behind 5.3 seconds, but Dennis Heiduck has closed the gap to within one second of Thompson. Remember, those are both the only Silver Class runners, so Silver Class honors is still well and truly up for grabs. Uh, that's when they started that lap visually in turn number five in Fostron Corner. High Duck is all over the back there of the uh, Thompson outfit to car 69. Not too far behind car number 17. And that's a fight out there for second last position. But we go to the leader that's making his way into Quarry Corner. That's turn two. Through turn two goes car 73. That is Sean Moore. And when he crossed the line, there was 2.2 seconds between himself and Nell that is still there in that second position as uh, they head towards Interceptor Corner. <coughs> Out of Interceptor they come now, working their way up the Tigerberg Strait into a turn at number four. Ibertson still out there in that third position and not too far behind him, looming there in his shadows, is the 29 of Roy Campos as they head down the back straight to Byron towards Fostron Corner, turn five. Well, Roy Campos has taken now three tenths of a second on the last lap out of uh, Jason Ibertson. So he's turning up the wick just a little bit more, tenth, three tenths. He's going to have to go a bit quicker even than that as well. Oh, a little bit nervous out of the last turn there uh, for Cole now as well. A bit of a wiggle. 2.2 uh, seconds the last time around as they cross the line between Moore and Nell. I'm going to have a feeling that gap has grown just a little bit as well to 3.9. Nine seconds. Ibertson crosses the line. 2.4 seconds. Well, and we got drama out there. That is uh, Ibertson. Uh, uh, not Ibertson. Uh, that's Heiduk. Heiduk. <clears throat> Dennis Heiduk down in turn number five. We just saw a cloud of dust there in turn five in Fostron Corner. And uh, I think he's got that thing truly beached there in the sand right up against the wall. The marshals are running down towards that car. So any information we will let you know. So that is the end of Dennis Heiduk's race. But we are the leaders. They are heading out of, uh, I think they'll be making their way out of four. Going down the back. Here they go, down the back. Line. Now remember, Byron, there'll be yellow flags, double yellows, waving into Fostron Corner, turn five. So there'll be no overtaking allowed, but then again, the gaps between first, second, third, fourth, and fifth is pretty big in any case. Yeah, it is quite. It's 3.9 seconds between Moore and now Ibertson uh, is only got 1.7 seconds between himself and Campos. Look at uh, that fight coming out of turn number five. And Campos is all over the back end there of the 46 of uh, Jason Ibertson. Dennis Guy Heiduk is actually joining the race again. So he was well able done. to be pushed out. But as he does come into the race, this is the nose to tail battle going to be happening over here. One more lap left to go, Frankie. That is the battle to watch between Ibertson in third place and Campos in fourth place. They cross the line, seven tenths of a second between the two of them. They're onto the Jubei straight now. Yeah, making their way into turn number two. We're going to keep an eye on this fight for P3 and 4. That is uh, car 29 chasing down car 46. And that's Ray Campos up on the inside, up on the inside, and into third position 
goes. Roy came past, taking that position away there from Jason Iberton. Uh, just shows you how much quicker he is, Frankie. Yeah, he just starts uh, leaping away from him. He gets a bit closer again in uh, turn three. Interceptor corner does Ibertson, but I think what happens is he's going to have to be content with fourth place today. A great drive here from uh, Roy Campos. Checkered flag is out as our leader makes his way into Fostron corner. That's turn five. Working his way through Fostron corner now. Towards the checkered flag is car 73, Sean Moore. The man that sits out there in P1. The uh, checkered flag is ready to uh, greet him as he runs under the city of Cape Town Bridge. And <laughs> victory belongs to car 73, Sean Moore with uh, Nell coming home in that second position. Ibertson is coming right back at Roy Campos, but Roy Campos will just take this one, Frankie. A nice little fight back there from uh, Ibertson, but that will be, of course, third and fourth. Uh, Carl Nell, as you pointed out, Frankie, second. And then uh, Gary Thompson should be the next man uh, coming around. Here we go, car number 17. Yep. Gary Thompson finishes his race, and he will finish there in that uh, fifth position. Silver class winner. Yeah, Dennis Heideck did rejoin, but I don't see him out of the commentary box window. He's got a red square next to his name, so I don't know, yeah. he's pulled it. Probably stopped somewhere around the track and uh, DNF there for Dennis Heideck after coming out of the sand trap. So it's been, uh, just to put it mildly, a very adventurous day uh, for Dennis Heideck. Uh, of course, yes. he was involved in, a, in his, uh, his car uh, in the first race. Uh, he was uh, involved in a uh, moment of contact between himself and Richard Schroeder. And now uh, putting it off as well. Here we go as the replay. Goodness, it's quite a bit that he goes off over there kicking yeah. the dust up. And he was beached for a considerable amount of time. Yeah, I put that uh, 69 car well and truly there in the uh, sand pit. And uh, the marshals eventually ran across the circuit to find out if it was okay. And got the car going again. But uh, clearly did not make the checkered flag. Once again, a replay of Dennis Heideck uh, beaching that uh, V8 Master. He is at the exit of turn five on the outside of the turn. So that was the... Pirelli V8 Masters, we now get ready for the Spitfire Furniture Sports and GT cars doing the Onsa AC 100. Well, as you can see uh, on the program on screens, if you are watching at home, and uh, we of course have those of you watching at home, we have the uh, number of spectators around the circuit as well. And uh, we're going to be moving on now to the Orms Heisey Spitfire Furniture Sports and GT cars. It's a 100-kilometer uh, race. Uh, of course, it's a 30-lap uh, race. And, uh, well, that will be followed by the Bridgestone uh, Super Twin Cup and the uh, 300 Super Sport Motorcycles. Remember, three bike uh, categories today so that will be of course their next few races south superbikes and spk challenge just with the masters strata technology clubman classic and breakfast run motorcycles formula libres for their second race and then the uh, louder classic cars and bijou trusty fine cars to uh, be the penultimate race of the day and then the alert engine parts gti challenge rounding everything off in what is the third last race meeting of the power series uh, calendar as we now move into the latter part of the year remember we have in uh, two weeks time we have our extreme festival coming to uh, Cape Town something great to look forward to we also have next week we have uh, oval track racing we have uh, Cape Hell drivers and we have a uh, Witzenberg uh, Gymkhana as well so and mega oval our year as well so uh, short circuit on the karting circuits there we go, the four-hour Enduro. There we go. So there's a lot of stuff happening next weekend here. So uh, a place to be, I can say that much, uh, as far as uh, things are concerned with Kilani. So, uh, yeah, like I say, KPAL drivers, uh, short circuit racing on the karting circuit, Witzenberg Motor Club, uh, Jim Connor, and, of course, if you're not in this Cape Town, in the Cape Town area, you want to go out to Mega Oval, that's also a place to be as well. We've got a lot of oval racing going on uh, in the calendar nowadays here in the uh, Cape Peninsula and even outside just as well. So that will be coming up in the next uh, two weeks, all of that. 
like I say, the National coming up with the Extreme Festival. But uh, we will go off there for a short little while now and then uh, we'll wait for the uh, Ons Hasey 100. Well, the Ons Heisey 100, I think the fourth edition this year of this uh, race. And usually the Sports and GT cars would always do two 10 lappers in the day. But yeah, they're going to be doing a single race, a long distance race, 100 uh, kilometers. And only uh, yeah, eight of them out there, 33 laps. And uh, well, it's going to be Darby Bear. that will be the man on pole position class b in the porsche steve humble in his trusty opal malik out there sponsored by harp motorsport gary kiesvetter trusted porsche man a porsche man in the gt3 cup car there's a lotus exige out there as well philip boyson saw that one earlier on uh, in the qualifying sessions and uh, yeah henny bosman it was lovely to see Henny again as well. He didn't have everything his own way the last time, uh, Henny Bosman. So hopefully better luck for him here with the uh, Akio Kushin can. Uh, of course, Lotus uh, uh, 7, Mazda Rotary. Ray Farnham, always a good name. Two-liter Opel Birkin. 
7. Gavin Gorman in the VW Nardini. And then the Elf S06, of course, the uh, replica of the Lotus 23 sports car, still in Lotus colors, as well for Eric Salomon. And uh, then Andre Brink as well, also on the entry list here in the GT3 Cup Porsche. So only eight of them, or there's actually a few more joining, looks like it. So that's a good good news there. And a whole one more. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it looks like uh, there was initially 12, I think, uh, entered for the day. No, the no, day, no, there's about 10 of them out there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's 10 of them. You can count. So wow. I got, <laughs> yeah, but don't Thank tell you. me to go further than 10. I get lost. <laughs> well, you can use your toes for the, for the other 10. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. counting, not, <laughs> not our thing up there, Frankie. Yeah, Francis says 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mathematics is not our thing up here. Let me, can, I can tell no. you that much. Um, <laughs> very few things apart from racing are our thing, actually. True. Uh, but yeah, well, for those people around South Africa that uh, didn't watch the uh, Springboks versus the Wallabies, if you did watch it and you know the score, then I, if you haven't and you want to know the score, I'm going to tell you, if you don't want to hear, then uh, close your ears for the people around the racetrack. The uh, game is over between the Box and the Wallabies and after taking a hiding last weekend, the Box bounced back and they beat the Wallabies by 24 points to 3. So now the next game on will be the uh, All Blacks versus the Argentinians, the Los Pumas. And we'll give you that score as well the moment we get any confirmation on that one. So, as the uh, Spitfire Furniture Sports and GT Cars doing the Ons AC100 roll out of Fast Tron Corner Turn 5. The lights here on or at pit lane are on. And uh, they work their way out of Turn number 5 out of Fast Tron Corner. The uh, safety car, the Kia safety car pulls off into pit lane. And we are about to go 100 kilometers of a Spitfire Sports and GT car racing soon. The revs pick up, the lights go off, and now and away we go. As uh, it is Davi Uber that's uh, right in there on the inside of Steve Humble. Gary Kieswetter is there in that third position. And Stevie Humble just jogs around him on the outside. And uh, Humble puts the Malloc into a P1. And then the Porsches are lying second and third. That is Davi Hubert from Gary Kieswetter. Then Philip Boyson is there in that fourth position with the Lotus Exige. And those are the first four cars working their way through the King. Then Craig Harper is there in that fifth position, followed there by Gavin Gorman. And then Andre Brunk in that other Porsche is busy carving his way past those uh, Birkin 7s and the Lotus 7s. And then we've also got Eric Salomon that is in the house as well and eric at this point in time is the last guy out there on the circuit as uh, the leaders are now making their way down the back straight towards a turn five heading towards the end of lap one as they head down into fostron now we have none other than steve humble leading the way actually as well he started second on the grid but uh, now finds himself in the lead of this race uh, chased by a, a pair of porsches as they go now to the line Steve Humble also uh, campaigns an Opel Cadet in uh, the uh, Rallycross uh, section. But Steve Humble, you bear in uh, second position. Uh, remember, different classes here as well. Humble Class A, Joubert second overall, but leading uh, Class B. Kieswetter second in Class A, third overall. And then we have Boyson that comes up in that Lotus. The Lotus uh, of Boyson and then uh, Harper. Good to see uh, Craig Harper actually back in his uh, Harp uh, sports car. And uh, that is in fifth position, he's class X, because he's basically a new driver car combination. I see now a little bit down the field that Nardini in there as well of Gavin Gorman uh, in that section. It's a VW Nardini, and he will be uh, following suit to uh, the likes of Andre Brink as uh, Henny Bosman leads Eric Salomon through the kink. But uh, onto the back straight, Frankie, here comes our leader. Yeah, down the back mainly goes, and that is the Opel-powered Malloc of race leader Steve Humble, working his way out of Fastron Corner, out of Turn 5, and right in there behind him is the Rembrandt Racing and Walrose Gin Porsche 991, 
of Davi Hubert that sits there in that second position. Then behind him it's a Martini racing Porsche of Gary Kieswetter that is there in that uh, third position in the advanced packaging sub, uh, technology uh, Porsche of a key sweater. He does have the Martini Racing logo on that car though as uh, they head into turn number two. And those are the first three cars working their way out of a turn number two. Then heading towards turn two now is the Philip Boyson, the uh, Medea air conditioning Lotus Exige of Philip Boyson, a lovely looking uh, motor car of uh, Boyson's that uh, Lotus as he makes his way through the kink and races down towards interceptor corner. Then Andre Brunk is uh, the next man through in the Porsche GT3 Cup car. And then we have this lovely battle going on here. And it is um, Bosman, Salomon and uh, Farnham. Uh, they're busy making their way out of turn number three through the kink, racing down towards interceptor corner. But the leaders are coming out of turn five fast run. Well, Philip Boyson smoking a little bit uh, and also being alerted by the marshals as well that uh, there's burning some oil there. So uh, let's see as the, the race wears on. And he'll come now through the... Uh, uh, turn five section per Tamina Fastron. Here come the leaders now uh, into turn one. As you'll see, still humble, 1.7 seconds ahead of Joubert, and then Kiesvetter in third at the moment. I'll be watching that Lotus. The Lotus comes through now in fourth position, 9.2 seconds further back of Gary Kiesvetter's Porsche, and uh, then we have Brink that uh, holds there the fifth position. The Porsche comes through now. Now, just to take a look at the classes over here, Steve Humble leads Class A, Darby Hubert leads Class B, and uh, then f uh, f it will be uh, the Craig Harper, cl uh, Class X, that is in seventh at the moment. He leads Class X, the only car in Class X, and then leading Class D is Henny Bosman, and he'll be challenging, of course, Ray Farnham, that's in tenth position at the moment. Eric Salomon, the only Class C car. Yeah, but they're having a lovely fight to the two of them, or the three of them, as they work their way out of a turn number one. They might not be in the same class as the three of them as they head into turn two. And, uh, but it is Henny Bosman that sits there just ahead of Eric Salomon, followed there by Ray Farnham. And that's uh, the only real close dice out there as they work their way into turn number three, Fastron Corner, as... Uh, the leaders are heading into turn number one, and yeah, it's getting closer as a matter of fact, uh, Byron. It looks as if uh, Davi Uber is slowly but surely closing up onto the back end of the Malak of Humble as they work their way into turn two. Well, Davi Uber just putting the fastest lap of a 115.168 and has closed the gap to 1.4 seconds over Steve Humble. So it'll be lovely to actually see a nice uh, close battle between them. But the one you were also pointing out as well is the Henny Bosman versus Eric Salomon battle now as well. That's a rotary Lotus 7 and of course against the uh, Elf uh, S06, which has got a Toyota motor uh, in it. So what happens is that's going to be nice to see some close racing action over here. Here they come now across the line. And in fact, Eric Salomon has made his way ahead of uh, Henny Bosman. So Henny Bosman now will find himself in ninth position. And he's going to have a uh, Birkin 7 go right past him of Ray Farnham. So not having everything his own way is uh, Henny Bosman. Yeah, and he's lost two positions coming out of turn number one as uh, they, he sits now at the back of the field and this fight's now been blown wide open as uh, Eric Salomon leads it out of turn number two. So Eric Salomon is doing pretty damn well out there. Eric with the Elf S06 is a Salomon. So where are the leaders? Here they come out of turn number one, out of turn one, out of Holzuk they come, working their way up the Jaber straight into turn number two and uh, at this point in time, when they crossed the line, there was only 1.9 seconds between uh, Humble and Uber. That is there in that second position. And uh, between Uber and Kieswetter was 5.9, nearly 6 seconds between them. But that whole combination is now working its way out of turn 3, out of interceptor corner. Yeah, you see now, Frank, it was 1.4 between uh, Humble and Uber. Now it's gone to 1.9. Humble just put in the fastest lap of the race of a 115.015. He's responding uh, to the advances there of Joubert. So it just shows you could be a bit of a ding-dong battle. Maybe one will put in a quicker lap again and then respond to it. Let's see. It's still a long race to go. It says actually here that it's 16 laps left to go. So I don't know how the lap counting is working exactly on this 
this one. If they've decided to shorten the race, possibly, uh, we'll have to find out about that. But Kiesvetter, 5.9 seconds back off of uh, Joubert, second in class A. He is, of course, third position. And uh, Boyson is still well and truly out there. He was smoking a bit earlier on. I think the smoking has, uh, has uh, relieved itself there a little bit. And uh, I don't see really anything uh, alarming uh, coming around with that Lotus Exige. But I'm watching this little fight that's heading into turn number three. <clears throat> it's going to be a four-way fight uh, shortly. And it is the uh, Craig Harper outfit, the Harp Motorsport car, the Harp Type S, Harper Type 5, I should say, that is making its way out of turn number four and going down the back main. And right behind him, or closing up dramatically, is Eric Salomon. Uh, Ray Farnham and Henny Bosman. They are all in the same shot that you see there on your screens at home. Heading down into turn five. So it is uh, the three of them that's closing up onto the back end there of the Harper Type 5 sports car of Craig Harper. Gavin Gorman comes across the line now in the Nardini. VW powered, of course. And uh, he finds himself 14.6 seconds uh, off of Andre Brink. Here comes Craig Harper across the line. The only Class X entrant now as uh, Eric Salomon comes across the line. Ray Farnham also closing up the gap there. There are two separate classes. Eric Salomon, the only Class C entrant uh, in eighth position. Ray Farnham in Class D uh, is closing up the gap. Eight tenths of a second between the two of them as they cross the line now as well. Henny Bosman hanging in there in tenth position three seconds further back of Ray Farnham. Yeah, and that little combination has been caught there by your overall race leader, uh, Steve Humble, that works his way out of turn number one. He's now put a lap there on Henny Bosman, and catching Henny Bosman now is the Wild Rose Gin Porsche of Davi Hubert that sits there in that uh, second position. As a matter of fact, uh, Humble is going to put a lap there on uh, Farnham as well. And uh, then he will certainly uh, catch, uh, while well, he's right on the case of Eric Salomon going down the back straight. So Eric will be his next victim. Ooh. And then the Harper Type 5 sports car of Craig Harper. And he catches both of them before they go into Fastron Corner, Turn 5. Yeah, so 14 laps left to go. It looks like it on the uh, timing over here in front of us. Seven laps completed. Steve Humble still leads the way. He will now be completing what is his eighth lap of this race and uh, across the line he will then run 2.8 seconds it was the last time between himself and Darby Hubert it is now 3.1 seconds and the fastest lap time of a 114.913 uh, is his quickest lap uh, uh, 13 laps left to go Gary Kiesvetter comes across the line now 9.0 seconds back of Darby Hubert Philip Boyson We'll watch him. He locked up into turn two earlier on and it looks like it uh, Exige might be smoking a bit again Watch him as he comes over here now underneath the uh, city of Cape Town, Wingfield Motors Bridge. That bright red Exige, beautiful looking motor car, comes across the, the line now. And he has a much more smoke coming out of the back of that car. That's yeah. Well, we took a confirmation from uh, Emil Brunt of a tiny spit box that uh, that uh, Lotus Exige are full of boys and... Uh, is putting some uh, oil down on the circuit because there are st there's still a bit of smoke coming out that car as he works his way into turn number two and it is a beautiful motor car uh, i have to say but i agree with you that lotus exceeds of boys and it's a lovely lovely red color scheme as uh, i miss that just picks him up coming out of the uh, the kink working his way into interceptor corner yeah. but there was a bit of smoke coming out of it and the marshals have reported that to race control change of surface flag around the circuit so uh, circuit wide and unfortunately it might be a case where they'll have to bring that lotus in and uh, out of the race then as uh, there is a technical there's an orange and black flag i'm hearing now that is being held out and that will mean you'll have to report back to pits unfortunately yep. that race is run there for boyson yeah, known as the Japanese flag. Yeah, on the start-finish line, one of our officials will wait for that Lotus Exceed to come around. And then they'll give him that black flag with the round orange dot in the middle. We refer to it as a Japanese flag in motorsport terminology. That mean, Meatball that, flag to some people, that, actually. That means come into the pits. You, you're, not, you're not disqualified. You sort out your problem if you can, and then you can rejoin the race again.
if you can't, well, then that's the end of that for you. He has pulled in. I have. To, I can say uh, Tiny has informed me that Philip Boyson has come in. And I know how he feels because I did a kart racing event once uh, and uh, I was pulled in uh, because my back bumper came off and I had to get that flag. So very much it's uh, unfortunate and I don't think that problem is going to be sorted uh, anytime soon. No. So yes, unfortunately out of the race. That means that Brink will go up into fourth position. Andre Brink in his Porsche. And then Gavin Gorman will go up. Everybody will go one up now as there are 12 laps left to go. So having a look down the back straight, there's a lovely little fight going on there between, I think it's Henny Bosman, and it is Henny Bosman and Eric Salomon that's heading into five, and they are ahead there of Craig Hopper. So while we were concentrating, Byron, on that situation involving uh, Fulda Boyson, there's been a change out on the circuit uh, for those minor positions, and it is now... Uh, Henny Bosman that's ahead here of uh, Eric Salomon who's ahead there of uh, Craig Harper and they are making their way into turn number one, the three of them. Well, so that's some great run, running there from Eric Salomon as well. He's carving his way through the field. Craig Harper now finds himself in eighth position. Eric Salomon up in seventh position now. He's uh, back behind Henny Bosman again. Benny Bosman made himself uh, a place in sixth position. Gavin Gorman still holding on to fifth at the moment. I'm just taking a look at the gaps over here. Uh, Gorman, of course, is 5.8 seconds ahead of Bosman, uh, who in turn is 1.1 seconds ahead of Salomon at the moment. Salomon, I think could have something of a problem as well because he's falling back he was actually cutting through the field quite nicely and now Craig Harper goes on the outside of him now and takes that position right back to so the Harper Harper sports car type 6 or type 5 sorry uh, of Harper sports cars is now up into 7th position and have a look here at Henny Bosman Henny Bosman's having a lovely fight he gets past Gavin Gorman down the back main down the back straight, uh, Gavin Gorman gets overtaken there by Henny Bosman. Well, that's all chopping and changing out there with uh, Gavin Gorman in the Nardini sports car being overtaken there by Henny Bosman in the Lotus 7 with that Mazda rotary motor in it. Well, yeah, they come now around onto the uh, main straight as they do underneath the bridge, the city of Cape Town and... Uh, uh, Wingfield Motors uh, Bridge, a proud sponsor here of Kilani International Raceway. Henny Bosman, a real turn of pace here for him. He's onto the Jubair straight now. His next man, of course, ahead of him over there uh, will be Gary Kiesvetter. So now Gary Kiesvetter. Oh. Now, no ways he's going to catch up to Gary Kiesvetter. As a matter of fact, we've got a spinner. I just heard you, uh, spinner. Byron. Turn one, turn one spinner. Behind the karting building, I'll have to see who that actually is. Yeah, we can't see that car it's right behind kart race control, so it's difficult to pick up here from the main circuit commentary box. Yeah, coming around there's the Hopper Sports Car Type 5 coming through Interceptor now ahead of uh, Eric Salomon. Ray Farnham will be in that uh, vicinity as well. Actually, I haven't seen Ray Farnham as a matter of fact, and he would have been 33.725 uh, behind Eric Salomon. Gorman has spun. Okay, we found out now that the Nardini has spun it and is behind the uh, karting uh, building, the karting control tower. So uh, we can't see that, unfortunately. There's no cameras around the circuit that can pick that up either. So you're just going to have to take our word for it. Right, so where's our leader to just slow this all down? Uh, the leader's going into turn number three into Interceptor Corner, and that is the Opel-powered Malloc of Humble. We've got yellow flags safety down car. the main street. We've got a safety car that's been deployed. A safety car that has been deployed. Now let's have a look and see. Is it because of that motor car? Gorman's car is probably half on, half off the circuit. Getting confirmation here from Emil Brandt. Uh, Tiny, you got some more info here on the radar as to exactly what's going on. Yeah, Frankie, uh, um, Gorman's car had spun out there on the exit of turn one and uh, couldn't get the car started. Car's actually half on, half off the circuit. That's what they bring out. Uh, uh, full course yellow with the um, safety car just being deployed right now. So we'll catch up to the front runners and uh, get that situation sorted out as soon as possible. Well, that's uh, some news from uh, Emil Brandt of Tiny Spitbox. Uh, he's the man that's manning the radio and the binoculars and giving us all the information. So now with the safety car that's picked up the leader, Everybody should now bunch up behind that safety car again. That means Davi Hubert 
and Gary Kieswetter is going to be right on the tail there of Steve Humble with um, eight more laps to go. Yeah, neutralizes the race here, puts it into suspension. Uh, Frankie, no passing under the safety car, of course. Everybody will bunch up. Well, the uh, nine of them that are out there still. Remember, Boyson has pulled into the uh, pits and he's no longer a part of this race. Uh, but, uh, of course, it's uh, eight of them, I should rather say, because Gavin Gorman also uh, spun it out now. And uh, now the Kia safety car will take the field around Humble, who uh, leads from Joubert. Joubert leads, of course, Class B. Kieswetter in third position. Well, Gary Kieswetter should be um, getting a move on and getting past the uh, Ray Farnham car. And, uh, well, I don't... You see, this is a problem that Kieswetter is going to have because they all have to catch up onto the back end of the safety car that's uh, heading uh, down the back main with the Humble and Joubert in there behind him. So they're going to have to get a move on because the next two will be Farnham. That's uh, a lap down, at least one lap down. And then behind him on the lead lap is the Martini Racing Porsche of Gary Kieswetter. And uh, Gary would love to get his nose ahead of him and uh, join up onto the back of those cars that's working down into turn five. But there's nothing he can do. He cannot go past that uh, number nine Ray Farnham uh, Birkin 7, so he's going to have to hope that uh, Ray can catch up to that uh, those two cars very soon. Well, I just uh, was informed by uh, Emil Tiny Brunt here, our radio man, up in the commentary box that there's still a line of oil from turn 2 to turn 3, and the pace car has actually picked it up. Uh, so what happens is that's very interesting now I actually thought that possibly Nardini that Nardini spinning there of Gorman could have been as a result of the oil on the circuit and uh, of course that's quite a bit that was put down by that Lotus Exige of uh, Philip Boyson safety car in this lap I've heard as well so uh, he'll come around usually what happens is I know that the safety car will put the lights off and then pull into pit lane and then we'll be green flag racing once again well, everybody's caught up onto the back of the safety car with the exception of Eric Salomon. Uh, he can still catch them. They're only making their way into turn number two right now. And Eric is busy making his way through turn number one. He's working out of holes as the rest of them are working out of quarry corner. So he can catch up onto the back end there of Craig Harper before we go green once again. He will know that uh, he can do it. As uh, they work through, as he works his way through turn number two, you pick up there on your screens. There, this whole little train of uh, sports and GT cars. Well, look at that oil line, Byron, going through interceptor corner. That's turn three, and uh, sure, it's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough. Where is Eric Salomon? There he comes Eric Salomon. You see him on the top of your picture. So Eric has picked up that. Uh, a uh, Harper Type 5 uh, sports car of Craig Harper and now all of them are in line of stern as they head down the back straight. So once they go down the back straight that Kia safety car will pull into pit lane and uh, when they cross the line there'll be six laps left to go in this race and uh, well we've had uh, we had some good racing so far for some, uh, of course, down the field. Henny Bosman coming through nicely there as well in fourth position. Remember, that closes everything up there as well. And a sterling drive from many of them out there. Craig Harper as well in that uh, Class X uh, Harper Type 5 sports car. I remember many years ago he was tracing that as well when I even started commentating here at Kilani. So, uh, yeah, they come now, Frankie. They will... Uh, Get the, uh, the green flag as they cross the line. They can only start passing then as they cross the line. And already setting himself up for it. There goes the Porsche. I have a question. I have one question. Did that Porsche overtake just after that line or microscopically in front of that line? When I looked out the window, it was very, very close. And I think he realized that he might have overtaken before the line because Joubert has given that lead back it's to gonna Steve Humble. It's going to be reviewed, Frankie. It's going to be reviewed. Ah, so the officials picked that up as well. But I will say in uh, defense of Davi Joubert, uh, Byron, Davi did give that position back 
to Steve Humble. And he gave it back very quickly, yes. uh, Frankie. So I think he might just get away with that. Uh, it was the gentlemanly thing to do. And uh, while well, now the race continues, six laps left to go, including the one they're currently on. Down the back straight, they'll then run. There goes the Malik, the Opal Malik of Steve Humble, who's done so much winning this year and last year and a few years before as well. But, uh, well, in the pits is Ray Farnham. I'm just getting pointed out now. So Ray Farnham, who was seventh position, is going to be pulling out of this race. Looks like it. Only six cars left of the initial ten that started this race. So it's a bit of a race of attrition here, looks like it. Yeah, well, we've lost Boyson, we've lost Gorman, uh, Farnham, and we've also lost uh, the Andre Brink Porsche as well. It's uh, not out there anymore as the leaders make their way out of turn number one out of a quarry corner and uh, they motor up the Jaber straight towards turn number two and as you see them out there on your screen and on track for the spectators around the circuit it's Steve Humble that sits out there in P1 with Davi Hubert in that second position followed there by Gary Kieswetter and then there's a bit of a gap before we see Henny Bosman making his way into turn number two followed there by craig hopper and then the elf of eric salomon as uh, the three of them make their way out of turn number two quarry corner yeah it's uh, eric salomon is the uh, last car of the uh, active runners out there class c only man in class c as i say as well he's currently 3.7 seconds off of craig harper at this time craig harper in that fifth position but steve humble still leads the way a full second ahead of david Joubert, and then gary kiesvet uh, hanging on still eight seconds back uh, or actually seven seconds back off of Davi Hubert, eight off the lead. Henny Bosman is uh, also in there as well, coming across the line. Four laps left to go. It is the uh, Malik of uh, Steve Humble, followed by the Porsche of Joubert. Then we wait for Kiesvetter in that Martini livery uh, Porsche. Martini colors always go down quite nicely as well. doesn't matter what other base color there is. It's always lovely to see as well, yeah. And then there's a bit of a gap between himself and uh, Henny Bosman, who will be coming right now in that uh, Lotus 7. Uh, two and a half seconds between Humble and Hubert, and 10.6 between uh, Hubert and uh, Kieswetter. That's there in that third position. As uh, they work their way around the circuit, the leader is heading down towards turn number four. We have a look going down into turn number one here. There is uh, Craig Harper, and right behind him is Eric Salomon. We'll have a look, see, yeah. is he going to get past him? Is Harper going to pull away? Keep on pulling. The no, Harper slows down. Harper fire. slows right down on the Jaber straight. It was a misfire, Frankie. Loses that position there to Eric Salomon. Yeah, he was running only on three cylinders. I, was, uh, I had my headphones on, so I didn't hear him as he came past. But what happens is that is a misfire that's now going to maybe turn into a DNF as he slowly but uh, surely makes his way around. Four laps left to go before the flag comes out and it's unfortunate he was doing quite confidently there. Eric Salomon will go past him and take that fifth position but Craig Harper could be the next retirement in this particular race. Three more laps left as the leaders work their way out of turn number one and it is a Steve Humble that sits out there in P1 followed there by Davi Hubert. The two of them are working their way into turn number two and then that third place man is uh, Gary Kieswetter. He's now 14 seconds behind Davi Hubert. That's in that second position as the two leaders make their way down into turn number three and they've got two and a half laps left to go. Still earlier on, that 114.913 was the fastest lap by Steve Humble. Much more modest, 117.720 the last time around. He doesn't have to do any heroics over here. He's two and a half seconds ahead of Davi Hubert. As uh, now Henny Bosman holds that uh, fourth place. Eric Salomon will hold now fifth position. Craig Harper, Ray Farnham, Gavin Gorman, Andre Brink and Philip Boyston all out of the race over here as far as things are concerned. So half of the field that started uh, is now out of this uh, Ons Hacy 100. Sports and GT is uh, sponsored by uh, Spitfire Furniture and they're doing the Ons Hacy 100. As the leader comes around to start another lap. Followed there by second place man, that is uh, Steve Humble and uh, Davi Hubert. That's uh, making their way through turn number one. And there's a massive gap before we wait for the man that's in third position to come towards us now. That is the Porsche of uh, Gary Kieswetter. And his uh, sponsor is Advanced Packaging Technology. 
And he does have that Martini Racing livery on uh, that uh, Porsche GT3 Cup car as uh, he makes his way up the Jabez Strait into Quarry Corner, turn two. Yeah, so only one and a bit laps left to go. We wait for Henny Bosman now to uh, cross line. He's coming out of uh, Pertamina Fastron, Pertamina Fastron, uh, and he comes under the bridge now and uh, will hold fourth position in that number 90 Mazda Lotus 7, the rotary engine. And then Eric Salomon will be uh, the man coming up next across the line. Just a little bit of time back over there as uh, he is still in fifth position at the moment. As I actually speak, Craig Harper is still running in this race at the moment, so he's not out of it completely. I think he just wants to get to the end. It's going to be a bit of a struggle for him. He's going to be lapped again here by uh, the Opal Malik of uh, Steve Humble, who will now start his final lap of this race. Now, even with the headsets on, I can hear that that uh, Harper Type 5 car is not a happy <laughs> sports car at all as it makes its way out of turn number one but uh, he'll just want to nurse it to the chicken flag and say listen here i uh, won my class which is class x and i got to the chicken flag and i completed the onsa ac 100 so he can get the win in the three cylinder class as well so <laughs> i can tell you that much as well you know we can have a special class over there so yeah a very good valiant effort there from uh, the so man the himself. Check it, flag is out, uh, Byron, and we are waiting for the winner to uh, come around. And that will be Steve Humble in uh, the uh, Opal Powered Malloc. There he goes, down the back straight for the final time. Check it, flag is uh, ready for him as he heads into a uh, Fastron corner. That's a turn five. Through turn five, he comes, Byron. And victory will go to the Opel Malloc Mark 14B, driven by Stevie Humble. No, definitely. Wonderful driving there from Steve Humble. Check it flag, he does get. And, uh, well, Darby Hubert will be the man who will finish second. Four seconds behind Gary Kiesvetter. Well, he'll be coming around as well now to take that third position in class. And, uh, well, not third position in class, second position in class and uh, third uh, overall I should rather say here he comes now here comes uh oh there we go you can hear that coming past yeah. of uh, Steve <laughs> of, of, of Craig Harper there <laughs> not sounding happy at all he eh? made it to the end though that's what that's I'm going to tell you that's the most important thing he got thing. it to the checkered flag most would have given up he didn't well that's the first three cars across the line that is uh, Steve Humble Davi Uber, and um, Gary Kiesvetter and then any bossman is still out there he's making his way into turn number five into fast run corner is henny as uh, he brings that uh, lotus seven with that uh, rx uh, mazda motor in there out of uh, turn five out of fast run corner under the city of cape town bridge and he completes the onsa ac 100 Coming towards us now, the last man out on circuit, that is the elf of uh, Eric uh, Salomon. And uh, he will finish the Onsaisi 100. For those people that don't know, Eric Salomon is a chartered accountant out there in the Century City area here in Cape Town. And he loves his motorsport too, but so he is the last car across the line. So that completes the Spitfire Furniture Sports and GTs. On C 100.
Right, folks, uh, up here in the commentary box with me at the moment, uh, we've got uh, Ashley from uh, King Tony Tools. And uh, King Tony Tools, as far as I know, has been around for quite a while. Um, obviously, you guys are now marketing it more. Um, tell us a little bit about your product. How is it applied? What makes it so much better or more accessible than the other tools on the marketplace? Look, I think that King Tony has been, like for more than 35 years, it's been uh, supplying professional tools to the market and uh, they've been around for quite some, some time. They, they kind of like all over the world at the moment, you know, France, USA, uh, all, the, all, all the countries basically and in South Africa obviously um, it's growing and it's growing fast and it's it supplied professional tools, for, like I said, for 35 years and more. Um, yeah, and it's innovative. They've always they always come up with new things. There's a dozen. It, look, the motor industry changes um, day by day, and they just adapt to it. You know, yeah. So the base of King Tony is it an American product or is it a British product? Uh, look, the, the product is a Taiwanese product. Okay. Uh, they are they are based in Taiwan, and um, like we know, it, the Taiwanese they make make good tools. Their products are good. The metal is good. You know, yeah. All right. So, uh, and anything special about the, t the tool range? Because I look, I know the motor industry, especially, there's a lot of new little gadgets coming to the fore. Um, things are getting a bit nitpicky. They, live, you know, a lot of things are electronic and stuff like that. Do they have a range where they can be used in the electronic side of motor industry? Yeah, they've got quite a wide range. You know, with, like for instance, even like with the with the, the the new terminals and things that comes up with the, the new pliers, the new type of. Um, hose clamps that is on the motor vehicles um, like the v, the brand VW um, Ford and those all the all the, the brands that's up front um, like I said they're innovative it always change when when there's something that is needed in the market they obviously produce okay and then my, my next question that leads from that is why has King Tony suddenly gained the interest into Kalani and the motor racing fraternity <laughs> that's a that's a very good question look with these motor vehicles I think that's where tools are needed and I think it's the perfect place to start you know and I think these are the guys that are actually physically needing the things and I think that it can build uh, a way forward like you said all the things change and it becomes new and King Tony is innovative and I mean they've got 35 years uh, experience so they know what they're doing okay so um and uh, from a pricing perspective, how do they feature in the marketplace? Look, I think they, uh, in, when, when we're speaking pricing, I think they, they, they're quite uh, affordable for, I think, all markets. They, it's, it's, if you look at, I don't want to mention any other brand, but if you look at our competitors and things like that, they are very, very well priced. Okay, so in other words, what we can say to the people out there is that King Tony is a above average brand. For what I understand, they exceed the American uh, quality standards and we know that the Americans are very fussy so it then obviously speaks to the product that it is a good product and you say they are competitively priced so obviously we're looking at a at a brand or a product here that uh, is sort of what we can say accessible to the South African public 100% 100% yeah. and like you said the USA they are very fussy very picky and I think that it's it's because of the innovation that they obviously keeping themselves up in the ranks, you know. Well, it's good to have you guys on board. Thank you for joining us at Kalani. We always like to have a bit of new blood. And uh, hopefully we can possibly see you one day as a corporate sponsor at the track. Awesome, awesome. Sounds good, sounds uh, good. Great, lovely, Ashley. Thanks for joining us and we wish you all the best of luck with the trade going forward. No, thank you, man. Thank you. And thank you for, for giving us the opportunity, obviously, to join you guys and obviously come alongside. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Great stuff.
even better. We buy your car, we sell your car, we finance your car, we service your car. Through our Best Price for My Car app, we sell your car while you are driving it and return you much more money. And we can even rent you a car while we clear your credit score. Wingfield Motors and Best Price for My Car will keep you driving no matter what. Wingfield Motors is an authorized FSP. Here's to the hard workers, the steady, the strong, and the bold. For the brave, the courageous, and the dedicated, the honorable ones. For the builders, the fixers, and the makers who go beyond measure. So the ones they love have all they deserve. Interceptor. Great comfort. Better safety. The Porsche Club in Cape Town has its home right here at Kulani. In fact, it's the only Porsche Club in the world to have a clubhouse and an international racetrack. We are proud sponsors of Kulani and the Porsche Club straight. Our passionate club members and their families regularly attend our race meetings. If you own a Porsche, come and visit us at the Porsche Club and we will let you know what fantastic events we have on offer. The Porsche Club, the best car club in Cape Town. Right, I want to say a big thanks to uh, all our other sponsors as well. Uh, Pertamina Fostron, the uh, city of Cape Town, and uh, of course uh, King Tony Tools, they are the sponsor of the subway. And then I want to just say hello to a young lady that uh, sent me a messenger here, yeah, or message here on messenger, and that's to Nicole Briet. To Nicole, hi, thanks for watching the production at home and uh, she says she's enjoying the racing uh, thoroughly and uh, she says i must say hi from her side to everybody here in the commentary box and uh, she says uh, that she's enjoying it and uh, yeah we, we, we were talking about the all black game a bit earlier on um, guys um, that game was the opening game before the australia versus the spring box and uh, well unfortunately the um, Argentinians weren't that happy or that lucky this time around. They remember last weekend they beat the All Blacks. This time they did not beat the All Blacks. They lost 53 points to three to the <laughs> New Zealand All Blacks. So yeah, um, I think a lot of us was hoping that uh, Los Pumas would uh, win that one. But yeah, it uh, went to the New Zealand All Blacks and thanks to Nicole as well for sending me the results there on that one.
Right, for the folks that are around the circuit and the people that are watching at home, there is a delay, which you would have noticed by now. They are just cleaning up oil, the WPMC marshals. It was an oil spillage from what we believe was from the uh, Philip Boyce and Notice Exige. And uh, they're just sorting that out. And there's also a change in the program as well. We're going to be doing the Formula Libre single seaters first. For those people at home, you can see the Kelly Fletcher car is busy rolling down the uh, pit lane. And then after that, we will move into the three motorcycle races. So there is a slight change in the program due to the oil that's being cleaned up on the circuit. Instead of the three bike races and then the Libras, we'll have the Libras, the three bike races, then the Classic and Fines, and we'll end the day off with the GTI Challenge. Right, Formula Libre single seaters working their way out onto the circuit for their second race of the event. And the question is <clears throat> who's going to catch uh, Byron Mitchell? Right now, nobody. He uh, lapped everybody up until about P4, P5, um, P5, P4 in uh, race number one. And I suspect he's going to be doing exactly the same again. Did you say before P5 or P5 before? <laughs> <laughs> you had me confused there. I was trying to work the one out. Okay. I, got, I got myself confused <laughs> there as well. A whole tongue twister. <laughs> Lovely. We've got to have some fun up here. Otherwise, we'll go totally off our nutter. Yes, Formula Libre. Great well, idea. Well, we're not normal. We shout at cars and bikes, so we can't be normal. Uh, it's better than barking at the postman. Mm, I can this is true. Much, uh, <laughs> because the last time I barked at the postman, he threw a stone at me. <laughs> <laughs> Byron Mitchell, actually untouchable. Look at that time he set up in the first hitter. One minute, 10.7, and that was in yeah. wet conditions. Sure. No, that is absolutely blindingly quick. This youngster really peddling that uh, um, ran out around the uh, circuit, that Formula VW. DJ Boyson coming in at a 115. James Beaumont, a 121. Storm Landfield, also 121. Um, Hayden Alwood, uh, he's doing pretty well out there. Alroy Vice had a great race there with... Uh, the likes of um, Andre Lerich and company, Darren Limberg in the uh, Formula M, that uh, Yamaha powered 600, absolutely flying around the circuit. Zayn Minson, well, he did a right. Rainer Pence and Kelly Fletcher were embroiled in their own little battle. Damien White had a bit of a mechanical issue going. Hopefully that's been sorted out. Uh, ben Jack Phillips, well, he was a bit slow towards the end. Graham Knight, Nick Van Avestes, and then Donovan Ramsey, Luan Van Yeden, and Van Ante Ridder should all be out there so uh, like you guys were saying earlier you and byron is that uh formula libre have done wonders to get the fields together that they have yeah now. and there's a lot of people that want to partake in there and there are a lot of people still outstanding in this uh, field that we know partake in uh, formula libre as well it's a lovely stepping stone from the guys from the karting circuit to get into uh, main circuit racing uh, they can start off with the formula v's and then move up and then eventually do clubman's or gti challenge and then leapfrog into the the national championships yeah but so that all cost money of course yeah no no we know that but the formula look if you can afford karting you can afford libras hell yes i think this is cheaper than, much, than much karting cheaper. for sure yeah i know definitely but uh, nonetheless um some great names out there uh, having a look here as dj boyson rolls up there um then uh, Byron Mitchell, Mobile Mag Repairs there. Storm Lanfear in the RDSA car. Now, Storm has been out karting in, in DD2s and Senior Maxes. Mm. And let me tell you something. This man is getting stupendously quick. He's constantly on the podium. And uh, he's challenging some of the biggest names in the country at the moment. Right. So, as they move into position, they're going to put him there in P4 for... RDSA, which stands for Race Driver SA, and James Beaumont, 
will move there into that uh, third position. He is out there in Class A. The two cars on the front row of the grid is Class S. That's uh, Byron Mitchell and uh, DJ Boyson. Then I see P5 is open. Then Elroy Weiss is the man that's in pole position for uh, the Libras. And then uh, Andre Lerich and uh, Darren Liebenberg. Zayna Manson is in there. And then the Class B, Formula GTI single seater, Francois of, uh, of Damon White. Yeah, now they remember those Formula GTIs were, were the thing back in the day, the likes of uh, our bad Malcolm and all of them used to ride there, but the Wiberskis. But we understand his orders, they're about to get off the line and uh, getting a cracking start there is uh, going to be Byron Mitchell and uh, he's hanging up on the inside there of DJ Boyson, gets the hammer down. Now listen, it's now dry out there. I think we're in for some fancy sort of entertainment if i can use that byron mitchell hurtling around the circuit he'll wait for a bit of heat to get in those tires and he's going to get cracking um having a look there storm lanfear up into third james beaumont fourth uh, andre larish is up there alroy vice they're all uh, get cracking on through the king as they make their way down into the scepter corner yeah through the scepter corner they go working the way up the uh, tiger book straight into turn number four and it's Byron Mitchell from DJ Boyson. Those are your two Class S cars. And uh, he was doing a 110 in the opening race of the day was Byron Mitchell. He could even do a 109 here. Yeah, it's possible. But look at DJ Boyson not letting him get away at this point in time. Uh, Beaumont, uh, there's a Beaumont daddy, Storm Lanfear. And they're not too far behind him. In fourth position is Beaumont. And right behind him is the Formula V leader. And that is Andre Lariche. Andre Lariche also has been doing fantastically well in karting and he's bringing that form back to the main circuit so good to have him out there. Um, having a look there's a lovely tussle gang there into uh, Bertamina Foster and there's a whole gaggle of cars in there including the likes of uh, Kelly Fletcher, Rano Pence, Damian White, Benjek, Felix, Graham Knight. They're all in there as they make their way now out uh, of turn number five up the main straight and cars stepping out to make uh, their way through. Now we're looking at two, maybe three cars going to turn one. It's not going to happen down in the holes. They work their way through. And uh, it looks like uh, our advice has got through there. Kelly Fletcher's in there as well. And now making their way up to UBS straight towards Quarry Corner. But look at that whole gaggle of cars, Frankie. Yeah, they're fighting that uh, for that second and third position going into turn number two. Remember that Andre Lariche uh, leads uh, this class. Rhino Penn sits there in that second place. Then it's uh, Zayna Munson. Then behind a month, and it's Elroy Weiss. Uh, Kelly Fletcher's in there. And then we've also got uh, Darren Liebenberg in the Formula M car that is right amongst them. Just to name a few, I think Graham White too is out there. Ahmed oh, Graham White, uh, and, yeah, Graham Knight. He's in Class C, but he's also involved in that battle heading out of Turn 4. Uh, joining them, Donovan Ramsey, but already your leader makes his way up over the line, down into holes. Uh, and uh, that's Byron Mitchell. Let's have a look at 1 minute 12 as he does a sighting lap and that's already stupendously fast because he's already turning up the wick and he's pulling away from DJ Boyson. He makes his way down into uh, Quarry Corner, does your leader and uh, already turning the uh, tap open and uh, on your television screen the, the battle down there in the uh, Formula Vs and uh, some of the Class C cars and I tell you what, Alroy Vice, Kelly Fletcher moving up with Darren Liebenberg up behind her. You see them all go over the line down into turn number one. This is an absolute spectacle between these cars and like we said, a great field coming out of the Formula Libras now, making it exciting for the uh, viewers. So uh, keep an eye on that as they all work their way now up towards uh, Quarry Corner. Yeah, into turn two, Quarry Corner and it has been led there. This battle has been led there by Andre Lariche. Then amundsen has gone up into that second position, followed there by Rayno Pence. Elroy Weiss is right in there as well. No, it's not Elroy Weiss. It is Elroy Weiss. And then behind Elroy Weiss is uh, Darren Liebenberg in that uh, Formula M car. This whole trainer car is working out of uh, turn three, out of interceptor corner, going up the hill as uh, they work their way into turn number four. Then uh, we've got, uh, well, White is in there as well. He's the last car. Uh, coming down out of turn number four and he is actually sitting out there just uh, behind Kelly Fletcher as they go down the back straight but of course uh, 
He is the only man that's there in Class C and he's tucked in there just behind Fletcher as this whole group of cars work their way out of Fast Run Turn 5. As they go down into Turn 5, believe it or not, coming out of Turn 4 is your race leader, Byron Mitchell. And uh, he's turning up the wick. He's already done a 1 minute 11. He's dropped a full second of his previous lap and he is absolutely hurtling down to Pertima, Pertima uh, Fast Run Corner. Uh, well, it won't be too long and he'll start catching the V's and working his way through the traffic. So uh, he's got another flying lap and uh, he's turning up the wick. He's not holding back. He's not worried about traffic. He blitzes around the outside under the city of Cape Town Bridge up towards the line. He crosses the line. He does a 1 minute 10.8. So uh, I said you're in for a little bit of entertainment. Well, talking about entertainment, that's a whole lot of entertainment that's working its way out of turn number two through the kink into turn three, interceptor corner. And that entertainment has been led there by Andre Lariche. Andre Lariche leads them out there with Zayna Munson in that uh, second position. And then behind a Munson, is that... Uh, no, it's not. It's Alroy Weiss. I thought it can't possibly be Liebenberg. It is Alroy Weiss that sits there. It is indeed Alroy Weiss. That's out there. Then behind Elroy Weiss, there is Rainer Pence. Then it is Graham Knight. Behind Knight, it is Darren Liebenberg, Kelly Fletcher. And then Damon White came down the back main. And here comes your leader. Now, he's going to pick up this group of cars heading into turn five. Not exactly where Byron Mitchell wanted to pick this group up. But yeah, he's going to catch them at a very awkward place. Yeah, he's got um, the likes there of... Uh Looks like it could be uh, Graham Knight ahead of him. Uh, but yeah, he's going to try and work his way through. And they're all embroiled in their own battle. And here he comes up, up on their inside. Um, he's probably going to get there in front of Darren Liebenberg. And he hangs up on the inside. Some of the cars on the outside slowing his lap down. He won't be too happy about that. He goes around the outside of one of the other cars there. That's Graham Knight. Now he makes his way up. He's going to be chasing Zayna Munson and Elroy Weiss. They're embroiled in their own battle and they're going to be seeing blue flags and they're not going to know who the heck is behind them. So he's just going to work his way past them at an absolutely alarming rate through the king down into Deceptor Corner. Well, that was lovely clean overtaking there by your overall race leader, Byron Mitchell. He's got uh, under Larish uh, in his sights now. This won't last long. Bang! Through on the inside, heading into turn four. And he's overtaken a whole damn lot of them. Uh, within uh, what just uh, over a half a lap down the back main he goes all on his own the race leader so he's literally uh, caught everybody up until p5 and it's only the first it's only beaumont lanfear and uh, the man in second place boyson that mitchell has not caught yet oh byron mitchell's absolutely murdering it's already posted a one minute 10.767 he crosses the line now we don't get a better time out of him but he was held up by traffic nonetheless still got four laps in it he's busy with his uh, fourth last lap he's uh, through the halfway mark of this one and uh, works his way now up the UB straight towards quarry corner as that whole field of cars on screen comes down into uh, turn number one holes and there's lots happening there with uh, the likes of DJ Boyson coming through the traffic and he has to work his way through while they still have their own little squabble yeah, we have to keep an eye on this one. Never mind DJ. He's now carving his way through this um, uh, Formula V category. He sits uh, second overall in class and in the race. But uh, leading the uh, Formula Vs is uh, the number 18 car of Andre Lariche making his way up the Jaber straight towards a turn number four. Then he has got Elroy Weiss not too far behind him. Weiss has been hassled there by uh, Zayna Munson as uh, they head out of turn number four down the back main then behind the two of them we've got uh, Graham Knight he sits out in his own class then uh, the Formula M of Darren Liebenberg uh, Kelly Fletcher Reino Pence and right on the case of Reino Pence is the Formula GTI single seater of Damian White well that man Byron Mitchell posting a one minute ten point zero six four as he just blitzes up uh, there past the likes of uh, James Beaumont, who's down in uh, P4. So he's going in search now of the likes of Storm Lanfear. He's doing a sterling job. Storm Lanfear is 26 seconds ahead there of uh, James Beaumont. But with three laps to go, and the way that uh, Byron, Middle Byron Mitchell is pedaling around the circuit, 
I can tell you something, if he gets a good lap, he's going to go sub 110, and that's going to be very exciting. Wow, look at this fight heading towards turn number two. It is uh, Zayna Munson and uh, Elroy Weiss are still going one-on-one -on -one into Quarry Corner. Behind them, we've got the class uh, uh, C runner, and that is uh, the Formula Ford of uh, Graham Knight. But I'll tell you this for nothing. It is a lovely fight, and have a look at this. Munson is covering the line, coming out of turn number three. He's uh, keeping Elroy Weiss in there behind him. They're not going to worry too much about the Class C car. It's a lot quicker car than uh, Formula Ford of Graham Knight. But it's a lovely fight for second and third position in a Class uh, Formula V going down the back main. And that is the one there between Zayna Munson and Elroy Weiss. They're having a good scrap. Just a little bit way up in the road there is Andre Lariche. He's doing a sterling job. Fifth overall on the board. Posting 1 minute 25s, he leads out the V section over Zayna Munson with Alroy Weiss. Then up behind them, it's uh, Reino Pence, Damian White, Kelly Fletcher, Nick van der Westhuis, and Donovan Ramsey, Luan van Eerden, and Vaynant de Ridder, and then Ben Jack Phillips. Hayden Elwood down in, uh, while well, he's on his uh, DNF. So Hayden Elwood and Ben Jack Phillips not on the circuit. And uh, listen to that uh, scream there of. Uh, the car of Darren Liebenberg, that Yamaha 600, absolutely screaming down into turn number one. Lovely to listen to. As you see on picture, the car's coming up to Quarry Corner, up to your bare straight. There's Andre Lariche up behind him now. It's uh, Alroy Weiss, and uh, Munson has gone back two places. And uh, he's going to have to fight, and Weiss is going to be rubbing his hands together with glee. Well, the leader comes around to start. He's a last lap, and that is Byron Mitchell. He's got a PB and the quickest lap of 110.064. Can he still make a high 109 on the last lap? I doubt that very much as he makes his way out of turn two. So this is the last lap. The leader working his way out of turn number two through the kink. Racing down towards turn three interceptor corner. And when he crossed the line, he was 23.2 seconds ahead of DJ Boyson. That is in that second position as uh, the race leader will now be making his way down the back straight. We'll pick him up shortly. There he goes, down the back main, and he's now starting his final sector as he races down Francois towards turn five, Fostron corner. Kelly Fletcher, his uh, better half stays out the way as he flies down into Pertamina Fostron corner. Yeah, coming up towards us now is... Uh, Rainer Pence there with Graham Knight and then uh, that man uh, Storm Lanfear crossing line. But here comes your race winner. Check it flag time goes to Byron Mitchell and his best lap for the day, 1 minute 10.064. Kelly Fletcher crosses the line, feeling somewhat dejected down in about uh, 12th position and uh, possibly in 4th position there for the Formula Vs. So uh, she won't be too happy about that. So here comes James Beaumont across the line, and right behind him is uh, DJ Boyson. Beaumont uh, will finish first in Class A, DJ will finish second in uh, Class S, and then we're still waiting for the final drive in Class S to come towards us, and that will be uh, Storm Lanfear. But here comes uh, this Zayna Munson. No, it's not a Munson. That is. Uh, Luan van Heerden that crosses the line. He's a good couple of laps down as we wait for the rest of the field to come down towards the checkered flag. Well, yeah, coming towards us now, Andre Lariche. He leads out the uh, V class. Up behind him is uh, Graham Knight. Graham Knight in the uh, Formula Ford. Then it's going to be uh, our vice head of Santa Munson. Then uh, it's going to be Darren Liebenberg. Then up behind him here is going to be Storm Lanfear, Reino Pence, Graham Knight. And uh, having a look there, the rest of the cars coming through. So uh, quite an exciting race mid-pack there, Frankie. Yeah, and that mid-pack uh, consisted mainly of um, Formula Vs and uh, with uh, basically... Um, uh, well, White was about the only one that uh, got lost in between all those Formula Vs. He races in Class B, and he's in the Formula Ray, the Draken Racing uh, for, uh, uh, Formula Ray. And he was in there with those, uh, basically with those Formula 
V's. But yeah, I had a lot of fun out there because he's the only one that is out there in Class B. So he came first, second, third and last in that class. But uh, as you're saying there, Francois, lovely dicing out there in that Formula V category. And it was uh, won by La Riche and uh, from Weiss and Amundsen, second and third. But uh, between La Riche and Weiss was the Formula Ford of uh, Graham Knight that was running out there in Class C. And now had an Albert out there in, in this one. Darren Liebenberg, what a lovely sounding 600cc Formula M motor car. It sounded so sweet when it came past us. But uh, yeah, well done to the Formula Libras. And uh, 18 cars for this race, of which 16 made it to the checkered flag. Albert and Phillips did not come out for the second race. So Formula Libra, well done. I salute you guys. You're picking up very, very nicely in your numbers. Well, we've had a change in program. Of course, uh, we had now the Formula Libra race uh, instead of the uh, bikes coming out, but we're going to have the Lauda Classic and Bijou Trusty Fine Cars coming out now. And Roger, oh, sorry, uh, Franco Donadio out uh, on the circuit in the escort. I see Eric van der Merwe and his 944 Turbo. He's joined the circuit. Charles Hart and the RX2 Capella coming out onto the circuit as well. Class X, new driver car combination class. Uh, Byron, can I add something there? I spoke to Michael Hitchcock on the luncheon break. He apparently never had second and third gear in heat number one. So All right. I hope uh, they've sorted it, yeah. pull a gearbox and sort out second and third gear. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully that, that might alleviate the problem and see what comes of that. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, like we say, a couple of new people out there. Coming to the fore. Yeah, there's uh, Kerry Blows as well, which uh, I spoke is to Kerry. Mm -hmm. I saw him at lunchtime as well. He's very excited to have the uh, 240Z. Yeah, he's enjoying that. Yeah, he's enjoying that absolute, absolute fun. He says lots of uh, easy power underfoot. Yeah, so it's of course him and Charles Arton that share class X. Charles Arton used to be driving that car, and uh, now he is in that uh, Capella. But um, I always love this eclectic bunch of cars out there as well. We had um, Louis Powell coming back in uh, his uh, Meisner. Uh, Ford Escort Mark 1, uh, Honeywell's out there in uh, Class uh, A as well, in his uh, Porsche 944 in the Golf Colors. Uh, going a little bit further down, you don't forget about the Toyotas, Avon Taplin, Bruce Avon Taplin, Class B uh, campaigner, uh, Ferdy Mouton and his uh, Mustang, one of two Mustangs out there, Michael Hitchcock, as on the screen is Mel Carstens comes past in his uh, Ford Cortina. Handful of escorts always out there. Lane Hutchings coming past our position or coming past the screen now through turn four. And his father following him as well. So that's the Mark II uh, Golf uh, followed by the Sirocco. It's Conradi in his Conquest. Then the Alpha Julia of Neil Mouton. Ben Jack Phillips. 
131 Fiat, reminiscent of the Alitalia or the Alitalia colors that he's running, of course, from the old rallying days in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. And then the fine cars as well, where you have a pair of uh, Skylines, the GTX and the GLS. So it's a pairing of them, a four door and a two door. Yeah, it's, um, it, you know, it sort of reminds me, it's something quite biblical. We know mo in bad motor racing in biblical times, Moses came forth in his triumph. And now Conradi is uh, coming first in his conquest, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> it's a conquest. It's it's a, a, it's, yeah, what a conquest. It's a conquest, yeah. It's and not just a drive, it's actual conquest. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> and what happens is it's great to see the Toyotas out there as well. No, the Toyotas, Toyotas always been part of all kinds of racing here in South Africa. Yeah. Toyota is a. Uh, Rallying, especially yeah, as well. It's a stalwart uh, manufacturer in South Africa, it's a go to manufacturer. Um, the likes of VW, Toyota, Ford, BMW, Mercedes. Nissan. I think those are the go-tos. I know we have a couple of others here now that have uh, sort of established themselves over the years, but those were always the go-to manufacturers. And they always have their names, uh, you know, their drivers who have been associated with them. You go back in the past, any van der Linde you always knew was going to be Skyline. Uh, yep. uh, you know, Hannes Schrobler, not only on the rally stage, but also in the uh, on the circuit as well. And also, Sir, big Sir one for Stamsa Nissan. was a Toyota. Sorrel van der Meever was a Ford. And so it goes on. Everyone was sort of affiliated to a brand well you go way back though uh, uh you would rather have you uh, put him search damn so as an alpha man oh yes of course a big alpha maniac uh, yeah uh, the man of course he's more associated with uh, toyota because of all those rally wins and uh, yeah. he was i remember in the the uh, xr8s as well in the in the 80s in group one racing yep yep he was in, and in then Ford. i know he also had a toyota celica that he also rode in so he got back to the toyota brand toyota's always uh, been very close to Serge them so well you see that four-wheel drive uh, conquest of course in the late 80s yep. uh, as well that mid-engined yeah. Toyota which uh, is a lovely machine only very few pictures on the web of that particular motor car right so the uh, classics and the fines are lining up behind the pace car the pace car pulls off so we'll go uh, racing pretty shortly they've got nine laps and uh, I think we're in for a little bit of uh, fun and games. I only see now Roger Lewis in that MGA, that red MGA that is in the fine cars class, Piri Piri Racing. There we go. That's his sponsor over here. So that's Piri Piri Racing, not Piri Piri. If you want to get a bit hungry it's over there. Piri Piri. Piri Piri. Whatever that is, I don't know. Should, we should find out though, Byron. We, we should actually. Uh, and uh, maybe... Not uh, too long from now, we can have a chat with him, but uh, the uh, Skylines, I was just taking a look in there as well. Yesterday's heroes, Theo Klaassen. And uh, yeah, there we go, uh, Theo Klaassen, yesterday's heroes. Techno Parts, WPMX MX5 Club of Robert Toscano, of course, a former champion uh, in the Fine Cars class as well. That's the Fine Cars, but the field gets led off uh, by the mighty Pinto uh, engined uh, Ford Escort Mark 1. Uh, look at that Porsche Turbo in there as well, front engine Porsche. There's Michael Hitchcock, as you say, Francois. Hope he's gotten those gearbox uh, issues uh, sorted out because he has got Trevor Momberg and uh, Dave Aladef for company there. Dave Aladef in the BMW. There's more Porsches in that section. So a good gaggle of wonderful racing cars coming around you. One of my favorite classes of the day is the uh, louder uh, classic cars and of course the Bijou Trusty fine cars. And and as it goes, I mean, this is a class where you can literally go and buy any car and just come put it in. Look right now we've got Clubman's, which aren't here today, um, but they, Clubman's is a little bit more modern in terms of the technology. And uh, the classic cars are, uh, cars of yesteryear <coughs> that have sort of brought, brought to the back to their full glory and put back onto racing. Well, yeah, a little bit of modern uh, bits here and there, but nonetheless, still pretty much in the original form that they were back in the day. Well, they'll go about down the back straight now, going gingerly behind the safety car, the Kia safety car that will pull off into pit lane as they come out of uh, the turn five per Tamina fast Tron section. It's nine racing laps uh, that will lie ahead. And remember, split over a number of classes. Class A is Donadio on pole position. Class X is Arton on uh, the pole position. Hutchings, of course, Lane Hutchings, is the man that will be on pole in uh, Class C. Class E, only two of them out there. It is uh, Vainant now, and, of course, Mouton in the Alfa Romeo in that section as well. Class F, we have a number of them out there. Rowe, Hurst, and Carstens. Rowe in the BMW 2002. Hurst in the Datsun and Carson's in his uh, Cortina 
and then of course the fine cars. Theo Klaassen will be leading them away in that particular class. Watch out for the lights though now. There is one on their right hand side, a solitary light, followed there by of these five red lights. All of them will go out and will be racing here for their second race for the classic and fine cars. Waiting for it. When they're going to be letting go and it is now that we have it going. Who's going to get that whole shot? It is most likely going to be the man in that uh, escort uh, who's Franco Donadio. Donadio will be followed by Eric van der Merwe in second position. Michael Hitchcock will hold third for now. Trevor Momberg in fourth and they're losing the back end front row and behind the karting building is dancing Dave Aladef in that BMW. Unfortunate there. Well, Dave will have to try and bring it back. He's uh, <clears throat> seems like he's gone off, and I'm not picking him up. Looks like Benjack Phillips is also slowed down. Benjack Phillips is slowed down. Have a look at the fine cars. They're trying to. There we go. With Dave Aladef now brings his way back up. He's uh, got himself going again. He won't be too happy that Theo Klaassen now going into uh, Quarry Corner. Oh, the Skyline's alongside, locking up there, and uh, having a look going inside is. Uh, Going to be trying to pick him up there in the sunlight is the uh, Mazda of Toscana. Toscana's in there now with uh, Dave Aladef now. Gets stuck in the fine car, so he's going to work his way all up to the Classics. The Classics will make their way down towards Turn 5. Well, I see Michael Hitchcock finds himself in fourth position at the moment. Uh, Trevor Momberg is uh, right ahead of him now. Trevor Momberg in third position uh, in class. And Eric van der Maver still holding second position for now. They'll be coming up towards the uh, city of Cape Town Bridge, Wingfield Motors, and will start their next lap. That'll be, of course, one of nine down. And a look already at the gap between uh, Franco Donati and Eric van der Maver as they cross the line now 3.9 seconds it is now going to be a challenge then from behind uh, Hitchcock as it is going to be that golf colored Porsche of Andrew Honeywell and then nose to tail it is Charles Arton in the RX2 and uh, then with him as well it is the Meissner escort of Louis Powell and Louis Powell had a little bit of a few things in the first race that didn't go his way hopefully the second race he gets more into his groove now this might allow the field behind them to start closing up Bruce Avon Taplin who currently leads class B at this time right ahead there of Ferdi Mouton in that Mustang in the fine cars here, class who leads out Robert Escano. Manuel sits there in third place. Then Alton Hurst down in fourth as they work their way now into uh, turn number two, Quarry Corner. Just keeping an eye on them as they work their way through there. The little uh, Datsun making its way through. Um, so there's all happening out there. The Datsun off a little bit further back. Jan Furry also a bit further back. They work their way now through Quarry Corner. But uh, your, on your screen, that is the uh, classic cars down the back straight on their way to Pertamina Fostron. Here comes Donadio, will complete uh, his second lap, seven laps left to go under the bridge. And last time out was 3.9 seconds between himself and uh, the uh, turbocharged 944. Here we go now with the uh, 944 coming across the line. Van der Maver is now going to be 6.5 seconds ahead. Momberg should cross the line now ahead there of Hitchcock. Hitchcock under pressure though from Honeywell. Only a half a second between them as they cross the line. A little bit more daylight now between uh, the Arton and Powell battle. Arton leads class x powell is sixth position in class a they are 3.9 seconds ahead of bruce avon taplin who's ahead of matomba half a second and kerry blows second in the uh, class x there in the top 10 then we have the hutchings of course that is class c they are uh, basically a second between the two of them i think a nice little scrap going on going into quarry corner now is bruce avon taplin in the 69 corolla up ahead of 30 mat on in that big V8 Mustang and I think Ferdy must be kicking himself that he can't get past a guy like Bruce Evan Taplin. Well, it looks like, yeah, uh, as we look through turn three, Francois, it is the uh, Mazda of uh, Charles Arton has gotten ahead of Michael Hitchcock. So Michael Hitchcock really struggling out there. He's got now Louis Powell uh, behind him there. So uh, it looks like you probably have a fact that he didn't get that gearbox sorted out from race one. He's probably running in about fourth and fifth gear around the circuit. So when he's in fourth, he's got to wait till the revs pick up and then he gets a bit of drive. But uh, what it's doing through the twisty bits is let everyone get escalate onto him and uh, they're getting to get past him on that one. So uh, we see him coming out of uh, Pertamina Fostron. There you see him now with uh, Louis Powell up behind him. Louis gets good drive coming out the corner, sits up behind him, will try and draft him. Watch when he comes under the Cape Town Bridge. He will start getting some drive again and pulls away. 
So it's definitely a gearbox issue. Yeah, he's going to really labour it out of the corners there. I can tell you that much. Yeah, now they go into uh, turn one. Uh, of course, holes hook. You'll see them as they come out now. And this is where probably Louis, D, uh, Louis Powell will come up again over there as well. But it actually looks like it. He's gotten a bit of daylight between himself and Louis Powell. He's actually started to close up the gap there uh, to uh, the Capilla ahead of him of Charles Arton. So maybe not uh, all hope lost yet uh, for Hitchcock. <coughs> maybe just trying to find a little bit of a rhythm in the gear that he's in. Maybe third gear, trying to make it work and not slam it down into second. And uh, maybe he's going to of flow and if he gets it right well he'll get the drive going back to four and five um, there's a lot of muscle under the hood there so he can uh, rely on all eight of those uh, cylinders to come to the four but Frank and Anadio are absolutely blindingly quick. Well, the fastest lap of the race are 122.963 for Franco Donadio. I see the Ford Escort of Hermann de Kock on the Jubé straight is slowing down. Everybody is passing him. I see the Alfa Romeo there of Neil Mouton has done so. All the fine cars has done as well. And uh, he will be caught now soon by uh, Melt Carstens and that uh, 928 there of Kunrat Matia. So uh, probably uh, a problem. You'll probably see him get off the circuit fairly shortly. Well, in the uh, fine cars here, Klaas and Rieser, Robert Escarno, then it's Manuel, then Maton, and then Malt Carstens, and uh, Kurnat Batia uh, working their way through. That is your fine car category. A little bit further back is uh, Natasha Tissendorf and Joan Faree. They're working their way through. So uh, the ladies in the house, Ooh. and uh, they're uh, having a bit of fun. Uh, well, there's a lot of smoke being uh, coming up there from the Mustang of Ferdi Mouton. Going through turn one at the moment now. He just got past Bruce Avon Taplin and onto the Joubert straight. They will then run. We'll just listen on the radio over here as uh, what is happening over there. And Bruce Avon Taplin will go on the outside of uh, turn two and uh, make his way through. I wonder if uh, Francois, could that actually be bodywork? Maybe. That looks like bodywork. Or possibly a like puncture or something. He's slowing down. There by Albert Cook, then Manuel, then... Uh, Mouton, followed by Kunan Batia, Malt Carstens, Natasha Tissendorf, and Joanne Furry. Well, the uh, battle between Trevor Momberg and Andrew Honeywell has hotted up, hotter, uh, has made become hotter. And uh, let me tell you one thing, nose to tail between the two of them. Three laps left to go, including the one they are currently on now. They're going through the kink now. All right, Arten is slowing our year now as well. That Mazda looks like the race could be run over here as well. Do I see a puff of smoke uh, maybe uh, coming from the exhaust there? We'll have to see, but he's slowing. And, uh, well, there could be uh, maladies over there with three and a bit or two and a bit laps left to go. Well, Dancing Dave Aladev has got past Curry Blows. So Aladev moves up into uh, P9 and uh, he might be able to uh, get another move up there but speaking of uh, Charlie Arton he suddenly got that Mazda going again Louis Paul's ahead of him so Louis Paul goes through but Charlie Arton gets going but not that fast so uh, he's obviously nursing something there Byron yeah obviously of course a, a wankle engine it's a 1.3 uh, if I uh, serve my memory serves me correct usually those Mazda Capillas the uh, capacity and uh, well here comes around now into the uh, Pertamina Fastron uh, section well, Donadio still leads the way, though. Seven laps completed by him. And uh, that's ahead of uh, Eric van der Marwe. 13.2 seconds back. Momberg and Honeywell still battling it out with each other. They uh, cross the line. Three tenths of a second together. And they are side by side now. As on the outside of uh, Trevor Momberg's uh, Ford Capri is that 944 Turbo Porsche. The golf-colored one of Honeywell. Hitchcock will be uh, a little bit further back over there. I don't see him at the moment. He's carving through some of the traffic now, and they have Melt Carstens in that section as well. Uh, Louis Powell basically going to be on his own now. He's uh, not close to uh, Hitchcock at all. 4.4 seconds back, and we were talking about Charles Arton earlier on, still leading that class in car number 80. And uh, a lot of uh, movement happening in the field with two laps left to go over here. Here comes now the... Um, well, Theo Clarsen comes across the line. He crosses. He passes Ben Jack Phillips on the straight. And coming together, it's Theo Clarsen and Vainant Nell in the Anglia. Wow, that could have ended much worse than it did. I can tell you that much. But that's going to now allow uh, Donadio coming through there. He's busy lapping these, uh, this bunch. And uh, that could have been hairy, scary moments over there, Francois. Oh, we saw Ben Jack Phillips run a bit wide there in turn one. He wanted to avoid all the chaos there. 
The little angler standing its ground saying, I'm going nowhere Always with do. this mighty <laughs> skyline up on the inside. Klaassen managing to get through there. But while all this mayhem took uh, part, uh, Frank and Denardio just slipped through on the outside and went past all of them. So he, he's managed to get through. Amazing stuff. It's actually one more lap left to go. This actually is the final, final lap. lap. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so it uh, just shows you so close to the checkered flag. We could have all ended in tears there for uh, Franco Donadio, who comes down the back straight now. All he's got to get past now uh, to put a lap on is the 140Y, the 53 of John Hurst. And then keeping on the island, he's got enough time uh, between himself and Eric van der Merwe. 14.1 seconds uh, between uh, the two of them with Momberg further back. I actually want to see that Momberg battle as well with Honeywell to see what the result of that is. Well, having a look there, going into uh, Quarry Corner now is... Uh Dancing Dave Aladef against Bruce Evan Tablin, but here comes your leader, Franco Donadio. He crosses the line, check it flag time. He does uh, exceptionally well. And uh, Theo Klaassen crosses the line in the fine cars, so they over the line. Robert Toscana comes along here, and then comes your second place man, Eric van der in the uh, classic cars. That's sort of uh, a mixed bag as they're coming across here. Yeah, we watch them now. Trevor Momberg will be the next man as they carve through traffic, uh, himself and Andrew Honeywell. Uh, I see one of the BMWs uh, also finishing up now as well. But uh, it will be Momberg that will take third position. Honeywell will take fourth. Uh, we wait for uh, Michael Hitchcock, who should be coming out into our view now. Yes, he is. And he will actually be following Louis Powell. So Louis Powell has uh, taken fifth spot ahead of Hitchcock. That was unlikely. He must have had a moment there, Hitchcock on the last lap because he was quite a bit ahead of uh, of Powell. Yeah, and uh, it's with uh, Charlie Arton also down in the Mazda. So Charlie Arton also visibly has an issue there. Mm. Here comes this dice with, uh, it's going to be Kerry Blows, Dion Conradi, then the two Hutchings Lane and Trevor over the line. They'll be followed by Natasha Dissendorf and Joanne Faree. Coming to the line, yeah, as well, Joanne Faree. That's of the fine cars, the fine cars. Uh, Theo Clarsen taking victory in the fine cars ahead of Robert Toscano. Stephen Manuel uh, in uh, third place in class. Of course, between them will be uh, Cook uh, in, that in that section in uh, class X, one of the uh, three class X cars finishing 18th. Uh, so uh, that was the louder classic cars. And Bijou Trusty fine cars for their second race of the day.
Hi Cape Town, Johnny from Wingfield Motors here. After 33 years of service to you, we make everything about cars even better. We buy your car, we sell your car, we finance your car, we service your car. Through our best price from our car app, we sell your car while you are driving it and return you much more money. And we can even rent you a car while we clear your credit score. Wingfield Motors and best price from our car will keep you driving no matter what. Wingfield Motors is an authorized FSP. Here's to the hard workers, the steady, the strong, and the bold. For the brave, the courageous, and the dedicated, the honorable ones. For the builders, the fixers, and the makers who go beyond measure so the ones they love have all they deserve. Interceptor. Great comfort, better safety. The Porsche Club in Cape Town has its home right here at Kalani. In fact, it's the only Porsche Club in the world to have a clubhouse at an international racetrack. We are proud sponsors of Kalani and the Porsche Club straight. Our passionate club members and their families regularly attend our race meetings. If you own a Porsche, come and visit us at the Porsche Club and we will let you know what fantastic events we have on offer. The Porsche Club, the best car club in Cape Town. Right, folks, uh, welcome back. Uh, next up, Bridgestone, Super Twin Cup 650 and Super Sport 300 cycles. Uh, about to take the uh, circuit. This time it looks like we'll have all the competitors on the circuit now that the track has dried up. Speaking of which, we see young Tristan Pina up on the second place. So he's out there. And uh, Andre Calvert's out there as well. There are all the boys coming to it now. Slade Fanica gets the circuit. Jason Lenica, who had a runaway there in the uh, wet. He sits there on the second row. Billy De Beers alongside Andre Calvert. Here comes uh, the great Lance Jonas up onto P3 on the uh, Suzuki. Lance ready to rock and roll. Gerard Fisser, the Ginger Ninja, he's out there on the 43 bike. Kyle Eddicks on the 31 bike. Nicholas Hutchings is there. Braden Hutchings is there. Raymond Alexander. Um, Zante Otto, Mitch Robinson, Stavro Michelle. to turn one then they will and it looks like it's going to be Slade van Nikak that will get the whole shot into uh, turn one and uh, just taking a look behind him to see who slipped in is a Tristan Pinar uh, let's take a look as it goes around the outside or is it Lineker no it's indeed Tristan Pinar, uh, Pinar. yeah Pinar lies up there behind Slade van Nikak so that's going to be a tussle in a bit there Lance Jonas is in there as uh, they all make their way out and they work their way through the kink. It's difficult to see in the sun at the moment, by, um, Byron. So we'll pick them up as they come around out of turn number four. No, they're all shiny as they come through. So uh, 
Well, they go on to the uh, Tigerberg straight now. It looks like Tristan Pinar might have a go into turn four. We'll watch them as they come around here now. And it's nose to tail between them. We'll see them on the back straight as they uh, come uh, out of turn four. And look at this now. He's going to have a run at him now. Down the uh, back straight. He'll go on to the outside, looks like it. Lance Jonas will hang in there. He's not close enough to make any sort of moves. But it looks like it's going to be Slay for Nikak. It will hold that first position at the moment. Nine racing laps. They will do. They're coming uh, to complete lap one of nine. And then eight racing laps left to go over here as well. But now, Francois, look at them as they come towards the bridge. Yeah, we've got Tristan Pina right up the back in there of Slade. For Nikak, Slade's got his hands full. Uh, Lance Jonas is in there. So too is uh, Jason Lineker. Um, then it's going to be... Have a look, see there. It's Fisser, Gerard Fisser, Andre Calvert, Billy De Beer, Ryan Kutsia, Nicholas Hutchins, Carl Alec, Zante Otto, Stavre Michel, Braden Hutchins, Raven Alexander, Mitch Robinson, Gavin Smith, Brendan Goldie, Brad Finner, and uh, Van Antonagy. Yeah, that uh, top two battle is quite something over there. Looking a little bit further down, it's going to give you updated on the 300 Super Sport class. Uh, Hutchings, of course, 72, which is Nicholas Hutchings, leads that class at the moment. And uh, he's ahead of Kyle Halleck. Uh, Zante Otto in second place in class now, the number 73 bike. And that's 2.3 seconds off of Kyle Halleck. Uh, so uh, as we are now with eight laps left to go, lap two. Yep, off they go around. Slade for Nick still leading out with Tristan Pinar in close attendance. They go down the back straight down towards Pertamina for a strong corner. Tristan Pinar sitting right up there behind Slade for Nick Slade's got his hands full. Tristan sits right there with him. Uh, Lance Jonas still there in P3, running a bit high. Someone looking up on the inside of him, but not to be. Jonas keeps that door closed. That's Jason Lineker that's there with him. Jason Lineker sits there with him now as they come up towards us. Under the start finish line they go, the two front there. Lineker's up on the inside of Jonas. Fisser's in there. Then it's uh, Calvert. Your front six have just gone through. We wait for the rest to come through. It's uh, like it's uh, Billy De Beer. Then it's um, the rest of the field that go through there. Uh, Tristan Pinar has just put in the fastest lap of a 121.427. Look at this. Four hundreds of a second between uh, them as they came uh, across the line. That's how close it is at the moment. Lineker is up into third position ahead of uh, Lance Jonas. And Lance Jonas, yeah, they crossed the line. Also about 45 thousands of a second between them. Fisser still hanging in there at the moment. I think there might have been a change of position over there. I don't see that yellow Suzuki. Uh, in that particular section at the moment. I'll just uh, wait for them to come around. But yeah, now comes that all Kawasaki battle. Down the back straight, they'll then run. And now on the outside, they're going to be side by side on the straight, Francois. And uh, I think still the corner advantage will go to Slade van Nikak. Slade van Nikak will break slightly later into the corner and uh, will hold that first position, forcing, of course, Tristan Pinar to be on the oh, outside. Tristan Pinar hanging around the outside. Does he want to look for a bit of a switchback? He sits right up behind Slade for Nikak. This is real nose to stale stuff. And uh, he's looking to draft him for Nikak, trying to keep the door closed as they make their way down towards holes. Tristan having a look up on the inside. Slade dives across his bow. And, uh, well, it's all out there with Jason Lineker in third, Lance Jonas, Gerrit Fissen, and Rick Calvert. Billy De Beer will come across the line right now. That's seventh position and that he will hold at this time. Ryan Kutsier uh, will be ahead of uh, Carl Halleck. And then we start with the uh, Super Sport 300 class uh, as they come across. Nicholas Hutchings will be up into ninth position. Uh, Stavro Michel will come across the line as well, just off of Carl Halleck. Then Zante Otto, as I was saying earlier, on 12th overall, but second in class, uh, ahead of uh, Raymond Alexander. 1.1 seconds to be exact, ahead of Raymond Alexander. And then... Uh, the uh, Bratton Hutchings uh, KTM uh, 56 thousandths of a second off as they cross the line. He currently lies 14th but 5th in class. Yep, that's all happening out there. But Slade for Nikak and Tristan Pinar are at it still hammer and tongs making their way down towards Pertamina for a strong corner. And uh, Tristan hanging right onto the back there of Slade. This is an absolute tussle of note. We've still got uh, six laps to go. And uh, they're almost side by side coming out of uh, turn number five. Just with the slide, the slight upper hand. Tristan's up on his inside. Tristan's up on the inside. They're going down. Tristan's up on the inside of Slade. Who's going to be the latest on the brakes? Slade's already trying to dive across his bow. He manages to keep that force over Tristan Pinar and holds on to the lead. 
two hundredths of a second between the two of them as they cross the line, or twenty-nine thousandths of a second. That's how you can see it either way. But Lineker, 4.7 seconds back, or Kawasaki top three, then the Suzuki of Lance Jonas, who has only four tenths of a second between himself and, of course, uh, the Ginger Ninja. And the Ginger Ninja will be on the inside, of course, Gerrit Fisser. Look at them, they nose to tail over there. That could allow Andre Culvert, who's 2.5 seconds further back, to start chipping away at it. Close the gap up to them as well, as he's ahead of De Beer. But De Beer is 11.4 seconds further back. And, of course, he's ahead 7.3 of Kutsia. Well, having a look at the 300s, Raymond Alexander leads out on Otto and Robinson. Then uh, up behind him, Braden Hutchins. So that's that lot. Then Gavin Smith, Brad Fenner, Van Anden, Naji, Sean Klein make up the rest of the field. But up front still Slade, Fenneke, Tristan Pina having a good scrap of it. And uh, Jason Lineker about five seconds behind them. So the front two really romping away with this one. Yeah, the, the leader's just getting past Sean Klein now. He rounds everything off on his KTM number 45. And uh, while coming across the line now is uh, Vainant Dunaji. And then our two leaders come over here now. Got the nose ahead, but I think the corner advantage is going to go. Uh, no, you'll just be ahead. You'll just uh, cr uh, run right across him there. And it will still be Slade van Nikak that will lead the way. 25 thousandths of a second between the two of them as they cross the line. The fastest lap, a 121.305 for Tristan Pinot. And you forget as well, uh, Francois, how young this guy still is as well. Saw him being interviewed by Ernest. Yeah, Tristan Pinot doing a sterling job up behind Slade for Nikak. They're getting past some of the slower riders. He's just staying in his slipstream so that he remains relevant up behind Slade for Nikak. So Slade getting no advantage out of slow traffic because as he goes through... Tristan follows suit. So Tristan right up there, up in his exhaust pipe. They make their way up down to Malmesbury to the double right-hander. They'll work their way down the back straight. And Pinar right, almost lying on his uh, back tyre as they go through Malmesbury now down the back straight. Uh, Zante Otto comes across the line. Uh, second in class, second in the 300 class. Battling it out with uh, Raymond Alexander. That's only a tenth of a second between the two of them as they came across the line. So... Uh, uh, ding dong battle going on there Robinson also Mitch Robinson in that little group as well ahead of Braddon Hutchings who's of 1.3 seconds further back remember that's 12th to 15th but that is second uh, third fourth and fifth in the uh, Supersport 300 class well having a look there Lance Jonas down in four he would have liked to be a bit higher Tristan Pinal still posting the, the quickest lap but still staying behind uh, Slade for Nikak uh, whether he's biding his time I don't know but we've got three laps to go this so what happens in the next three laps will probably be critical to the end of the race. Uh, I think not playing his hand and leaving it till the last minute is maybe a good thing on Tristan's behalf. Well, he's sizing him up, uh, Francois. Remember, yes, he knows he's running out of time. Three uh, laps left to go, including the one they are currently on. So still a bit of time in hand. Here he comes out of the kink. He gets a bit closer into the uh, interceptor corner, turn three, and then onto the Tigerberg straight. They will then run. They have a few back markers that they have to make their way through on now. That could also play a factor here as they go into turn four. And uh, well, let me tell you one thing. They've left Jason Lineker behind. He's seven and a half seconds further back, who's now ahead of Fisser. Fisser has made his way through on launch Joe and uh, ahead of Culvert still 4.8 seconds the blue flags waving for the back markers just whether to get out of the way or just to be uh, known that they are there the leaders but they come around now France will be two laps left to go when they cross the line I think if you're gonna see any move it'll probably come out of the penultimate lap so lap number two are from the end and they're gonna about to start as they come up towards us towards the start finish line and uh, still it's uh, Slade Fenikek who leads out Tristan Pina right on his back tyre. I tell you, it's a real game of trust that the guy in front of you is not going to make a mistake because you're sitting so close to him at such high speed and uh, there's absolutely no chance to make any uh, split decision there. Now Pina up on there, goes around the outside once again to Fenikek. He's looking for the switchback. He comes in nice and tight into uh, turn two and then he goes ahead of Fenikek. It worked. He pulled the switch. Tristan Pinar pulled the switch, but Slade wants to come back at him. Can Pinar hold him off as they go down into the deceptor corner? Fanikak up on the inside. Pinar dives across his bow, keeps him brutally honest as they go through the deceptor up the Tigerberg straight, and he pulls on uh, Fanikak. Does Tristan Pinar? 
He's got it, he sized it up nicely, but he's still got to hold it up for a lap and a half as they come out of Malmesbury down the back straight towards Patamina Fostron. And let me tell you one thing, he's going to grow horns, is Slade for Nick There is a bit of daylight between the two of them down the straight as we go. Remember, all Kawasaki EOS 650 battle over here, the Project 60 machine in second, and uh, well... They are going now right down. There'll be one more lap left to go. When they cross the lines, there's only a lap and a bit here. They won't get the traffic ahead of them, surely. They will be safe over there. Jason Lineker still holds third. Fisser, has he been able to close up the gap? He was 1.2 seconds the last time out. We'll see them as they come towards the line. Here come the uh, leaders now. Tristan Pinar, who records the fastest lap of the race there with a 121-136, is four tenths of a second ahead of Slade von Nicke. He's going to have to pull one out of the bag somewhere, Slade, if he's going to have to recover this one. Yeah, there's still a bit of a battle going in the 300s. Nicholas Hutchins leading out there, but Santa Otto, Mitch Robinson, Roman Alexander, Brad and Hutchins all having a right royal tussle there as uh, we keep an eye on the leaders. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you something, uh, Tristan Pinar really, really pedaling hard. They're down into Interceptor Corner. They're working their way up the uh, Tigerberg straight at the Malmesbury right hand. Uh, Tristan has a little bit of a lead over Slade. He's not going to relinquish it. I think this is the flag lap, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed it is. The flag man is waiting patiently. So here we go. There goes uh, Tristan Pinar. And they've got those gaggle of 300s up ahead of them. Are they going to catch them? Because they are hurtling down towards turn number five. So that battle ensues. And uh, they're going to come out of turn number five, Tristan Pinar at very high pace. They're going to have to measure the slow traffic. They do not want to get caught in it. And if they do, they've got to take the right stance because uh, you're going to have something changing here. But it looks like the 500s are going to stay ahead here as uh, Tristan Pinar is going to take checkered flag ahead of Slade for Nike. Pinar brings it to the fore. A great ride there from him. So they finish the race. We'll pick up third place man. Should be Jason Lineker. He's coming towards us with Harrod Fisser, who's managed to get ahead of Lance Jonas. So Fisser will cross the line. And then it's Lance Jonas down in P5. Um, having a look up behind, uh, should be Calvert and Billy De Beer. Here comes Andre Calvert over the line. Looking very restful. <laughs> uh, he looks like he's on a Sunday cruise. Billy De Beer down in turn five. The... Uh, 87 bike of uh, Gavin Smith, 80 comes across the line. And I think this is Billy De Beer coming towards us. Yep, it is. Billy De Beer crosses the line. Well, he's had a nice day of it. Fun racing. Uh, looking for Ryan Kutsia. Ryan Kutsia could be coming up. I think this is part of the uh, 300s yeah. coming towards us. Hutchings is in that uh, group there. Oh, well, there's Hutchings. Ryan. There's Ryan. There comes. Okay, so Sean Plan over there. Try and pick up Nicholas Hutchings. He was leading out the three. I think it's Nicholas coming towards the line now. Yep, there's Nicholas Hutchings. He's ahead there of, uh, looks like, Kyle Alec. And then that last group going down into uh, turn five. We'll see them. There comes Stavro Michel towards the line. And the last group will be coming out of turn five about now. There we go. We'll try and pick them up. Looks like Roman Alexander pulled the pin at the final uh, whistle. So Roman Alexander, Zante Otto, Braden Hutchings, and... Uh, Mitch Robinson and uh, they will be followed then eventually by Sean Glenn. Yeah, and that's the uh, the field there as uh, 19 of them in all finish up uh, this uh, second uh, race of the day for the uh, Super Twin Cup 650s and the Super Sport 300s.
Well, just a quick shout out before we get the next race underway to uh, Gareth Agnew of Triple Eight Motorcycles, who uh, tends to the motorcycle of Hilden Hillingays. Thanks, uh, Gareth, for the lovely uh, gift bags you sent up to the commentators. The sweeties were lacquer, the cool drink better, the water just helped everything. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. We feel very nice. The lollipops for, for Ron, later on. But yeah, to the uh, viewers at home, lots of fun here, lots of racing. Coming to a close now, we've got two bike races and then a GDI challenge race to close off the day. So uh, stay tuned, we'll have lots of fun still to come. Right, a quick public announcement. A motor vehicle, Charlie November CN 73132. Your lights on, they're busy dimming. Your battery is going to be popping. Please attend to your motor vehicle. Right, next up, uh, South Superbike SPK Challenger Masters on the front row there. Kewen Stayman on the BMW, Malcolm Rapson, uh, Jock Ackerman, Hilton Riedling Aces out there on the ZX10, uh, JP Frederick up alongside him there, Sean Mackerel. Uh, Michael the Toys out there, Lubabalo into Sana. Oh, we got a bit of a false start coming from the back there from bike number 23, Nasi Smart. Uh, it looked like he got off the line very quickly as they go down to turn number one. It looks like uh, Q and Stayman gets the whole shot there as they work their way through uh, turn one up the UB straight towards Quarry Corner. Yeah, all neatly getting through there as well. A bit of a wheelie there at uh, the front. Of course, Q and Stayman starting on uh, pole position. Malcolm Rapson on the Jixer. They're coming through there as well at that section and uh, we'll pick them all up after they uh, come through the sunshine. They're all uh, glistening in the sunshine over there as well. But they'll go through Interceptor Corner, turn three, and then onto the Tigerberg Strait. And, uh, well, like I say as well, a number of masterclass runners in there as well. Rapson, McCrill, Ntisana back there again to Toy and Smart. Remember, split over those classes, the uh, Superbike and SBK Challenge classes. And it is the Jixer that leads it away then as well as it is uh, Malcolm Rapson that leads into uh, Pertamina Fastron Turn 5. And then uh, they're also going to be doing an 8-lap race, uh, the, uh, the, the bunch. So uh, they'll then run it to the line now and will then be able to pick up the gaps for you. Well, Malcolm Rapson's done something pretty tremendous. He's pulled away from the likes of Kewen Snayman. Then it's uh, Hilton Redlingace followed there by Jock Ackerman, J.B. Frederick. Michael Detoy, Sean McCrill, Luba Balintasana, Michael Hunter, Matthew Van Eekak, Jamie Hall, 
Uh, Nassie Smart and then Brad Bodsworth. Yeah, there we go. So uh, Q and Snaman on the BMW, uh, a fastest third sector time. Of course, remember that's from a standing start. But from a standing start, uh, we had a a one twenty zero zero one from uh, Malcolm Rapson from a standing start. They're going quickly through there indeed. One point four seconds between Rapson and uh, Snaman. Redling Ace in third position on the uh, number eighty seven ZX ten R Ackerman uh, in uh, that fourth position, and then J P Friedrich. Then as far as the uh, Superbike Challenge uh, is concerned. It's the toy that leads from McCrill and Ntisana in third in class and the 600s. It's Hunter on bike number 13. And, of course, bike number 13 uh, is a uh, Kawasaki. He, he leads uh, his class at the moment. Right, Kuhn Stamon gets a little bit close to Malcolm Rapson as they go down into uh, Pertamina Fostron corner. Rapson still leading out. Uh, third place there is still Hilton Redling Ace. He's been hounded by Jock Ackerman as they come out now. And Q and Snayman trying to pull up there behind Rapson. Rapson flying. But here comes uh, Snayman. Hilton Redling Ace. Jock Ackerman up on the inside of Redling Ace there with JP Frederick. And uh, having a look-see when they go down into one. But uh, Redling Ace a bit late on the brakes. Goes into one. And he stays ahead there of Jock Ackerman with JP Frederick in tow. And uh, then... Malcolm Rapson on the back wheel up towards Quarry now with Snayman right up there behind him joins the party. Yeah, Q and Snayman a 113.759 uh, from the first flyer of this uh, particular lap, the first flying lap if you could put it like that, uh, in the second race. And uh, there they run now uh, through into uh, Interceptor. And then on to the uh, Tigerberg straight now. We'll see the uh, the gaps between them there. It was half a second between Malcolm Rapson and Q and Snayman uh, when they crossed the line the last time out. Seven laps left to go. Jacques Ackerman, he's 2.8 seconds back. And then uh, Hilton Redlinger is really mixing it in there as well. But uh, let's see them as they go down the uh, back straight. I think it was Redlinger uh, that I saw the number 87 ZX10R for. Yeah, Q and Snayman right up behind Malcolm Rapson. But Rapson making that jigsaw work over time. As he tries to stay ahead of the BMW 1000 RR of uh, Q and Snayman. Snayman reels up there behind him. He's trying to get past. Snayman up on the inside. Snayman has a look up on the inside. And Snayman gets through with his foot flagging out there. Hilton Redling Ace ahead of uh, Ackerman and Frederick as they go down towards uh, Holes. So uh, Snayman uh, goes to the front and uh, he leads out. Yeah, that Redling Ace, Ackerman and Friedrich battle is the one to watch at the moment now. Redling Ace uh, leads it there, but uh, coming into the braking zone uh, a little bit later on the brakes there for JP Friedrich's R1. And uh, they have left behind, uh, of course, Tatoi, because Tatoi is uh, in the uh, uh, challenge class, the SBK challenge class. He's got 5.3 seconds between himself and uh, Sean McCrill. Uh, Lubabalo and Tisana in third position, but two tenths of a second off of second place in class and ahead of uh, Van Nicke. It's also a tight battle. Uh, for the SBK challenge. Uh, Bodsworth is in the uh, the race. He, of course, is down in 11th position. That will be fifth in class. And uh, Nashif Smart uh, on bike number 23 uh, the uh, in 13th position overall. But, of course, that will be the sixth position uh, in class uh, for him. That's on the Yamaha uh, YZF 1000. All right, a big shout-out to the uh, hooligans out on the hill. Uh, they're uh, there for Mike the Toy. They are supporting him now as... Uh Q and Snayman comes up towards uh, turn number one. He leads out over uh, Malcolm Rapson. Hilton Redling Ace ahead there with JP Frederick, who's now got by Jacques Ackerman. Mike Tatoy there in P6. He leads out the SPK Challenge ahead of Sean McCrill. There's uh, a good 17-second uh, gap that he's got there, so he can race comfortably as uh, they make their way up now into Quarry Corner. That's... Uh, Hilton Redling Ace ahead of JP Frederick and Jock Ackerman just behind them. Michael Detoy, who looks like he could be closing down on those three. Yeah, so five laps left to go, including the one they are currently on at the moment. Sector one, uh, fastest uh, of se- uh, 26.4 for Malcolm Raps, and he currently holds second at the moment. His best time of a 114.249. Uh, and of course, the last time out of 114.249 is actually the time that he recorded the 113.929, uh, the last lap for uh, Q and Snayman. His best two tenths of a second faster than that. And uh, well, we watch them as they come around here as well again. Uh, because uh, this uh, Superbike uh, race is still well and truly on as uh, we have uh, Hilton Redling Ace, JP Friedrich now in, uh, now in fourth place in that class. Hewitt's Neyman comes across the line of 113.471 uh, 
uh, for him going even quicker and a half a second between himself and uh, Malcolm Rapson. Here comes Hilton Redlinger he's across the line. Tiny says getting the rhythm there nicely Hilton but he's ahead of JP Friedrich by one, nine hundredths of a second and Jacques Ackermann is still holding in there as well. Well, Malcolm Rapson running around in the uh, 1 minute 13s, late 13s. We know he's capable of 111s, so uh, if he wants to turn the screws a bit, I'm sure he can. I don't know if he's just prepared to accept to sit behind uh, Q and Stamon. Um Stamon has been down in the 11s already on a 600, so we know he can go a bit quicker. Hilton Redling as well, he's just evergreen. He will roll back the years and he'll show the guys he can ride. He's got the likes of JP Frederick on the uh, R1 up behind him as uh, Stamon on screen leads out there over Rapson down the back straight towards uh, Pertamina Fostron corner. Yeah, so it's four laps left to go, including the one they're currently on at the moment. Half a second between Snayman and Rapson the last time around. The BMW leading the way. Fastest lap, like I said, the last time, a 113.471. Let's see now. There's been some fast sector times in there from uh, Malcolm Rapson at 22.5 in sector two. The BMW comes across the line. Uh, it's going to be another fastest lap time of a 113.436 uh, on the last lap. So just a fragment faster. And uh, now grown the gap by another half a second over Malcolm Rapson. Look across the line now. Hilton Redlinger is under immense pressure. He's on the inside, but I think Hilton Redlinger is might have been uh, passed over there as well. Just and No, he actually hasn't been. He's still holding that third position at the moment. A valiant ride from this man. Hilton Redlinger is holding off the attentions there of JP Frederick and Jock Ackerman. There you see them coming into uh, Quarry Corner on screen. Redlinger is Frederick Ackerman. They roll around and this is going to be a real nail-biting test. They've got about two and a half laps to go. So uh, lots of work still to be done by those three riders as they make their way around the circuit here through Interceptor Corner. They reel around towards your right. They'll work their way up the roads to Tigerberg straight away. You crank the handle and then you just uh, soften it off. Work through that double right hand and then you get cracking your one gear down and down the back straight. Hook up the gear and make your way down towards Pertamina Foster on Corner as the folks on the stand down there get the absolute bird's eye view of them coming into the corner. Ackerman having a look at Frederick and uh, Snowman crosses the line. He's followed there by Malcolm Rapson, who is now approximately about three seconds behind him. But here comes uh, Riedlinger. Ace. Riedlinger Ace leading out Frederick and Ackerman. This is a lovely tussle here that they're having for third position. Uh, Ackerman is not close enough to have any sort of a look uh, at uh, JP Friedrich, but I'm just going to note as well, a 113.327, a tenth of a second faster on this lap than the previous best by Q and Snayman. It just shows you how much more he has in him. 2.9 seconds between himself and Malcolm Rapson. We were talking about Hilton Redlingays, Friedrich and Ackerman, but now a little bit further down, I'm looking at Lubabala and Tisana, who's only uh, a tenth of a second off of Sean McCrill. So that's also a very close battle. Remember, this is also in the Masters section, not only the SBK Challenge section, who's led by Detoy at this time, but McCrill and Tisane, somebody to watch. Eight tenths of a second further back is Van Nikak, uh, number 92, of course, uh, the Pit Please uh, Kawasaki ZX-10R, and Hunter still leads the 600 class by 8.1 seconds over Bodsworth, who's not in that class, but Hall, Jamie Hall, five tenths of a second off of Bodsworth in 12th position, second in the 600 class. Uh, so uh, they're still having a great tussle of it and uh, having a look at uh, going through and uh, it's our final lap here comes this three-way tussle and looks like Frederick has got past the uh, Redling Ace JP Frederick's got past Hilton Redling Ace Redling Ace looks up on the inside Frederick drives across his bowels and Frederick's got the upper hand on that one and uh, will Hilton come back at JP Frederick well JP's just got to give it to him as uh, Michael Detoy crosses the line he's down in uh, P6 yeah, he's coming right there. The difficult man to pass, of course, is JP Frederick, but I think he's uh, lost a bit of ground there as well and is falling into the clutches of uh, Jock Ackerman. And so they go through the kink now, Francois. Remember, last lap it is now, and we wait and see where Q and Snayman is. To, uh, I think he's coming down the back straight now on the BMW 1000. And he's got a massive lead there over uh, that man, uh, Malcolm Rapson. Rapson leading up the Masters, although second on the line. Uh, Q and Stamon will cross the line, he will lead out, he'll take race number two on this uh, BMW 1000 SR. And uh, here comes uh, Malcolm Rapson, he's on the Suzuki 1000, he'll take second place and first in the Masters. And it looks like JP Frederick's going to take third 
Frederick comes up towards us. JP Frederick leads out over Hilton and Hilton uh, Ace and then Jock Ackerman crosses the line. So uh, Reeling Ace is uh, in fourth place and he is, well, third in the SPK Challenge. So yeah, not too shabby from the riders. Well, Michael Detoy comes across the line. He will take the victory in the uh, Superbike Challenge class, sixth overall. And then uh, following suit, here comes now um, Tisana just gets uh, Sean McCrill. So Lubabalo Huntisana, a valiant ride over there. Number 53, uh, the uh, Kawasaki ZX-10R, he uh, finds himself in second place in class. Seventh overall, Sean McCrill, eighth overall. Then Van Nikak comes through. Uh, 1.4 seconds back in fourth position in class, ninth overall. Hunter will win, Mike Hunter will win the uh, 600s class and uh, on the ZXGR. And uh, then it will be Bodsworth, 12.1 seconds back in uh, 11th position, but he will finish uh, fifth in class. Uh, that's the uh, SBK Challenge. He won the first uh, SBK Challenge earlier on in very different conditions. 12th position will be second place in class as well for uh, Jamie Hall. That's the 600th class. Jamie Hall in, on the master class uh, garden route uh, Yamaha R6. And then uh, Nashif Smart, three laps down for him, not finishing, unfortunately, on the Yamaha 1000.
Yeah, so the Strato Tech uh, Clubman's Classics and Breakfast Run Motorcycles, their second race of the day. Of course, uh, we had a smaller field earlier on. We have a few more bikes uh, joining them because of the uh, upturn in the weather. Well, this time we've got Quinton Weening on the BMW. He's sitting on pole position alongside him as du Wayne Deuce. Then uh, Hendricks is there on the uh, 29 bike. That's Wesley Hendricks on the uh, YZFR6. And uh, on the second row, we've got uh, Liwani, who had a great first race ahead of Nico Fenta and then uh, Derek Hendricks. So, we're about to go racing. We're just trying to sort out the uh, grid positions. Breakfast Club guys are a little bit further back. Nice to see a, a VTR on the grid there, the number 38 bike. That is uh, Sean Harris. That looks like an SP1, if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful machine. And uh, that brings back uh, memories of the great Colin Edwards. <laughs> Needless to say, one of my he all-time heroes of uh, Superbike and MotoGP, Colin Edwards. Him and Nicky Aiden. And the VTRs, those were the times. Him and I think it was... Oh, what is his name now? Aaron Slight earlier on. Aaron Slight was Aaron's there, but there was another. There was a, um, one other rider also rode the uh, Stroll VTR SP1s. So yeah. Just got to remember the name. Anyhow, they're all on the throttles. Five second board. We're waiting for the lights. Okay. And the lights go out and away they go. They're all on launch control. You hear those bikes whining and the launch control lets them off. Oh, and look at Wayne Hughes. Wayne, Wayne Gress gets to the front there. Wayne Gress from second row blisters to the front. And, uh, well, he takes over. Oh, the third row, as a matter of fact. Not the second row. Yeah, second yeah, row. He got through. He got a great leap there. And, uh, well, Deuce is there on the BMWs in second. And uh, they work their way through now into a quarry corner. Like we say, unfortunately, that side of the track is a lot of sunlight. Very difficult to pick up the bikes, colors, riders, helmets. Someone making a, a way through there on the uh, kink. It looks like it could be uh, Hendrix um, going through. And uh, they ride now up towards uh, Malmesbury, the double right hand there. We see them on screen as they come down. Out there, double right hand down the back straight. And it is definitely Wayne Gress who's uh, going to light up that ZX-10 of his and make his way down. But look at that BMW come back at him as they go down towards uh, Pertamina Fastron. And, uh, well, Deuce is also in there. So he's making his way through in third place as they go down into turn number five. Yeah, it's going to be a nine-lap race uh, this one. So two of the bike uh, race today, a nine-lapper each. And, uh, well, yeah, they come towards the, uh, the line now past the old bus stop chicane. And it looks like, is that the Beamer that's actually come up into the lead? And then Wayne Gress comes right back past again on the Kawasaki. But they go into the uh, turn. So Wayne Gress just got it on the straight there very nicely. Uh, Deuce in third position. Fenter in fourth. Hendricks in fifth position. And then the uh, Classics uh, bikes, of course, Norman McFadden uh, that uh, leads that particular class. Sixth position, two tenths of a second ahead of Hendricks. Uh, well, Norman McFadden out there and uh, Hendricks looking up on the inside as they work their way through now and uh, Wayne Grace leads out of a Quinton Weeding. Uh, Deuce sits there with Nico Fenter up behind him. Then where's the Hendricks? Then uh, it's going to be Norman McFadden, Derek Hendricks and then uh, the 64 of Maritz. That's Donny Maritz that's out there. So it's good to have Donny out on the circuit. We know he did enter late. So he decided to come out for the second race. Yeah, on the uh, Suzuki 1100, GSXR 1100. Uh, of course, the GoDaddy uh, machine. And, uh, well, look at this gaggle of riders coming down uh, the straight now. And it is going to be, of course, uh, the likes of uh, Wayne Gress that leads the way. And remember, the likes of Weening and Deuce Fenter all in that group as well. They'll come around. They'll complete lap two of nine. Well, it looks like, uh, is it going to be Deuce that's gone to the front? It looks like a green bike. I think Deuce has gone to the front. He has. Here comes Gress back at him. Weening's going backwards. Maritz is right up behind Quinton Weening. 
as they cross the lines uh, and McFadden's also in there so lots happening well Donnie Moritz uh, it was actually uh, Wesley Hendricks have briefly held the fastest lap of the race and then just after that Donnie Funkilani Moritz 122.778 uh, he uh, recorded on bike number 64 there he's made his way up into sixth position on a classic bike as we say as well three tenths of a second between himself and Norman McFadden at this particular time he's ahead of uh, uh, Hendricks Derek Hendricks only uh, eight tenths of a second between the two of them well it's all happening out there now there's a bit of chopping and changing mid-pack and uh, well it looks like there's going to be a couple of changes as they work their way now up the Tigerberg straight up toward Donny Kavankalani looks like he's moved up one place on uh, Backford and left we'll to wait and see as they come down the back straight there is a uh, deuce that leads out he's followed by it could be is that Norman and uh, then the rest of the field, Donnie Moritz up to P4. Down the straight, uh, they run then as well to complete uh, third lap of the race. Seven laps left to go, including the one they are currently on at this time. Split over three classes, of course, over here. Deuce was leading on bike number 20, the uh, clubman's class. And uh, comes across the line right now. Fastest lap of the race, a 125.53. Donnie Moritz up into third position now uh, on uh, that uh, Suzuki. Norman McFadden is currently in second. Wayne Gress down into fourth position. Well, Norman McFadden is really reeling that bike. Donnie Moritz is trying to reel him in. And uh, Deuce is uh, leading out. But I can tell you something. Those two veterans up behind him are going to be pedaling hard to try and reel him in. He's going to have his work cut out. He's going to have to make that ZX-10 work over time. Just a little bit further down there, the breakfast run bikes. It's going to be Smith that currently leads that uh, group at the moment. Uh, uh, 12th position overall. He's 2.6 seconds ahead of John Kosterman. Uh, John Kosterman, I just wanted to see, uh, he is in 13th position on bike number 81. And then the BMW boxer uh, of uh, Mario Ferreira. That's, of course, third place in, or fourth place in the classic class. Kosterman is actually third in the class at the moment. And, of course, that's all the way down 13th, 14th position. Yeah, lots happening out there. Likes of Shannon Thompson down in 16th. We saw him higher up previously. But uh, they go down into uh, ready for our leader. Come out at turn number five. This is going to be Dwayne Deuce. So Deuce comes up towards us and he's pedaling hard. It looks like Danny Maritz has got ahead of Norman McFadden. So Maritz in second. He's making that jigsaw work overtime and he's closing up on Deuce. So Danny rolling back the years, showing us that he is Danny van Kalani. Yeah, he basically semi-retires and then he comes back and then what happens is, you know, does a whole thing over here. This man has done more laps, I guess, than any other rider uh, around the circuit. Uh, I'm sure there are a few that are close, but uh, Danny Moritz on that uh, Suzuki, the Go Daddy machine, he is now pursuing this lead. Only 2.4 seconds off of Deuce at the moment, already 1.4 seconds ahead of Norman McFadden. Remember, these are the classic bike class, top two. Wayne Gress in fourth position. He's second in class, though, the clubman's class, ahead of Hendricks, three tenths of a second further back. Harris, a half a second off of him. And uh, while the top uh, uh, 10 uh, bikes, of course, most of them are of the clubman's class, Liwani uh, in 10th position at one point. One seconds off of Fenter, weaning in the eighth position. Seventh is Hendricks. Well, he's still got five laps to go, and I can tell you something for nothing that uh, Donny Moritz is closing down on Matthew Deuce at an alarming rate, going down into turn number five. He's about half a second behind him, and uh, he's going to wind up that jigsaw, that uh, 25 year old machine of his, that Go Daddy machine. He picks, gets cracking, and look at him close down on Matthew Deuce, who's on a ZX10R. Donny is very quick, and he's pulled away from uh, Norman McFadden. McFadden goes through on the uh, MRR6. Wayne Gress still has got to cross the line with Wesley Hendricks, Sean Harris, Derek Hendricks, Quinton Weening, who was on pole, finding himself way down the pack now. So uh, they all cross the line. Weening down in seventh, Hendricks eighth, uh, Nico Fenter ninth, and uh, Lewani down in tenth. Yeah, Sean Harris, as you were the SP1 you were speaking of there, uh, Francois, he's only a tenth of a second off of Hendricks at the moment and, uh, well, doing a very nice job on that uh, red 38. But uh, Hendricks still hanging in there, head of winning, six tenths of a second between the two of them. Hendricks, uh, well... 
Uh, he's just got past that SP1 and just past Hendrix. So uh, nice to see Harris getting through on that uh, SP1 Honda. And I'll tell you something, it might not have the top end, but it's got a lot of grunt. I've driven one of those bikes that are absolutely powerful. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful out on this circuit. And yes, uh, I'm just going to take a look. It's actually Wesley Hendrix that's in fifth position. Just to distinguish the two Hendrix, of course, we have Derek Hendrix that's in eighth position at the moment, two tenths of a second off of Quinton Weening and ahead of Fenter. Look at this whole gaggle of riders over here as well as uh, we first look at uh, the Deuce and Moritz battle coming across the line now. Three laps to go. So uh, Moritz has got lots of time and he sits right up behind Matthew Deuce and Matthew's got his hands full because he's got a multiple, multiple Western Province champion sitting up behind him and a man that knows this track. He can probably ride this race in his sleep. He knows it so well. So... Uh, Barney sits right there with Matthew Deuce and Matthew Deuce is going to have to do everything to defend his line as he goes through Quarry Corner. Uh, Norman McFadden in third on the R6, a little bit way back on them, probably about a four second gap. But uh, Donny just slides up on the inside. Matthew Deuce says, no, stay there, don't be rude. Keep your place and know your place. I'm leading out now on the ZX10R. But I'm sure Donnie's going to crack it going down the back straight. Yeah, he slingshotted around the outside over there, afforded to be on the later on the brakes there uh, a little bit as uh, Donnie was on the inside coming towards the apex. But uh, yeah, they go down the back straight now. Two and a bit laps left to go. And uh, let me tell you one thing, Deuce will be trying to get everything out of the bag over here. Every bit of power he can, opening that throttle. And uh, he'll go now into uh, turn five, Pertamina Fastron. Yeah, they run out now. He's doing a heck of an effort over here against Donnie Moritz. Further back, 4.3 seconds already. It's, uh, it's Norman McFadden that will hang in there and looking like a good third place for him. Down the main straight they go now. Two laps left to go. Let's see how they do. They're coming up to a bit of traffic as well. Yeah, so uh, Matthew Dews trying to hold off uh, Donny Moritz. Norman McFadden a little bit further back. Sean Harris on the uh, SP1 finds himself in P4. Wesley Hendricks on the ZX10 in 5. Quinton Winning has moved back up to 6. So it's good to see Quinton's back up there in sixth place. Uh, Gress, Wayne Gress goes down to eighth now. Nico Fenter nine. Uh, Derek Hendricks uh, goes up to ninth ahead of Weening. So Weening is definitely not having a good run of it. Well, here come our two leaders now again into Interceptor Corner. Now they're coming up to a few of the uh, back markers. I uh, just want to see who those back markers are uh, at the moment as uh, they come around then. Uh, it's a uh, black motorcycle that uh, I think we'll have to have Fadi Schmidt on the Yamaha R6 that they'll be coming through on now. And uh, they look like they'll make easy work of him as they go down uh, that back straight now. The uh, Kawasaki of Deuce ahead of that Jixa, the Suzuki of Donnie Moritz. Two tenths of a second between the two of them. The last time around they crossed the line. More traffic yet to come and it's only one lap left to go when they cross the line. Uh, Matthew Deuce still fending off Donnie Moritz here. And uh, he's trying to get everything out of this ZX-10. Donny is right there with him. Matthew cracking on the pace as he goes down to uh, Hull's corner. It's his final time for the day as he rolls around. Will Donny perhaps pull the pin on him going up into Quarry Corner? Matthew's going to have to bring everything out of that ZX-10 to keep Donny behind him. Donny looks up on the inside. Donny's up on the inside into quarry and uh, gets on the brakes it's a heavy bike you've got to brake early and that's just the advantage that Matthew Deuce looked for and he brakes a little bit late saying to Donnie you know what stay there buddy I worked hard for this pole position Donnie now up on the inside and once again Matthew says to him no that ZX10 just a little bit more agile than the aging uh, Jixa well, they're coming up to a little bit of traffic over here. They will hit that traffic indeed. They go through the double apex right-hander at turn four. And onto the straight now they'll run. This is going to be very interesting here. Down the straight as we go. It is they're going to be line astern past the traffic. The last chance for Donnie Moritz over here, I think, going into uh, Pertamina Fastron. He goes, he looks on the outside. And, uh, well, he's going to go a little bit wide there uh, is, uh, of course, Deuce running out to the line, Francois. Well, he's taking a wide line because he's picking up speed and uh, Donnie Maritz is up behind him. Donnie cranks on the handle, but Matthew Deuce says, no, I'll take the flag. Deuce takes the flag from Donnie Maritz in second place. Uh, third will be McFadden. McFadden crosses the line. And uh, next up will be Sean Harris on that beautiful red SP1. He's coming up towards the line. He's got a bit of slow traffic up on the inside. He crosses the line. Lovely to hear that beautiful V-twin. 
whispering over the line. Hendrix Lewani. Now you can see the respect over there indeed. Deuce, he didn't succumb to the pressure there, Francois. I can tell you that much. And uh, I think uh, Donnie Moritz will be the first man to salute him here for a magnificent ride. Yeah, I know. It was a great ride. Very uh, entertaining. And uh, Donnie, a man close to 60 years of age, showing that he's still got what it takes. Matthew Deuce, a young lad who just decided, you know what, I'm going to make the ZX-10 pedal today and I'm not going to have the likes of Donnie passing me. And sometimes there is, uh, you know, a little bit of exuberance does help when it comes to the younger bunch. It's all about the passion, I can tell you that much, and it's great to see the youngsters come through, but it's great to see the old hands come back and also uh, show them up uh, every so often. And uh, while that was some great bike racing today, I can tell you that much, we've had some good racing today. Uh, when the uh, sun came out, of course, a bit of uh, moisture rain this morning, different conditions this morning. We move now into the last race of the day, which will be the, uh, uh, the um, GTI Challenge. And uh, we'll uh, first wait, of course, for the uh, riders, the bikes, to uh, come to the end. Right, here we go. Moment the motorcycles are in the uh, Park for May area. We'll move on to the final race of the day. It's approaching 10 to 5, and it will be in the alert engine parts Volkswagen GTI Challenge. Well, what a day's racing we've had. Great stuff. Awesome racing, awesome dices. Started off a little bit weird with the weather with the uh, V8 Masters and uh, a lot of the bikes not coming out for their racing due to the wet conditions but as the track dried out and the sun came back out again a lot more and more riders and drivers came out onto the circuit volume but in general as we approach the final race it's been as usual a very good race event well the only thing i have here frankie the issue i have here is we had the rain this morning it dried up and just after it dried up we had an oil spill so there we go just to, yeah. for good measure just, you know, just to uh, top it off <laughs> to top it off and uh, let me tell you one thing the marshals are, as always doing a magnificent job uh, to get that uh, oil spill uh, cleaned up and of course remember we reorganized uh, the second half of the program to have the bikes a little bit later on but uh, the uh, of course the uh, showstopper now the uh, of course the alert engine parts gti challenge for their second race of the day and there's so much talent in this field i can tell you one thing uh we, you know when you talk about umpi swat when you talk about byron mitchell when you talk about all these big names in here as well and it just shows you we're having a national coming up in the next two weeks a lot of these guys yep. you're going to see out there uh in the uh, the polo cup right nasif smart can you please report to the clerk of the course office please nasif smart to the clerk of the course's office please thank you yes um Byron, yeah, I, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, two weeks from now as we see the bunch of hooligans here in the uh, commentary box and uh, this is just some of us. We've got uh, former GTI Challenge race drivers up here with us as well and uh, we somewhere amongst that um, confusion is uh, Byron. As a matter of fact, I can see Byron's uh, t-shirt there. I'm, the, I'm uh, the brightest guy up there. And I mean yeah. in my shirt, I don't mean from, from intelligence point of view. Well, I think you'll see my flipper flapping <laughs> around. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a big thanks to uh, Stephen Rhodes and the entire IMUSAT team. Uh, it's been a fantastic, a fantastic day. And a thanks to all of them and all our photographers out there that have done a stunning job. That was me. Yes. It was him. It was he. It was him. <laughs> yeah for those of you that stuck around thank you that you did the rain has gone away they talking about plenty rain in Cape Town tomorrow at one stage they were saying Byron something like a hundred percent rain so we'll have a look see if that materializes if it is going to I can tell you now the cold front still away over the South Atlantic it hasn't reached us yet if that does happen so yeah we'll see tomorrow morning exactly what the weather holds for us but it's been a great day's racing one more race to go in the alert engine parts vw gti challenge
Yeah, and uh, you know what happens if the rain comes and you're indoors tomorrow. Remember, plenty of racing on the telly uh, tomorrow. Of course, we yeah. have uh, Formula One, we have MotoGP, uh, and uh, a number of uh, big racing series uh, are across the globe. And uh, you know what happens is it's always great uh, to keep you entertained on a Sunday afternoon. Well, I hear cars starting up in the pre-race paddock. And here we go. They roll out onto the circuit. And uh, Yuri Swar Jr., also known as Umpi, to all of us, leads classes A, B and C of VW GTI Challenge out onto the circuit, sponsored by Alert Engine Parts, as they make their way out onto the track. What a rumble we're going to have. Hopefully we can have that class C dice in there again with Dylan and Ryan van Eerden, as well as Seth van der Biele. Matthew Rowe and Tracy Herald. That's what I'm looking out for. And let's hope that we can see those five go one on one once again, as well as all the other dices in classes A and classes B. Yeah, it's 24 entries over there as well, uh, Frankie. So a good field indeed. Uh, split across the uh, three classes. Umpi Swart will be the man on pole position overall. 39, of course, his number. And uh, then, of course, we have Victor going to be uh, alongside him. Nathan Victor alongside him there. Uh, Van Salen Harris uh, will be uh, row uh, two. Of course, we go a little bit further down. Of course, Tate Bishop in the Class B section, number 94, who uh, practices here quite a lot during the week as well. And uh, he's uh, one of the Class B uh, runners with uh, Ian Cup in uh, the second position in class. That's the front row for Class B. Chase Herald, of course, 29, will be the man on pole in Class in uh, class C. And then the 30 of Rowe, Matthew Rowe, will be alongside him over there as well. And that's 18th and 19th yep. all the way down in the positions. Then Ryan van Eerden, Dylan van Eerden, and uh, Suleiman Effendi in the 85 will be in there as well, just to name a few. So. We are looking forward to this one, the final race of the day in the Alert Engine Parts VW GTI Challenge as the uh, officials are waiting for the drivers to make their way to us. They're heading down the back straight towards Turn 5 into Fastron Corner and then from there they will come and line them up here on the grid proper. So we'll have a look see uh, Byron as they are making their way out of five and heading back towards us once again. Yeah, that familiar looking uh, livery of uh, Yuri Swart, Yuri Swart Jr. Uh, will be uh, pulling into uh, position. Uh, of course, a lovely karting career that he had as well and lots of support from the family, including his, uh, his father, uh, Yuri Swart Sr. And uh, he will now be pulling into uh, position there alongside Nathan Victor. And uh, yeah, this you can always see why this is uh, held for the last race of the day. Plenty of action over here um, to uh, bring the show to a close. And uh, yeah, like we say as well there, Kai on Sale also from karting many years ago as well. But I remember from when I used to be commentating there. And the number 19 there of Harris, Razi Harris, Razi Harris, I should rather say. Razi. Razi. There we go, get my pronunciation. Yeah, and then uh, Van Sale and uh, Yuri Swartz also got their big tiny spit box stickers on there as well, which they have on that 39 and 34 polos. Then Dino Sandenberg Sr., then uh, Skull Caldenace, and then we have got uh, Devotron that is out there in that uh, number 6-0. Class B, Hart Tate Bishop, he's the man on pole position with Ian Cup on his outside. Then it's John Henry Vaughan, followed there by Kyle Walsh, uh, Grant Kluter, and uh, then it is Mark Thompson. Sundenberg Sr. is in there as well, Wayne Field, and Byron Mitchell will start right at the back of Class B. Pole position for Class C will be that 29 golf of a Chase Herald. But he knows that the uh, Van Eerdens will be in there as well. Uh, so will Matthew Rowe, Suleiman Effendi, Seth van der Biele. They'll all be in there to make life very, very difficult for him. So Class A will go off the line, then Class B, and then followed by Class C. Ian Long has got the uh, paddle. He's the paddle man there. And uh, Andre Kriever, he's the man that's showing the boards here at the uh, start-finish line. 
Five second board held up. Yen Long moves out the way. The lights will go on. The lights will go off and off go the Class A cars. And a lovely start off the line there by Yuri Umpiswart as uh, he races down into turn number one. We wait for the Class B cars. Here they come, Ian Cup. Had a better start off the line there. There was Tate Bishabad and Carl Walsh sits right there on the outside of uh, uh, John Henry Vaughan as they race down into turn number one. The four of them are pulling away and making up three positions as well in Class B. He's uh, Byron Mitchell as the Class C guys, Byron, move off the line and leading them out of turn number one. Chase Herald. Chase Herald as the Class A cars are heading down into turn three yeah. interceptor. Chase Herald right ahead of Ryan van Eden over there. So that's a good clean start from everybody. But uh, good to see in Class B as well. Tate Bishop getting a good start in that Jetta off of the line. A lot of movement being made over here as well in uh, turn two. Oh, a little bit of pushing going on in Class C. I can tell you that much as they run their way out there. A whole gaggle of golfs. Down the back man goes your Class A. It's Yuri Umpiswat from Nathan Victor from Kai on sale down the back main they go Razik Harris is in a hell of a fight there as well he sits on the outside as they race down into turn number five into Fostron corner they go that class B hot shots are not too far behind the class A guys as they work their way out of turn number five out of uh, Fostron corner they come it's Umpi Swart that leads them at the end of lap number one tucked in there behind Umpi Swart is uh, Nathan Victor Kai on sale Colin Nieder Razik Harris De Valtron, Skalke, Geldenhuis and Danny Sandenberg and here come Byron, the Class B guys and they are being led there by Tate Bishop. Yeah, Tate Bishop, I just want to see second position over here. Uh, a nice little battle over there between Carl Wilcher, Ian Cup. Ian Cup looks like he's on the outside. Oh, a bit of locking up going into that section as well. That could allow uh, John Henry Vaughan to come through that particular section as they go out onto the Jube Straits. Yeah, John Henry Vaughan sits there in that fourth position. It is Cup that sits there in second. Then it's Carl Walter. Then it's John Henry Vaughan. And then Byron Mitchell right in there with them. Followed there by Grant Kluter, Mark Thompson, Sundenberg Jr. and Wayne Field. The Class C guys will have a look at them as they race down into turn number two. It is Harold followed by Ryan van, Eerle, van Eerden, then Suleiman Effendi, Dylan van Eerden and Seth van der Beel. And only then do you see Matthew Rowe in that class c fight as the class c guys work their way through the kink towards turn number three by byron class a heading down towards fastron corner turn five they'll make their way through fastron corner right now it's still umpi swat that leads the way the man who started on pole position as it is seven laps to go and they on the uh, lap they're on now as they cross six laps left to go and we'll see the gap between them the last time out it was only a tenth of a second uh, between uh, uh, the uh, the front runners now it is of course swat that will come across the line nathan victor actually excuse me ahead then colin meter gets the fastest lap of the race with the 125 512 for him right class b coming down towards us it's been led there by tate bishop and look at this fight look at this fight it is uh, ian cup on his outside we have got uh, carl walsha then it is byron mitchell that's just just ahead there of uh, john henry vaughan as they exit turn number one working the way down the jabez straight towards turn two there is nothing in this fight for second, third, fourth and fifth in Class B as they work their way out. Oh, Frankie, excuse me, sorry. There's a T-bone that's gone down into turn one now, but I think it's just, it's come right somehow. Sorry about that. Got a bit excited there. No, that's all good. You pick it up, you call it as it is. I think Seth van der Biele might have been a part of that situation as well. But the Class A guys, you've got to have eyes biting all over your head. The Class A boys are racing down the back straight into turn number five and it's still being led there by Summit Racing's Yuri Umpiswar. Well, I was just taking a look earlier on as well. Chase Herald was having his hands full there of Ryan von Eden as well. It was only a tenth of a second between the two of them as they crossed the line. But Suleiman Effendi, he's now fallen down to uh, 21st position in all and a little bit further down in class over there as well. Remember, there's going to be five laps left to go. Umpiswar will cross the line in the lead. The timing screens don't show that to us for now. It is Nathan Victor that will still hold second position. Two tenths of a second and ahead there of uh, Van Sale. Mida is now up in fourth position. Harris, Turon and Geldenhuis. That's the top seven, all class A.
Class B, it's Bishop, it is Cup, it is uh, Walsh, it is uh, Mitchell, and on his outside, we have got John Henry Vaughan. What a fight going down there. Let's go and have a look at this Class C. It has been led there by Tracy Herald. Right behind him is Ryan van Yedden. Then it's Seth van der Beely coming down towards us. Behind van der Beely, we have got uh, um, Suleiman Effendi. And then Dylan van Eerden, and right in there behind Dylan van Eerden is Matthew Rowe. What a rumble out there. The Class A guys are coming into view Ooh. as they head down the back straight. Skull Cloud now is off the circuit on a turn, at turn two, the exit of turn two. He's going very slowly around, but looks like he's going to get up to pace again. He's lost quite a number of places then, uh, unfortunately for him. As five laps left to go, including the one they're currently on. Here comes Umpi Swart now. Well, second ahead of Nathan Victor the last time around, Frankie. Let's see the gaps between the two of them. Remember, Yuri Swat, a 124, 977, his fastest lap of the race. Yeah, coming to start another lap is Class A. It is Yuri Umpi Swat, and it's Anya for second. It's Nathan Victor, Kai Fan Sale, and Kolomida, second, third, and fourth. As uh, they dive up onto the inside, and have we got a challenge? We've got a challenge here for second, but it's Summit Racing's Nathan Victor that holds on to that second position. Kai Fan Sale. He's right in that fight as well, and right behind him is Colin Meader as they work their way towards turn two. That's first, second, third, and fourth in class A, followed there by Devaltron. And uh, no, it's not Devaltron, I lie. It is. Um, I'm trying to pick up who that is. Oh, it is. Uh, yes, it is Tron, and then also in there with him as well is Razi Harris. Bishop still leads Class B, but Wiltshire is just holding it ahead of Ian Cup there as well. They go now on the Jubair straight. Let's see if Cup is going to make any sort of a move into turn two. No, he isn't. But now joining them is John Henry Vaughan, and then of course Byron Mitchell will be in that group as well in that little golf. So uh, they go through the kink. They'll be leaving behind the likes of Kluter and Thompson Sundenberg in their Heldenes fight himself all the way down now in 15th due to that spin earlier on. Going into turn number two, it's a lovely fight for first and second in Class C. It is Ryan van Eden that's crowding the back end there of J.C. Herald as they make their way through the kink. Seth van der Biele finds himself out there in that third position and uh, <clears throat> he's got Suleiman Effendi right in there with him for company. But where are the Class A guys? Here they come across the line, Byron, racing her down into turn number one and there's a challenge for second third and fourth position uh, fun sell all of them locking up there as well frankie Mida is also in that particular group he's on the tail end of that three and here they go on to the uh Joubert straight now oh he goes on to the uh, dirt as uh, colin Mida. And uh, he'll look on the outside there as well. They're all taking various different lines. All oh, the back end stepping out there of Nathan Victor. And that's now going to allow Van Sale to come past Frankie. What a rumble out there. Van Sale got him. Van Sale's on the inside line. Nathan Victor's under serious attack. And Van Sale gets him. And Colin Mead is in there as well. But let's go back to turn number two. Because this is where the class B guys are heading to take bishop leads him into turn number two look at this dog fight going on for second third fourth and fifth position big lock up there by ian cup he sits in there just behind carl walsha then we have got john henry vaughan and uh, byron mitchell as they work their way through the king this is the class b drivers working their way through turn number three interceptor corner nathan victor will be on the outside into pertamina fastron he will poke the nose slightly hit not that long though and that's going to leave the door open for colin meter behind them yeah they're going to run into the line now two laps left to go when they cross the line they're all in a line with each other all like a train just all hooked up over there and now on to the off the racing line they'll then run and then on the outside, uh, we'll see the likes of uh, Mead and uh, Mida coming around on the outside. Oh, nose to tail between them over there. Very close. Here we go, waiting for the Class B cars to come down towards us. It's been led down the back straight by Chasey Herald from Ryan van Eerden. Down the back line, they go. Seth van der Beele sits out there in that third position. They're losing tons of ground. Then it's a Matthew... Uh, no, it's a... Uh, Suleiman Effendi, uh, that's just ahead there of uh, Dylan van Eerden and uh, in there as well is uh, Matthew Rowe. What a fight for Class C into turn number five into Fostron Corner, but uh, it's happening all over the place. The Class B guys are now heading yeah. in towards turn two, Byron, as the Class A drivers should be making their way 
down the back straight, I think. Yeah, there they go. Down the back, man, goes race leader, Yuri Umpi Swart. Yeah, Will Chester holding second in Class B at the moment. He is heading it ahead of Cup. John Henry Vaughan, he's now touching the back bumper over there as well. As they go now into the uh, interceptor corner, turn three. And Byron Mitchell just barely hanging on there, Frankie. One and a bit laps left to go. Yeah, that Class B fight is making its way into turn number four. This one's not done and dusted yet. It's been led there by Tate Bishop. Down the back main goes Tate Bishop. Way, way down the road from Carl Walsh in second. Ian Cup in third. Followed there by John Henry Vaughan and Byron Mitchell. Then behind them it's Grant Kluter. He's got Mark Thompson right there with him. Skull Caldenace is the lost class A car that is in there. Followed there by Danny Sandenberg Jr. And then the last class B car will be Wayne Field as the class C guys come down towards us. And it is going to be... Uh, Chasey Herald from Ryan van Eerd and Seth van der Biele is in that third position down the back main they go then it is uh, Dylan van Eerd and followed there by Matthew Rowe and Suleiman Effendi just looking at John Henry Vaughan now in that class B he looks to the left or he looks right and then he looks left he goes onto the inside and might get himself up into the top three in class he has now got Ian Cup alongside him this is the final lap Frankie as they're now on the Dubai straight side by side and I think what happens is Ian Cup will just get it out into turn two as we speak there goes Umpi Swart who leads the way in class A Frankie but it's behind them where we got to look now Colin Meader is all over the back of Nathan Victor yeah, the leaders make this way to turn number five towards the checkered flag. And that is a Yuri Swart Jr. Here comes Umpi towards the checkered flag. The flag is out and Swart will bring it home. Two out of two for Summit Racing's Yuri Swart as he wins this one. And here we go down to line. Second place is going to be Kaifan Sale, Nathan Victor and Colin Mead across the line as quick as you can say that. Then we have got Razi Harris coming towards us. And behind him is Dia Valtron. John Henry Vaughan got it past the cup there, Frankie. But now Cup is coming right back at him in the slipstream. He is as they go now into the last turn. Turn five puts him in the fast strong. And he's pushed him. And there's a tap over there as well. John Henry Vaughan spins it. And now that's going to be Ian Cup that will be coming to the line over here. He should have Byron oh. Mitchell right behind him here. Towards the line they will then come. That will be second place or third place in class, excuse me. Yeah, it was one there by Tate Bishop. What a drive there by Tate Bishop winning that one with uh, Carl Walsh finishing there in that uh, second position. Then Ian Cup getting his nose ahead there of Byron Whit Mitchell, followed there by Grant Kluter, Mark Thompson, and only John Henry Vaughan crosses the line. Class C was won there by a lovely win there by Tracy Herald coming home in a P1. Sorry, followed there by uh, Ryan van Eerden, Seth van der Biele. Behind him was Dylan van Eerden, Matthew, Matthew Rowe uh, coming through as well. And then uh, Suleiman Effendi. Wow, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff out there by the Alert Engine Parts Volkswagen GTI Challenge. What a way to end off the day, I can tell you that much. Some run, really brilliant action here across three classes. Magic, magic, magic stuff. Well, what a race day it is, uh, has been. Byron Mitchell. <laughs> Byron Heights, sorry, I've even called you Byron Mitchell. There. My namesake. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Byron Heights saying to me he needs a lie down in a dark room. Let me tell you one thing. That, that, that is something, uh, you know, your brain, you're looking everywhere for better yeah, action. You're and be, you're getting it. <laughs> you're going to wake up. You need to go have a sit down now for a while before you go home. <laughs> Well, it's been great. It's been real. It's been absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, I want to say just a big, big thanks. I'm just going to play the adverts uh, before we say our final goodbyes. But um, it's been absolutely great stuff out there. Big thanks to, uh, to, <laughs> to all our sponsors. It's been absolutely brilliant. And it's been nothing less than absolutely amazing. Hi Cape Town, Johnny from Wingfield Motors here. After 33 years of service to you, we make everything about cars even better. We buy your car, we sell your car, we finance your car, we service your car. Through our best price for my car app, we sell your car while you are driving it and return you much more money. 
and we can even rent you a car while we clear your credit score. Wingfield Motors and best price from our car will keep you driving no matter what. Wingfield Motors is an authorized FSP. Here's to the hard workers, the steady, the strong, and the bold. For the brave, the courageous, and the dedicated, the honorable ones. For the builders, the fixers, and the makers who go beyond measure. So the ones they love have all they deserve. Interceptor. Great comfort. Better safety. Porsche Club in Cape Town has its home right here at Kalani. In fact, it's the only Porsche Club in the world to have a clubhouse at an international racetrack. We are proud sponsors of Kalani and the Porsche Club straight. Our passionate club members and their families regularly attend our race meetings. If you own a Porsche, come and visit us at the Porsche Club and we will let you know what fantastic events we have on offer. The Porsche Club, the best car club in Cape Town. Well, not just uh, all those who want to say a big thanks as well to um, King Tony Tools and to the city of Cape Town and, of course, Pertamina Fostron and all the class sponsors. Well, that's it from my side. Everybody enjoy the rest of the weekend. Remember, there is a Formula One from uh, Zandvoort and then there's also uh, MotoGP as well Asano. tomorrow yeah, from uh, Asano, the circuit, uh, um, Marco Simoncelli. So, yeah, enjoy that. And, uh, yeah, just enjoy the rest of the weekend. From my side, have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone. Well, as always, guys, it's been a, a very great honor uh, to share the commentary box with my colleagues and friends here. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us, uh, whether it was online or here at the circuit. And uh, everybody, please travel safely as well. It's still a long weekend. Enjoy yourselves, everybody. And remember, two weeks' time, uh, we right back here at the main circuit for our Extreme Festival. But uh, before then, if you're uh, missing motorsport, next week is going to be some great events. Short circuit, plenty of oval racing, not only here, but at Mega as well. The uh, WBNK Gymkhana, you name it, it's all here. And of course, uh, we'll see you soon. But for myself, Byron Heights, signing out. Keep well. Until next time. So I'm standing here with Craig Harper, and uh, he's not just put his name on this car because it's his car, he's also put his name on the car because you built, designed everything this car from the ground up. That's right, Ernest. How are you? I'm <laughs> very good, good thanks. Good to see you again, uh, Yeah, great to see you again. The last time we had this conversation, I mean, I couldn't believe that this was a Cape Town built car, but you're back now at the track, and for the first time in a long time, you're racing your own car today. What was the experience like? It was um, pretty... Pretty scary, actually, to yeah. be honest. Um, we lost the brakes after about four laps. Oh my so goodness. I'm pumping away into the corners, and the, they seem to always work. You're not so much brake fluid you're losing when Ooh. that happens. But we finished, and then and then there was oil. So it was really quite a baptism of fire for this old yeah. boy to get back yeah. in the car. Yeah. The car otherwise yeah. behaved very well, and we got to the end of the race. Okay, awesome. So the crew is very happy. Yeah. Um, it shows good to show them what the cars go through. Yeah, you know, of they course. They put the cars together in the shop. You know, they don't realize the, the duty cycles, the, the mm. load that we put these cars through. Mm. And it's, 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 it's good for them to see. So what was it like out there? We heard the conditions were bad. I mean, there was oil everywhere, apparently. Yeah, and oil went down after the fourth or fifth lap. And oh then, my goodness. But, it, but it wasn't just one lap. I think, I, think, I think he didn't realize he was dropping oil. So in each corner, you see a line and another line and another line of oil. So you're driving interesting lines up on the curbs to try and get through the corner. And how do you let the officials know that there's oil on the well, side? They knew. Oh. They, they eventually got the flags out. Okay. Um, change of service flags. Change of service flags, yeah. So you just drive around the problem and try and keep going, yeah. Yeah. Gav, Gav spun right in front of me. It was very treacherous on that yeah. oil. Because the oil cuts across the line, so it doesn't matter what you do, you're going through the oil, you know. Oh, that must be so hectic. Yeah. Especially in a car like this, you're getting oil splatterings in your face then, eh? No, I wasn't right behind him, so I didn't see the oil coming out of his car. Okay. It wasn't like that. Um, but, you know, you, your, your front washes out, the, the back snaps, you think, oh, yes, you know, just 
just keep it going. Yeah, that's keep the it on thing. the black stuff, yeah. which you did. You yeah. guys finished the race. I mean, yeah. that's the main thing about racing. Yes, you got to get results, but first you got to finish the race. Yeah, get it to the end. I said to the guys this morning, we're not going to try and win anything. I'm going to finish the race mm -hmm. at all costs. Yeah. So, yeah, we did. We're awesome going to drive it home tonight. This car is road legal, so we're going to drive it home tonight. That's nice. the main thing. That's yeah. a different thing about this car, I think. This is actually a street car. Yeah. So, um, and no, that's, I, I saw you on the road a week ago. I saw yeah. you driving the car around. That's right. So, yeah. I love the fact that it's, it's dual purpose. Okay, nice. Well, the car finished the race. You're going to drive it home. Incredible stuff. Craig Harper, where, Craig, where can they find you? They want to find out more about the car. Well, we're in Weinberg now. The shop's in Weinberg, so that's Weinberg, Cape Town. Um, oh, so you, you moved a bit closer to town yeah. then? <laughs> yeah, we moved a year ago. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that! And it's perfect. We're up okay, on the nice. military base. Okay, lekker. Oh, I know exactly where that is, yeah. Right next to the hobnobs up in nice, Pers, uh, nice. Bishop's Court and yeah, so Yeah, yeah, Okay, lekker. So our test route's quite, quite a bit nicer than it used to be, you can imagine. Um, so yeah, pop in. If you've got something that you want us to sort out for you, any kind of sports cars. We don't just build these cars. Come and have a look. Come and say hi. Well, there you go, folks. Craig Harper. The man, the driver, the builder. Go check it out. Thank you very much. Cheers, Ernest. Cheers. I'm standing here with David Jubey. Just got a second place in that Orns AC100. Davi, I heard it's a bit uh, slippery out there. And it's not the, the impending rain. Yeah, we, we're talking about it now at the park, the mate. That we say, yeah, we, at least we could see the well. This morning we couldn't see the rain. So the well was actually better to drive in than the rain because at least you knew where, where to go. But it was slippery. We came around the corner and I saw there was one line of well, and then I came around the second time and there were two lines of well. So there were lots of <laughs> and, and, and for people that don't know, it is honestly one of the most terrifying experiences to hit oil because the grip, usually the grip kind of fades away, but with oil, it just disappears. Yeah, it's just slippery. It's very, I mean, you, you, the moment you go over it, because we try to get over the line, Every time that we went oh, over it, so. like that. <laughs> yeah, the car moves. Yeah, yeah. So you couldn't brake on it, you couldn't do anything. So you had to like cross it wherever you could. And this, this car over here, this is a 991 uh, Cup spec, if I'm not Correct. mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And what was this? What's this car like to drive in ideal conditions? Um, it's a very nice car to drive. I must say, because it's done. You know, everything works for it. it the brakes work. The um, the handling works, mm. but you have to drive a car hard yeah. to get the most out of it. So, and I say, um, uh, uh, it's a second race that we have with a car, and we're hoping to do better because mm. we need to gel with a car so that we can uh, get to it. It's so strange with something like this that to get them, especially the Porsche, and you Porsche, you feel it when you drive these cars. The faster they go, the better they get. Come to me. Yeah, you need to trust the car. Yeah, trust. You can actually. You can do a lot with a car, uh, but you need to know uh, what the car is going to do because it does every time the same thing. So, oh, which will. Oh, gives me the sh this one of my favorite cars, the GT3 Davi Jubey. Of course, lots of time spent in many, many fast cars, so no stranger to pace. Today, though, they had to avoid the oil. Well, folks, we've come to the end of another great days racing here at Kilani Raceway. Special thanks goes out to our commentary team, the marshals, the organizers, the riders and drivers, and of course, the supporters out there and you guys watching the live stream. If you want to get involved in motorsport in Cape Town, Kilani is the place to do so. Whether you like drag racing, drifting, circuit racing, everything else in between, come through, get involved and find out how you can become part of the action. My name is Ernest Page and this is the Power Series at Kilani Raceway and we'll see you guys at the next one.
bass when the whole push screen got a kick.